The 33 tie breaks of the first round were played this afternoon in the Marriott Boulevard Hotel in Mbaku. The action was fast and furious, with a few upsets and huge time trouble in several games. In the open section, most of the favorites prevailed, but underdogs Gayimbali and Acosta from Azerbaijan and Argentina respectively knocked out their higher rated opponents and qualified for the second round. No huge surprises in the women's section, with most of the rating favorites cruising through in the rapid and blitz games. But French representative Guichard really had to step on the pedal to get through her opponent, Serik Bay from Kazakhstan. Tomorrow, the 50 best open players in the world competing in the cup, including world number one Magnus Carlsen, will join the event, in addition to the 25 preceded woman favorites. So expect a great round of chess. Stay tuned for all the action on the FIDA websites and our YouTube channel. Greetings from Baku. Today is the second round and top elite players join the field. The seeded players come to fight for qualification for the third round. And here with us is Wesley So, one of the best players in the world. Wesley, how are you feeling? How was your trip to Baku? Uh, very good. Uh, I'm very excited to be back here in Baku. Last time I was here was seven years ago uh, during the Olympiad. So, very grateful to be back. Thanks for your kind words. Good luck in the game Thank and see you later. You. Thank you. Wesley, ready to play for the first game here in the second round of the World Cup 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the round two of FIDA World Cup and FIDA Women's World Cup in Baku, Azerbaijan 2023. I'm your host, Irene Sukander, and I'm so happy that the five-time world champion, Fishwana Tan Anan, is joining us today at the studio. Fishy, how are you? Very good. I have uh, been here for a couple of days, but very happy to join the commentary today. Yes. Uh, obviously enjoyed watching you and Sagar oh. cover the first round. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, today is very exciting, right? Because we have so many of the top players mm -hmm. joining in and uh, now everyone's there. Yes. All the uh, highest rated players, the top seeds are here. Yes. And uh, so it's going to be very, very exciting and there'll be lots and lots of action to see. Yes, exactly. Carson, Hikaru and the likes are here. And um, yeah, today is going to be very interesting matches. And if you follow the actions from the round one, we have so many upsets, both in the open and women's section. And I think um, today is no exception. What do you think? With the sheer number of uh, boards, we are going to see a lot of upsets. Mm -hmm. uh, on top of that, we saw that it's um, very hard to judge someone based on their rating. Yes, uh, exactly. You know, people are capable of raising or dropping the game, mm -hmm. and you know, there's so much unpredictability. Yes, and we already looking at the screen right now. The top 16, uh, the table of top 16 in the open section. So, yes. our world number one, Magnus Carson, will take on Levan Pansulaya, and Hikaru Nakamura will be facing Fenka Taraman. Kartik and Fabiano Caruana will be taking on Michelle McKiddishvili. And wow, there are so many top names, uh, both in the open and women's section, starting to play today. And in the women's section, our reigning world champion, Ju Wen Jun, will be facing Eva Repkova from Slovakia. Alexandra Gorechkina will be facing Ordas Valdez. And the Indian pride, Hampi Koneru, will be facing another Indian velo. Uh, Nutaki Priyanka. Yes, and I think it's five minutes uh, before the start of the game. And when was the last time you played the World Cup, Fishy? I played the World Cup in Tbilisi in 2017. 2017. Obviously, I was able to skip the earlier ones. I could skip Baku mm -hmm. because I was the losing, uh, I mean, I lost the World Championship in 14, so mm -hmm. I was seeded into 16. Right. So Tbilisi was the first one I had to play after a very long time. Mm -hmm. And um, um, before that, 
I played uh, the first two World Cups when the knockout right. format was introduced in 97. And uh, I skipped, sorry, I skipped Las Vegas 99. And then I played in uh, Delhi and Tehran in 2000. So, wow. and so followed up with Moscow in 2001. So I played those. Mm -hmm. And then there was a long, long break. Long break I, indeed. I came back yes. to play a knockout. So. Yes, yeah. We can see players already sitting on their board. And a brief reminder there is no zero tolerance in this tournament. Uh, there is a 15 minute default time. So all the players are expected to arrive actually before the starting time. And they can still arrive within the 15 minutes uh, default time. And the time control for this event in the classical match is 90 minutes for 40 moves, followed by 30 minutes uh, on move 40. And they will have one, they will have 30 seconds increment um, starting from move one. And we see on the camera Hikaru Nakamura getting ready. Uh, Venkatraman. Yes, against a very good player from India, Hartik Venkatraman. Who beat um, Gregory Kaidanov? In exactly, the first round, right. one of the oldest participants in the World Cup. Actually, I believe the oldest. He must be oldest than Ili older than Ilya Smirin. Yes. Uh, so yes. Then I think it's uh, Kaidanov, Smirin, and uh, actually uh, there are quite a few. Uh, yes. Some, mm -hmm. Kozul, uh, Boris, mm -hmm. Yelfand, Gavars, Vasily Gavars. Ivanchuk. Yes. <laughs> and then, well, I'm not playing, but <laughs> that's where I slot in roughly. Yes. And I might. I don't think I'm missing anyone. But uh, yes. <laughs> yes, and in the women's section, it's Pia Kremlin. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, in this edition, we see like uh, a mixture of the youngsters and the experienced players. Mm -hmm. And we can see from distance uh, MVL and Shahriar Mabed Yarov also getting ready for their game. Yeah. Yeah. Two minutes and 30 seconds to the start of the game. Who is. Who is your favorite player to win this tournament? I can't come up with anything very, very interesting perspective. I mean, it's very easy and boring to say Magnus or yeah. Hikaru <laughs> or Fabi. But these guys have, you know, the qualities that you need. Yes. Um, especially a lot of weaponry. Mm -hmm. You know, if the situation changes, you lose an early game. Mm -hmm. How do you change your style for the second one? Mm -hmm. Must win situation. Uh, you win the first game, you're in the lead, you only need a draw, it's a different approach. Um, they can, they're much more flexible in that sense. Mm -hmm. They have uh, uh, more resources to it. And also when you get into the faster time controls, yes. the tie breaks, mm -hmm. uh, you have to do, have several ideas for, for a day. Mm -hmm. Again, they tend to have the depth which allows them to navigate. Uh, of course, it doesn't stop there. You can take Anish, uh, Jan, all of them. Um, in fact, I, I would say I forgot Jan. He's uh, obviously booked up to the hilt with all his World Championship prep. Exactly. Uh, he has lots and lots of ideas. Yes. So that's, again, very good. Anish, the only problem probably is that he publishes all of them. <laughs> so he has to have a separate repertoire on his own, that's and then right. he has to have his uh, published repertoire. And I think he, even he might not be able to remember what is where. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, and yes, it's. Um, I don't have any original uh, no Ev surprise picks I can give you. Yes, um, mm -hmm. everyone has everything it takes uh, to be the winner of the World Cup and the Women's World Cup, yeah? And we see on the screen it's uh, Magnus Carson with uh, Pansula 11. Fun fact, Fishy, last night Magnus won the early title Tuesday. So it's uh, kind of like a preparation for him apparently uh, for today's match. And he actually played two title Tuesday and the late title Tuesday that ended at 3 a.m. local time. He finished second. Yeah. I, I see that this is becoming uh, very, very common these days. Mm -hmm. uh, during most tournaments, many of the pl players uh, try to play a title Tuesday or mm -hmm. something. They just want to play some blitz and, uh, you know, just sitting there, they're not knowing what to do. They just want to play and... Uh, the first time it was tried was against me when I was playing in, um, or at least that I recall, in Mainz. Um, I was playing this rapid match mm -hmm. against uh, Grishuk, and he had started with half out of four. Mm -hmm. And then he uh, played the open in the morning, <laughs> yeah. and our thing was in the evening. And I was a bit surprised, but then I, and I saw his motivation. You have to sit there the whole day, 
and think about what's coming and maybe it's just easy to play some chess and get it over with. So that seems to be the mentality. Of course, now it's online. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I have experienced it. And actually, Grishchuk beat me in the first game after playing the Open. Oh, wow. So maybe it just... Uh, uh, it's excellent practice and that's that and it's a kind of good warm-up for these guys. That's possible. Oh, speaking of Grishuk, it was him who won the title to stay, the late titles to stay when uh, Magnus came yes, second. Yes, that's <laughs> so right. Uh, tiebreak, so right? They were both nine and a half, I think. Uh, and yes. Grishuk won by tiebreak. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, these players, even though they have a match today, they still play chess until late of uh, the evening. Do you consider of playing title to stay as well? Or have you ever, actually, have you ever played title to stay? I haven't played a title Tuesday. My usual excuse is in India, it gets very late. <laughs> uh, of course, in different time zones, you can yes. get on and play it. But um, I don't know. I haven't really gotten around to it. I mean, I just play uh, private games with friends and I leave it at that. So yes. that's how I train. But uh, I mean, you think that... Uh, Displaying everything uh, to the extent that you do mm -hmm. uh, gives starting points. But in fact, uh, nobody has the energy to study. So you can play a billion games on the internet and then uh, afterwards uh, nobody has the energy to study <laughs> to look at all of them yes. so it kind of even doesn't matter i think it's becoming like a modern culture for the chess players nowadays just to play online to maybe release their tension by playing online blitz and so on yeah very much and mm -hmm. i'm fairly sure that many of the others competed as well uh, yeah? I yes guess hikaru played yeah. Kabi played jan probably tried yeah. so <laughs> that seems to be the norm these days Yep. Okay, so the first move have been started. Uh, do you want to check any of the games um, okay. of your choice? Uh, let's start with the first one. Um, okay, Pansulaya, I, I noticed that he started with C4. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. The uh, first move was made for him knight f3. He took it back, played c4. And after knight <laughs> f6, he's gone back knight f3. C4. Obviously, <laughs> it's a question of what you permit or not. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, and now uh, Carson is uh, taking his time uh, for the second move. Yes, I think we can come back to this at some point. Yes. Let's go to Nakamura against Karthik Venkatraman. Karthik Venkatraman is a quite a sharp player, mm -hmm. and he's uh, choosing Darshangelsk. Yeah. Um, I guess it it's one of those openings style, yeah? that you can prepare quite uh, in some depth. Yep. And uh, that is nice, though. Obviously. Uh, there were lots of uh, roads not taken. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Hikaru, for instance, played the Italian against mm -hmm. uh, Caruana in the last round of Novichas. Mm -hmm. Did not do it here. Went for the Rai Lopez instead. So who knows what they were aiming for? Maybe he is preparing that opening for like a higher rated opening. What do you think? Do you think uh, top players in this in this uh, event they are preparing some for you know like 2500, some for 2600, and some for the 2700 players? Like they varied their preparation. I would assume so, mm -hmm. right? Because it's uh, these days it's co so hard to find everything you need in one line. Mm -hmm. uh, being slightly flexible and being able to jump from this to that. What I mentioned earlier in the context of flexibility as well. Yes. Having more resources in your um, is part of your strategy. Mm -hmm. And it worked out very well because uh, Hikaru caught uh, Fabiano in a line that he didn't remember. It's not uh, officially dangerous. Yes. But... Um, uh, Fabi mixed up some move and mm -hmm. then uh, got into trouble pretty fast. And in fact, it cost him first place. Oh, and yeah, he cut it yeah. to first place instead. So the, these, these little details uh, matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's keep going. Um, this is also interesting. I mean, these days, uh, you're always interested to see <laughs> what's happening in these London in systems. In the London system, yes. And uh, by the way, for... Anyone is not clear what we're referring to? The putting the bishop here is... London. Nowadays, <laughs> yeah. it's called the London system. Yes. Uh, I, it can be played as early as the second move. Yep, that's correct. So I was very excited to see someone call something the accelerated London. Accelerated? Okay, so... And I thought, what is that? Bishop f4 and then you follow up the d4? Or <laughs> how does it work? <laughs> I mean, no. what is accelerated if move 2 is bishop f4? How do you... <laughs> possibly accelerate that. But uh, anyway, I'm sure it was just a typo or yeah. it could have been a computer generated uh, name, accelerated London. Or but maybe I thought that was funny. Yeah, or maybe they refer to the third move, uh, Bishop F4, as London, and then second move, Bishop F4, is accelerated uh, London. Yes. Um, though, for me, technically, mm -hmm. Bishop F4 should be when you play D5. Mm -hmm. Because I tend to think of the lines where you play D6. So had you yep. started with G6, for instance, as somehow thing. But uh, 
Uh, there is no official nomenclature. We all can use any names we <laughs> want. By uh, the way, what is your take about uh, the London system? Because, well, for trust internet, you know, they're kind of like hating it because how flexible the London system and how it is so often being played in the internet games. That is true, but I don't see uh, why people dislike it. It still produces interesting positions and uh, the theory there is still dynamic. And isn't that what you want? Mm -hmm. But... Um, uh, it's true that at some point it became the height of fashion and there's always a backlash, right? Yes, there's uh, always a backlash. I mean, if everybody piles on. Um, incidentally, here, I think one of uh, white's res black's resources will be to play queen b6 mm -hmm. before bringing the bishop out of the knight out. So yeah. let's say after knight b2, you could go queen b6, maybe with provoke or knight b1, c6, or knight, yeah? c knight c3, I don't know. But... Um, in fact, they have not bothered. They've gone back to the old main line. Um, so there were some extra options for black if he delayed the knight coming to c6. Mm -hmm. uh, but Fabiano has just said, I don't need them. and put the knight on c6. So here we are. Uh, now there are multiple lines. Um, there's bishop d6. There's bishop e7. There is c takes d4. Yes, that's also quite popular. Yes, mm -hmm. and what else? C4 looks a bit a tad no, suspicious. Yes, I don't yes. know C4 if that really is, works. Yeah, indeed suspicious. Oh, he has gone C takes D4. That is very... Yeah. Um, oh. And I think the point is if you go E takes D4, then you go Knight H5. Yes, and, yes. And um, those lines are... Those lines are... Uh, it's very dangerous, yeah, with uh, the old line that Hikar introduced with uh, the push of G4 later on and so on. Yes, but the theory there is advanced as well. I mean, yes. with computers, it just goes on and on and on. Yeah. And so the line we're talking about um, is uh, this one. Um, I can actually get it like this. Mm -hmm. And knight e5. Knight e5. Yeah. And the point of this move is that the queen is now attacking this knight, so you can't win the pawn there, but black just mm -hmm. temporarily parks that. Then you go uh, g4. Um, and there are pawn sacks and yeah, everything there are pawn coming, sacks and it's it's yeah. uh, quite a sharp line. But again, these days, no surprises. Let's uh, make sure we don't get too far ahead <laughs> of the current <laughs> position. That's yes. right here. So this is a game I think we will come keep coming back to. Hopefully, it, something very dynamic happens there. Yes, I'm also curious about how you are going to play. You know, like uh, the choice of your open uh, opening with this London system against a very top player such as Fabiano Caruana. And I was also wondering, um, when you're playing World Cup or all these other events, and you know you'll be facing um, some players that is quite lower rated than you, 200 rating points or 100 rating points below you. Um, the importance of having seconds is is very great, right? I think I think you cannot leave uh, these days without having any seconds. It's clearly helpful. There are times, it depends on your mood. I mean, mm -hmm. I have felt that there are times when I'm just happier being alone. Mm -hmm. Because probably I had come off a couple of tournaments where I had a second and I had done a lot of work. And now I needed a bit of release from that. Mm -hmm. So then your routine is very tight. You work in the morning with the second. Your second gives you the feedback. You check everything, you go through all the material, and then you're ready to play. Mm -hmm. That's obviously one approach. But sometimes I find if I do that a couple of times, then by the third tournament, I'm longing to be a little bit free, maybe reduce the work because mm -hmm. it might be fresh in your head. Mm -hmm. So these things, I think your mood is a more important factor. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know how your routine works, but for me, uh, I like to vary it once in a while. I see. Um, yeah. And yes. Um, so I, most of the players have come with seconds. It'll be essential in the, by the later rounds. Yes, that's but, true. But uh, you can always fly in someone a couple of rounds later if you <laughs> want, so who knows. Yes. And what usually is your approach uh, during the earlier round of the World Cup? Like, for example, if you were in the situation of uh, Magnus Carlsen right now, and um, he's facing about 250, 300 points, uh, a player that is lower than him, uh, as the... For the first round, do you do you want to go to, uh, get it all out or just play some solid chess first, you know, warm up a little bit, and then maybe on the second game, then you'll be taking a more offensive chess? What was your strategy usually? For me, it's usually just specifics. Uh, which opening am I facing? What do I want to play against that? 
I think these labels as uh, aggressive, passive are hard to um, put into play. Uh, and also to, uh, to add one more detail, for Magnus, a solid line can be a dangerous line because mm -hmm. he's the kind of guy who can keep squeezing. Yes. Uh, you know, pressing a small advantage. So for him, even if he wants to have a slow day and makes a few slow moves, he's still able to put some pressure on his opponent. Yeah. <laughs> um, there are... Um, most of the players, I think, have learned to incorporate that aspect a little bit, though mm -hmm. he's still... I think by far wins the most equal games, <laughs> equal yeah. positions. Yeah. Um, and Magnus tends to be focused on avoiding the kind of theoretical positions he dislikes getting. Uh. He doesn't avoid theory anymore mm -hmm. um, because these days it's much harder to mm -hmm. do so. But he is still very, very stylistic, I think. He tries to get to uh, what he wants to play, but he's much more flexible. He nowadays willing to confront opponents in very sharp positions if he feels that's called for mm -hmm. and vice mm -hmm. versa. So he's uh, um, doing that. Let's uh, come back to this. I want to just point out that Jan Nepomnishi's his top weapon is the Petrov defense. Yes, the Petrov. So yeah. here we have Vugara sadly playing the Petrov against, <laughs> against him. Yes. You know, raising him. Yes. So... Um, Jan has then gone on to play this line, which is, uh, can we go back a few moves? Yeah. Yep. He, is, he played the bishop d3. 3 d4. Mm -hmm. um, the more popular move is knight takes e5, mm -hmm. but uh, he decided to. And here there are still some open lines. Um, so I think he wanted to. I don't know if he expected this or not, and so, but he has the ability to say, well, what do, what is it I find most unpleasant yeah. to play, and try and pull something out. Or probably this is something that he already has in his pocket because, uh, judging from the time management, he didn't really spend much time deciding the third move d4 and then bishop d3. It's an interesting question uh, whether watching Jan Napomnishi's time management mm. tells you anything. Oh. Because I think you can catch him completely off surprise and he might still blitz the first three moves and then only think. So <laughs> probably you shouldn't be reading too much into it. I, I mean, he's fully capable of just charging in a couple of moves and then thinking. Uh -huh. So uh, let's go a bit further. Anyway, we'll see this. And this is a nice uh, line, bishop c5. Mm -hmm. uh, fairly theoretical, so there'll be some, obviously some subtle move. I don't think he's um, particularly scored heavily here. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, then again, the Petrov is, Petrov is bulletproof. Quite flexible, yeah, so it's yeah. quite mm -hmm. bulletproof. Mm -hmm. Anish is... Anish Giri, I mean, we're literally working down the table here. <laughs> yes. Anish Giri is playing some sort of solid uh, Queen's Indian type position. Did it come from a Catalan? Yes, it came from it a is, Catalan. Yeah. It is a Catalan. But so it started like this. There are exciting lines after D takes C4, mm -hmm. but Anish went for the solid one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I, I've seen knight BD7, so rook E8 uh, can be some slightly important detail, and A5. So here we are. So I don't, I'm not enough into the subtleties of this position to think, so why don't we just wait and see how things shape up a bit? Yes. Do uh, you think the rook E8 is uh, kind of like a preparation for A3 so that the bishop can just be stored on F8? Could be also. It could be that that uh, by delaying uh, the knight from moving from uh, b8, you keep the option of uh, bringing it to other squares mm -hmm. potentially in some lines. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I'm not sorry, not sure why this arrow happened. I'm not sure why either, either arrow, arrow happened, but let's. Uh, yeah, now it's gone. Uh, Wesley So. Yeah. What do you take about this game? It's coming from a Sicilian game. Yes, he's gone for a um, Rosolimo type mm -hmm. uh, structure, but still very dangerous. Um, there's quite a lot of subtleties yeah. in this kind of position. Queen e3. You were mentioning about Anish uh, releasing his uh, courses. Uh, this is actually, if I'm not mistaken, one of the courses that Wesley published on uh, Chessable. So I think he's, he's also doing, maybe there's of course some development to the courses and probably he's using it in this uh, preparation for this match. 
Yes. Um, also, it's a fair assumption that his opponent has studied this. Yes, <laughs> of uh, course. Because you kind of have to go into this. Yeah. Uh, but then again, if you believe in the line, you believe in the line. Mm -hmm. um, what Wesley will potentially do is obvious things to mm -hmm. play rook d1. Another obvious plan is to bring this knight to rotate the knights. Then you have these knights there uh, putting a lot of pressure on the queen side. Mm -hmm. uh, these are certain obvious plans. Mm -hmm. I think... Uh, the option of bishop c4, sorry, we have too many... Too many arrows. Too many arrows, I'll try to clear that, <laughs> yes. Uh, this option of going bishop c4 and queen e2 should be promising, mm -hmm. to my mind. But because of the circuitous route the queen has taken, you're at least a tempo yep. down on what you want to be. Mm -hmm. So normally, if the bishop had gone here and the queen had gone from here to here, that would be nice. Mm -hmm. But the queen has instead gone here, come here, and then dropping back. Mm -hmm. So it's three moves to do what you would require yeah. one move to do. So it might not work out tactically. Um, so you let's said see, still you said the other alternative might be working better with the rook d1. Rook d1 and what, where do you go with the bishop on c1? Is it b3, bishop b2 or? Yes, it could be b3, bishop b2 or b3, b bishop a3. a3 yes. um, but for me, I'm kind of thinking how to play knight d2, c4 first. Uh -huh. um, I'm sure Emre Khan knows what he's doing, mm -hmm. but um, um, to me, this setup can often get you into trouble with black. Then you have to be very precise to, because of exactly of bishop c4, queen e2. If white can get that rearrangement, it can be unpleasant. Yes, but, I see. Uh, let's say I'm sure he knows what he's doing. Yeah. I think that might be a reasonable assumption today. And it's still very early to judge as well, because yeah. we're still in a very early stage of opening. Um, do you want to see uh, the women section scheme? Perhaps uh, our okay. our I think that is uh, reigning world champion, Ju Wen Jun. Uh, he just kept scrolling. Yeah. Sorry, I'll do it. Should be like 35 boards, right? Yeah. Oh, what is it? Uh, 64 boards, actually, and then you get the women. Ah, it's, it's this one. Like ah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there you go. Okay. Again, obvious uh, deduction would be that Ju Bin Jun has a lot of ideas stored up. Mm -hmm. Lots of ideas that didn't quite make it. Mm -hmm. Um on the board, and um, but you've got them in your head, and you can throw them in any time you want. Yeah. So that's a nice bit of flexibility to have. Um, She's playing the usual Catalan. She's known to to have yes. this as her main weapon. And um, I mean, a5 and b6 looks perfectly sensible. Mm -hmm. If I can follow up with bishop a6, uh, potentially b5 somewhere. So we'll see. Yeah. So apparently it is also quite a prep because, well, I like to see the player's time management because Black's time management is actually gaining uh, 1 minute and 42 mm -hmm. seconds. So yeah, I think uh, Black is doing fine, of course. Again, this is very early um, on the game. And we have in the camera there, Ju Wen Jun, thinking for her next move and deciding. And behind her, there's Magnus spacing. Yes. Uh, but Joe Wenjun, yes, does look very, very focused, doesn't she? Yeah. So we have uh, four top boards in the open on the stage mm -hmm. and two top women's board. Right. And there you go. We see Eva Repkova from Slovakia. Uh, I think she's coming out from her semi-retirement because I haven't seen her playing s tournaments these days. And I just, uh, I was just a bit surprised that she came back playing and and then the event is World Cup itself. That's quite impressive. Yeah. That uh, and she managed to straight come here. Yeah, yeah. and she uh, managed to uh, have quite an upset in the first stage, and it was versus Yakubova Nilufar, mm -hmm. um, an up and rising Uzbek player. So, yeah, it's 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 another sign that the experienced player versus the youngster on that match. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, and on the second board, 
again, fairly solid line. Mm -hmm. We saw this. Um, this has become slightly popular recently. Yep, the Queen Gambit Exchange. Yes, uh, Black is doing it so that when White exchanges these bishops, mm -hmm. Black can then uh, bring this knight to that square. Mm -hmm. This knight goes back to that square and you play C5, yes. like we saw with uh, Ding and uh, uh, Nepomuchi Nepom in their mm -hmm. match as well. So. Yep, so yeah, this, this position has been played. Yeah. Thousand of times, yeah. <laughs> sure. Probably not that many, but it's uh, quite topical recently, yeah. and uh, again, it's it's very solid and hard to break through. Yeah, and a white player uh, Ordas Valdez, um, she met quite an upset against the American champion Jennifer Yu on the first round. So, uh, and this this round she's taking on Gretchen Alexandra. So this is quite a tough match for, for her. Yes, that was a big upset. And uh, so uh, one can assume that she is very dangerous and that uh, Koryashkina should play. Keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Though by rating, she's, she outranks her by quite a lot of uh, like 200 points, right? And we can move to the... Um, All India Clash. All Indian Clash, yes. Priyanka Nutaki and Against, uh, Conero Humpy. Against veteran, yes, Conero Humpy. Um, nowadays, you get these Queen's Gambit light setups, but with so many move order, there's so much move order confusion. Yes. That, um, so let's look at this. Typically, you bring the bishop out or the knight out. Mm -hmm. Ampi says, look, I'm going to start with queen c2, and then I'll bring them out in the reverse order. So now when you play and you try to remember old games, um, you've got to uh, reorient yourself in mm -hmm. terms of move orders, the end position, so on. But watch what happens. a5, a3, bishop e7. So now let's assume that you go something like bishop f4, mm -hmm. castles, uh, knight c3. Mm -hmm. Then from Black's perspective, all the usual moves like c5 don't look so nice because the square is now very weak five, thanks yes. to this interpolation. There's nothing wrong with a3, but this doesn't combine well. So you'll have to find different setups to uh, make this work. Mm -hmm. And um, as a result, to be honest, I'm slightly favoring uh, white here. I think it's... Um, it's an open question what kind of setup black is going to go for. Yes, exactly. Because c5 is very typical, but uh, again, like what, what you mentioned, knight b5 is unpleasant for black. So Yes. So you would have to try something more along the lines of a bogo, mm -hmm. which means you play knight, knight bd7 and c6. Uh, and, and trying to push e5. Thing. But the problem point. is, again, that because white yeah. didn't play e3, she can get e4 in one move. Mm -hmm. And so I think uh, probably quite clever on uh, Conero Humpy's mm -hmm. part to start off with this move, queen c2. Mm -hmm. We saw the extreme version of this with uh, Ding and uh, Ding Liren and, and Yan Nepomuchi when he yeah. played 4h3. Yeah. But I think queen c2 on balance <laughs> is probably a better move. A better move. <laughs> yes. Yeah, also that game resulting in a loss to, to Ding. Yeah? Yes. So maybe queen c3 is a better alternative to that. Sure. And gives more flexi flexibility to what's position as well. Right. Um, okay, this is uh, another interesting board. Mary Ann Gomez playing against Katrina Lagno, obviously one of the top seeds. Mm -hmm. And uh, here White is basically saying, you know what, make it an end game. Yes. Go on. <laughs> uh, so Black can take on C3 and then take on D1. I think the way white has done it probably shouldn't be that dangerous. I, I mean, if I'm going to have this, I'd rather have the pawn on b2. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, but but now you already have They're just three. happy to have a position. Mm -hmm. uh, by this, I mean they don't aim for some big uh, theoretical advantage, mm -hmm. but they just try to have an interesting position where you can um, come up with moves on your own and play at the board. Mm -hmm. So slightly non-theoretical approach there. Do you think uh, Katrina will take on this uh, to go straight into end game, or just continue slowly developing the pieces, Bishop E7, Castle, and so on? Both are possible. Um, 
If we go bishop e7, bishop b2, then white does in fact um, can continue with something like queen b1 and yep. h4. Uh, so I think it might be in black's interest to take this or mm -hmm. to be quite to have a specific idea of how you're going to go forward. Are you playing b6, bishop b7, or mm -hmm. b6, bishop a6? So Delaying is the knight going to d7? Mm -hmm. Is it going to c6? You, it's important to know in three or four moves what kind of position you want mm -hmm. to be having. And knight c3 is on the board. It's on so the board. Good. She's taking on it and goes straight to the end game. Uh, and well, I just wanted to point out that mm -hmm. uh, Katrina could also avoid the end game, but she isn't. She's she just isn't, taking. Yeah, she's taking. So it. she's uh, quite. Satisfied with the same game, I think. Okay, let's uh, move on. The next board is also quite interesting. Um. Yeah, Yan Tianqi. Uh, she also made an upset in the earlier round. There you go. Oh, um, she defeated Nandida from India. Right. Yes, and now she's facing um, Kostinyuk Alexandra. This is um, the French, yeah. This is the French, but also we're going to get this uh, French Vienna kind of thing if this happens, mm -hmm. where the Black King doesn't castle but settles down on e7. But because of this pawn formation, mm -hmm. it's actually got a good uh, Shelter, wall, yeah? mm -hmm. a good wall in front. Mm -hmm. So um, I think White could con consider f4, but then. Um, a lot of details to examine. Do you play h6? Do you play knight d5? And so on. But I think f4 is a reasonable, reasonable try. choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here, uh, black strategy is just to wait and not to castle first, just to see whether bishop f6 happen. I mean, of course, the bishop on d7 is hanging. But uh, on the next few moves, maybe just try to flex, uh, try to be flexible on that matter. Correct. Um, there's a it's very hard for black to castle till this tension here is resolved. So right. either you play h6 g5 or mm -hmm. h6 knight d5 or maybe even knight d5 uh, and force white to make a decision. Are you going to take the bishop on d7? Are you going to move your bishop? Mm -hmm. You know what? Uh, you can't just, white can't keep all the options open like this. So that is interesting. Yes, We see on the camera that's uh, Alexander Kostenyuk versus Yan Tianqi, a young player from China. Yeah. So, this World Cup is the fifth uh, World Cup for Magnus Carlsen, by the way, and he's never won any title in the World Cup. So, probably fifth time is the charm <laughs> for <Yeah>. him. <laughs> you. How many times can he not win it, right? Uh, in yeah. he, he wins almost everything else. <laughs> yes, yes. Multiple times, and that's uh, true. It's like his French Open, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he just can't uh, think. So unless you are uh, Rafael Nadal, yeah. <laughs> yes, I mean, I, I I was thinking of Federer, but of course you could take another name, and then uh, for Nadal it it was from Wimbledon till he mm -hmm. won it. But you know, everybody has some kind of event um, that eludes them for a while, uh, but we'll see. Who else hasn't won it yet? Has Fabiano won it? I don't think so. Fabiano no, he's hasn't. won the Grand Swiss, but, yeah, not, but the not this one. Uh -huh. He's not won the World Cup, so he's wanting to do it as well. Hikaru hasn't won Actually one. Actually, the Grand Swiss was won which year, you mean? Uh, the uh, He tied with Firusha and he yeah. tied with Wang Hao, right? Yeah, but. And he both years, uh, the tie break, the but tie you break kind of. Lost. I mean, yeah. my thing is, well, come on, it's okay. uh, <laughs> you tied for first and leave it at that. Yes, yes. I mean, I understand tie breaks have a certain validity for whatever, mm -hmm, some mm -hmm. promotion or whatever, but. Mm -hmm. um, you can only score the points needed. You can't yes. <laughs> arrange everything in the tournament. Uh, so he's actually a very impressive record in the uh, Grand Swiss. Grand Swiss. Mm -hmm. But he's missing. Hikaru hasn't won a World Cup either. No. Right? So actually a lot of extra motivated people. Yeah. So and this is this is their multiple times uh, playing the World Cup as well, not only Carson. So we'll see who is going to surface to be the winner. And we see in the camera in the far distance is Tan Zongyi, also uh, taking on a very strong player, uh, an experienced one actually from Australia, Yulia Rionova. Mm -hmm. Do you want to see or come back to the open section, or do you want yeah, to take a look at that. any? Well, we c we'll have to go back and forth because mm -hmm. uh, it's 
it's going to be a bit chaotic okay magnus is doing his g6 thing which is uh, he likes to typically black normally fianchettos on one side mm -hmm. uh, he's going for both sides he's going to both mm -hmm. uh, which is also common once you play c5 uh, you sometimes fianchetto on both sides but um, I think again, modern theory has uh, so many new ideas that uh, you can combine them in all sorts of ways. Bishop f4, also what the computer shows sometimes is when you can't think of a move, just play h4. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm convinced that it'll pop up somewhere, either h5 or h4, but I anyway. Um, and knight c3. I, look, if the bishop was on e7, then you could say black is equal right away here. Mm -hmm. I would assume that black is not in any trouble, but um, queen e7, rook d8, you'll have to keep an eye on that d6 pawn. Yes. Because uh, white's moves will be rook a d1, rook d2, or e4, or something like that. We'll go to this one. So the knight on b8 belongs to c6, yeah? I think. Uh, I, I don't... Uh, I don't know. C6 obviously has the advantage you threaten knight d4 or something, but um, if you put the knight the knight here, you can play d5 because c5 will be slightly better defended. Mm -hmm. If you put the knight on c6, then the knight is having ambitions of its own, but mm -hmm. you can't play d5 anymore because I'll do that and your knight is not defending c5 ideally. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of subtleties. Um, but this is a dream position nowadays, right? That you just get a position where it's not been, uh, everything's not resolved by the computer yes. and you can just sit and play chess. Yes. So may the better player win, as it turns out. Yeah, I think this is a wise choice by, by Carson because yeah. uh, you don't want to play against computer, right? <laughs> you just want to play against the human. Yes. I have one, one uh, question. So in this tournament, uh, there is a chance for Gukesh uh, to take over your position after 37 years of being number one Indian. So what do you think about that? Um, he would need to gain, what, three yellow points? Just three yellow and, points, uh, yeah. Yes, it, uh, it could happen. I would uh, assume that despite the fact that it's quite a significant record mm -hmm. after 37 years. It's a great record, Fishy. <laughs> but it, there is a couple of things. It could have happened earlier mm. if I was playing more. I see. Because then my rating would fluctuate more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But because recently I've so let's say semi-retired uh, or I play a few select tournaments in the year and so on, my position has kind of become a fixed target. Mm -hmm. And then, so it was 57, then after the Club Cup it dropped to 54 or something like that, 56, mm -hmm. 54, now it's... And so I'm sort of uh, got a very stable rating. Whereas... Um, uh, Gukesh, you know, in every because he's highly ranked, he tends to play a lot of people uh, lower rated than mm -hmm. him, which means that every draw is co costing him fractions. That's right. That's so right. it's um, uh, it's a target. Let's say one person is chasing. <laughs> let's put it that way, because uh, the other one is standing still. But it, I think the focus here should be to qualify on the candidates. Yes, that's uh, true. Qualify for the candidates mm -hmm. and um, uh, put this in the back of the, his head. I'm sure he knows that. Also, I think you do much better when you don't aim for these things, but it, you just let them happen. That's right. You focus on playing a good game, mm -hmm. and you let your rating take care of itself. Yeah. Having said that, yes, it would be... Uh, I will admit, uh, it'll be funny to wake up one morning and think I'm not India <laughs> number one, because you yes. kind of get used to it. But uh, look, if it happens, it's uh, great. It shows um, that India is doing very well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's also another challenge for him. Um, if he could surpass you, he will have to stay um, surpassing you for another 30 days pretty much and keep it that way until the next rating publish. Yes, that's the other little detail, which is that uh, he could pass me multiple times, you mm -hmm. know, and I could pass him multiple times within this tournament, <laughs> yes. which, but uh, generally a record, uh, I think, is the end of the month rating. Yes, that's right. Uh, but... When I play, when I was India number one, the ratings used to be every six months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they got faster, then they faster, were quarters, yeah. and then they became and monthly, and, monthly and so on. And mm -hmm. now we have 
live rating lists mm -hmm. and what have you. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a bit of apples and oranges, but look, um, uh, it's the first time. Uh, again, he's uh, almost at the top ten. Yeah. He's break, broken 2750. These are huge accomplishments. So uh, phenomenal uh, thing that he's done. Yes. Yeah. A, a bright future for Gukesh for sure. Yes. And okay, uh, there is some surprising thing here. Mm -hmm. Let's quickly finish uh, Hikaru and Karthik. Sure. Hikaru has decided that he's not going to go for the sharp theoretical mm -hmm. lines. Again, it makes sense. He doesn't know what his opponent has prepared. Mm -hmm. Lots of sub variations. He's just going for some positional Italian style maneuvering. Yes. So even though it became a it was a Rylopus, mm -hmm. it's become an Italian mm -hmm. again because the bishop is on that diagonal. Yep. So sorry, I'm sorry about the second arrow, but anyway. Um, and now this knight has wandered here. To my mind, it should be equal. Yeah, it, it looks like a very normal position, yeah? But Hikaru uh, wants to play an equal position rather than mm -hmm. uh, confront his opponent too much. Um, OK. Uh, the, uh, what I want to say is that Fabi has done some very unusual things. So we might as well take a look. Yes. So as I mentioned earlier, knight e5 was um, Yeah, uh, it's, it's what theory. we predicted, yeah. And mm -hmm. I was about to say then that the reason they don't go knight f6 is because of f4. Uh, so let me make that move. And then you play f4, and then this allows this big clamp. Sorry. On the uh, king side. So the, the knight mm -hmm. put there with mm -hmm. two pawns supporting mm -hmm. it. And it's not easy for black to. I mean, if you move the knight away, you're losing time and so on. And of course, Fabiano says. Let me question that. Let me ask if let it's me really true. It, yeah. Let me see the point of thing. Yeah. So what he's done is he's gone queen b6. So there's a double threat here. He's threatening to capture the spawn, mm -hmm. but there's also a pin here. Mm -hmm. So if I go rook b1, he could, for instance, take Just here. Just take twice on e5. And take here, and he's up a pawn. Mm -hmm. So uh, white plays queen b3, which means that if black does any funny things on e5, I can exchange queens thereby relieving the bishop uh, on e3, so this problem doesn't come anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, look at Fabi's move, knight g8. <laughs> so this is modern chess. He just says, I'm going to rework my knights. Now he has the option to play f5 and bring the knight out. Yes, this is such a peculiar idea, yeah? Yeah. yeah. How many he has the possibility to, sorry, uh, he can play f6 and mm -hmm. kick it, mm -hmm. because the queen is no longer able to go uh, in this direction, mm -hmm. and so on. So, uh, but more to the point, Fabi has played an idea that he, his opponent probably didn't expect, and he's saying you have to solve these problems at the board. Um, good strategy. I mean, it it's is, what yes. he needs to do today. So, Bishop d3. I'm not completely sure white knight h6 is essential. It seems to me I could just as well, just as well start with f6. Uh, do you see something wrong with f6? Do you think this sort of move uh, and this idea, going back to f6 and g8 and now h6, is this something that he comes up with on the board or maybe at some point of his life he's al already analyzing this position before? It seems to me that he has uh, seen this idea before. Mm -hmm. That would be my assumption. In fact, it's also very computerish because computers don't hesitate to play knight g8. Mm, that's true. Uh, mm -hmm. If necessary, it's yes. humans who have all these yeah, old human ideas. Has doubts, that, yeah? uh, mm -hmm. Don't move it back. Yeah. Don't move it twice in the opening, and all the computer free of any conceptions, no mm -hmm. preconceptions. So it seems to me that it's been prepared at home, and um, yeah, yeah. Therefore, th it probably works. <laughs> it's also <laughs> a reasonable assumption. Yeah, this is going to be a very interesting one because, um, well, usually also in the openings, we're being taught that not to lose so many tempi with one piece, yeah? Uh, and thereby this knight is already moved how many times? One, two, three, four, five. Now five times out of uh, 12 moves. Yes, but there are lots of games where I've noticed that when you put a pawn on f4, the computer likes to play knight at six. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes sense, right? Because then suddenly the knight on f6 is not so good, but you keep the option of playing with the f pawn. Uh, you keep the option of doing this, and then the knight has access to some very nice squares to in invade. Yeah, uh, something like these squares you could... Um, okay. 
So night is that. Just wanted to point out it's happened. I don't think um, anything dramatic has happened, but at least a nice new idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we have uh, Jan against um, Ugara Sadli. And um, one of the things white is trying to do is discourage black from castling queenside, mm -hmm. but also clearly discourage him from castling kingside mm -hmm. because There's then I'll capture this pawn. Yeah. So mm -hmm. he's trying to put pressure on that pawn. But um, black is playing hit six. Mm -hmm. But subsequently, play rook g8. He could play bishop f5, try to trade the bishops. Uh, so there are many ways to liberate oneself. White has this option to play rook on b1. Mm -hmm. uh, then again, black has to make one or two tricky choices. Mm -hmm. um, and and do you think I'm sure they have, the theory has gone a long long way? But uh, right now, I'm not able to recall it off the top of my head. So <laughs> yeah. sorry, you were saying? No, uh, it's a. Uh do you think the double pawn on C file will make any trouble for White in the future? So does it mean White shouldn't go to the end game? Is that correct? If it's very, it it would depend on whether Black can um, actually take advantage. I mean, if, is there a piece which could do some damage there? If the queen is around, yes, queen a4, queen a3, all these things could mm -hmm. attack. Or if the bishops are exchanged, the dark square bishop, queen c6 looks dangerous. But uh, if Black can't do anything, then. Uh, Nothing wrong with these pawns. I mean, the, these pawns are quite good to stop. White is in the minority on the queen side, mm -hmm. and double pawns are often much more effective against pass pawns ah, because they don't uh, roll along quite so fast. Yes. So, uh, it's, I would say the fact that white can play rook kb1 is more important than the double pawns right now. That will become a factor later. Yes. And we see in the camera, uh, Ian is twisting some one of the pieces. <laughs> his also, work. I would say the most <laughs> dramatic development is that Ian is forced to think. And if he's forced to think in a Petrov, then I think Vukar uh. <laughs> is doing quite well. So, um, but he could also just be recollecting his ideas and trying to come up with something uh, specific. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's definitely thinking right now and his opening is gone. I'll probably see other games trying to... Uh, this is something that I also usually do during some tournaments, like if I have my preparations uh, on the game and then I would just walk around to see other other type of preparation that <laughs> other players do. Um, is that a case too in your the, in the level, in the top level uh, tournaments? Absolutely. I, most of the players get that because how long can you sit there? You, yeah. you know, you've put your response on the table mm -hmm. And um, if the if it's still very uncertain, you you might want to stay and th think. But mm -hmm. if you have time left, why not get up and go have a look at other things? Uh, stretch your legs a little bit. Yep. Stretch your arms and uh, come back, and then focus again. I think it's much harder to actually stay focused on one game for five or six hours mm -hmm. than it is keep these short breaks. And uh, and honestly, once you played hit six. How long are you going to sit there staring at the position? Yeah, this is. It's so it's a it's an excellent chance to get up and yeah. walk around. Yeah, it's not a very complicated position so far. Uh, maybe we can move on to uh, the other game. Anish, um, I think doing quite well. I mean, he's played a4 and um, looks pretty equalish to me. Mm -hmm. um, now he's been given an option what to, to do with the bishop f4 right. before. Mm -hmm. I would assume why he would take it, maybe take on b3 and play knight bd7 or something, but um, I could also do this, which is um, capture this mm -hmm. and then play knight c6 because then the bishop ah, is defended. And that is things funny. like that you have, but I can't see a wrong move at this point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Almost it's just a matter of taste. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, let's just see if anything else happened. Okay, here we are. And yes. so he's finally got this bishop c4, he's got queen e2. And mm -hmm. the question is, did black do something useful at this time? He could play b5, because white has lost some s time here. Mm -hmm. And if you take, then I take, you would have to take the rook. Yes. And queen I takes. would take with the queen, and then whichever way you take, you take with the bishop. I play knight c5. And now I'm f it's four versus two on this pawn. Mm -hmm. And in one move, you can only bring one piece to support it, so I'll yes. still capture it. Yeah. And um, so black has got one, two, 
three, four, and as a result, it's going to go. So already b5, I'm not sure what Wesley wants. It might equalize right away. Perhaps he'll take with the knight, right? And then see if he can. Uh, he can pressure us on d6. Yeah, yeah. pressure, but I, I don't see how. Black is going to bring the other knight mm -hmm, to f6, mm -hmm. or maybe play d5. I don't really see what Wesley's plan is here. Because bishop b5, knight c5 looks like a killer. Yeah, and probably after b5, uh, if you are already seeing or foreseeing this uh, posi position, you can you just go bishop b3, avoiding these things, and after b4, knight d5? Or maybe it's not actually a good idea because there's knight c5 coming, yeah? Ah, that's a good point. Uh, knight c5 is very strong. Yeah, knight c5 is very strong. I mean, I was strong. thinking b4, yes. but knight c5 is very strong. But on top of that, if you're going to play, if after b4 you were going to play knight d5 anyway, mm -hmm. then why don't you save yourself a move and then go bishop d5? Mm -hmm. Admittedly, I think it's kind of flat because I'm going to take this. And if you take with the rook, I'm uh, winning a... No, I'm not winning a pawn. Because if I did this... And e5 I is hanging, took, yeah? Yeah, mm -hmm. you will still take on e5. Though maybe queen c7 wins another pawn, but... But it's hard to believe in this sort of move. I mean, I can even play b takes a4, and you know, thanks to the fork on yeah. b6, you can't really do much. So b5, wow. b5 will be quite a move in this position if uh, Emre Chan finds it, yeah? Yeah, but I know Wesley, he doesn't play bishop c4 just like that for fun. So yes. there must be some small line which he has. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's some sting at the end, or maybe he uh, he's just saying, look, if you know the best moves, you mm -hmm. know the best moves, and... I'll take it. Uh, we'll see. We'll come back to this. We'll come back to this, And yes. see if black finds b5. Um, yeah. This so. is interesting because the, this white pawn is normally on this square. But mm -hmm. in the Petrov, but here it's jumped yes. <laughs> in front. <laughs> because he started with c4 and then the pawn captured here. Uh, but, I mean, let's not... Let's wait for them to make a few more moves. I think this is just way too early. Mm-hmm. Gukesh yeah. against Iskandarov. Iskandarov. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is uh, interesting. These lines should be very close to equality because mm -hmm. uh, you put the bishops like this and um, at some point you liberate yourself with d5. Yeah. So if you play d5, then the point is that bishop is going to come there, that knight is going to come there, mm -hmm. things like that happen. I... My feeling is always it's much harder for white to squeeze water out of a rock here mm -hmm. than it for black to prove that it's a rock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I think black's position is easier to play. And even if you make a mistake or two, it's not a disaster. But white, it's so easy that it fizzles. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, this this sort of a uh, position, I guess, it's... it's um, yeah, like, as you said, it's easier to play as black because as white, you are under pressure to keep making the best move in order to maintain some advantage. Whereas yes, when you analyze with the computer, they, they, they do miracles to <laughs> yeah. keep something. But with black, look, knight d7, bishop f6, queen yes. c7. These are all moves you would make if, uh, even if you are very sleepy. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. OK, let's move along a bit. Chakriyar Mamadiarov. Ah, this was one of these. Uh, yeah, the QGA. QGA with uh, allowing yeah. um, b5 and a6. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of relevant. Bishop a3, knight bd7, knight bd2, bishop b7. And um, these positions could be slightly better for white, especially if I can fix the pawn on a5 mm -hmm. and try to do something there. But uh, Shakriya is obviously. He has checked this and he feels that it's no big deal. Yeah. Um, his opponent is uh, Ding Jing Yao. He's currently Singapore number one. Yep. A very young player and very talented as well. And we see in the camera Ding Jing Yao and Shahriar Mamad Yarov. And uh, Shaq has played. Takes he on. takes D4 yeah. already. And how. How to deal in this position? Like, uh, how d how do you take back on d4? Is it with the knight on f or knight with b? I think it's equally good. 
I don't know. Also, I don't know if I would rather take on e7 first. And you take, and then mm -hmm. I play knight fd4. And if you castle some sort of knight a5. I'm not claiming a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But and knight e5 maybe, yeah? Yes, or bishop uh, e4. Bishop e4. Queens, no, queen c5, maybe some queen d2 or I don't know. I But I don't get the feeling this is terribly dangerous for black. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's uh, so then, ah, MVL is doing some interesting stuff. So this is the line which is very, very solid for black. So black accepts these double pawns. Oh, yeah. The but um, white has been forced to exchange queens. Mm -hmm. And MVL has come up with an interesting plan. He will play bishop g4. I guess his idea would be to play bishop f5 and g4. Mm -hmm. Cement that in place. Mm -hmm. And then um, rotate the knight back. Probably to b4 or d3. d3 and or then b4. Yeah. It could mm -hmm. be 4 or c5. Mm -hmm. uh, either one of these squares could be a target. But if you cement that. But and there is no way for black to go around and then try to uh, I don't attack see how the f5. I don't see how to implement it, actually. Yeah. So let's say that I play in it6. If you check, I think I can even move. But I might be able to just say, you know what, doesn't matter. Hit 6 and then keep waiting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Um, if you play f4, then I have the square, which I can jump and bail out. Mm -hmm. and, um, if bishop f5, all I have to do is step away the rook, and I can even attack that thing with knight g7, yes. fighting for the f5 square. So so far, I think um, the only thing is black has committed this um, pawn here, but I wouldn't say that it's necessarily a fatal mistake. Yeah, this is this is interesting. And Dragnev Valentin from Austria, um, he beat Kobo Ori in the first round, mm -hmm. and he's now facing MVL. Not it's not an easy opening, of, uh, obviously. Yeah. Oh, we have a very interesting position here. Uh, F three Nimzo, same ish Nimzo. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look. This is Dominguez. Dominguez versus Yannick Igor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's just see the moves. F3. Very, very sharp line. Lots of lovely complications. So that's why commentators get excited by it anyway. Mm -hmm. Even if the players may or may not. Knight G2, B5. Knight F4. Takes on G5. Mm -hmm. You could also play e5, right? Yeah, 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 I think so too. If you want to close the position, yeah, it depends on the taste. And then he's gone queen b6. Yeah. So clearly, um, if queen takes a8, bishop, bishop b7. b7, and it's simply the queen is trapped. So he takes this, sorry, captures the pawn, comes back here. And Lenier Dominguez plays d takes e4. Is this going to be a very sharp game, I guess? Or attacking game by black? Um, it might not be possible to attack, because I, I might be able to play bishop e2, right? Or and then just c4 castle. and castle, and mm -hmm. I'm getting out. But maybe black just has enough compensation. If I play something like a6, maybe I'll just be able to exchange mm, and the win back a pawn. Bishop, yeah. mm -hmm. Let's try a few moves. I mean, one idea is to sack another pawn. Mm -hmm. So that the bishop doesn't uh, slam it shut, but um, it is two pawns. I could try maybe knight d7 here, so that if you go bishop c4, then I attack that. Yeah. And keep it slightly loose. And the knight is standing very well on e5, and black yeah. is slightly better. And if you go bishop b2, I might want to sack the pawn mm -hmm. now, so that you can't cast it. Yes, uh, this is a good idea. So knight d7 seems like a reasonable thing. What would I play, a3? If you go knight d7, like, could I try a3? It's possible. And then bishop 
You can go bishop a5, yeah? You don't need to take on c3. Well, then I was hoping that knight ah. a4 might be significant. Because if you go queen c7, I can... Uh, it's not such a big deal anyway, yeah. because I'm slowly coming around attacking it. E4 is still under attack, and the king is still in the center. Looks very dangerous for white. I think this should be a mistake, but uh, I'm not able to say so 100%. I could do it like this and take on e4 and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. take on c3. So feels wrong to give up the bishop, but e4 is uh, cannot be defended, right? Maybe we can take a look one more game before we go on our first break. Okay. Let's uh, maybe take a look at the women's section. Uh, our uh, women's champion, Duane Jun. You can scroll up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so Ju Wen Jun and thing. Again, I'm fairly familiar with this position with the white pawn on a2 mm -hmm. and the black pawn on a7. Mm -hmm. But with this inclusion, um, this square becomes permanently available to black. And so you have funny tactics. If I go here, I don't know whether to take this or to take this. And then maybe bishop b4 somewhere. Yeah. And knight c5 is coming probably. Yes, or the other idea we normally do is e5. Okay. Uh, and the point here is that I cannot capture like this because yes. it's pinned. Mm -hmm. So I would take like this. You would go knight g4, threatening to bring these. And now you see that black has a fantastic square for the knight and bishop. But um, uh, white plays bishop f4, holds on to this pawn for dear life. and. Uh, but again... Including a5 and a4, every line, yeah. uh, you have to compare. So Isn't it should be a sharp yeah. position. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there will be very um, dynamic ideas. Or she may just not play e4. But then what is she supposed to do? Rook d1, bishop yeah, f4. Yeah, get ready for stuff, right? get ready for the coming e5. e5. Yeah. So rook d1, I think it's a very good idea. In fact, it is what she has done. She's just gone rook d1. Rook d1, yes. I think you can see it on the board. Ah, there it is. And now it appears on our thing. So she's gone rook d1. And uh, yeah, still everything to happen. Yep. And wow, well, it's quite a different time difference between Juven Jun and Eva Repkova. So. I think she's still thinking which line to play, which type of strategy or plan that she'd like to go. Um, there's still so many nuances in this type of uh, Catalan game, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think we can go on to our first break, but before that, please do send us a question, as, and especially if you have a question for Fishy Anan, please uh, send us a question via Twitter, and you can tag us on hashtag Fida World Cup and tag uh, the Fida account, Fida underscore chess, and we will select a few questions to be uh, answered by Fishy broadcast in this broadcast. So don't go anywhere. We will come back in a short break. Azerbaycan'ın təbiyyətindən, Nıxçıvanın torpağından süzülərək gələn təbii suyun sirri, Sirab. Hər damlasında həyat var.
Welcome back to the round two of FIDE World Cup and FIDE Women's World Cup in Baku, Azerbaijan. I'm here still with Fishy Anan. And during the break, uh, we collect a few questions. And one of them is from Balaji Jaya Raman. A question okay. to you, Fishy. Uh, yeah. Playing for two days or possibly three with lots of games to go through every round with each getting only tougher. Do you reckon a change in format is needed? Like play one classical game, white or black, leave it li leave it to a toss, giving anyone no real advantage, and then tie breaks. What do you think? I don't see it as needed. I think the current system works well. I mean, you get one color each, and if necessary, you go to the tie breaks. Mm -hmm. It's it's not a terrible thing. Um, but, you know, the, that's not to say that uh, some experimentation in the formats is not possible. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I think at the moment, uh, there's no specific problem to solve, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And so far, yeah, uh, we see that a lot of changes to the World Cups from time to time. Like, it's never it's never the same rule from one World Cup to another, right? What do you think? You have some story about it? It's not the World Cup in general, but um, for instance, when I play all the Rapid and Blitz events, mm -hmm. I don't know... Uh, is an illegal move punished with a time penalty? Does it cost the game? Uh, what if I uh, drop a piece, mm -hmm. something falls out? What happens uh, if something happens? Do I supposed to press the clock all the orbiter? Am I supposed to fix it myself? The, I get into these games thinking, I hope nothing happens because I don't know. I'm not really 100% <laughs> sure about the rules. Yes. I sort of have an idea and my default would be to stop the clock and call the orbiter. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that's... Uh, uh, a funny story. Once uh, when there was some... The first wave of experimentation of the rules. So we're talking very long back, before yep. all these new formats evolved. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Belyavsky actually went to the Arbiter in one game and said, can you just check my position and tell me if I'm allowed to castle? Because <laughs> I'm no longer sure. I mean, something had moved and he wasn't sure if uh, it was allowed anymore. But uh, I, th I always thought that was funny. Like, if you give people too much, too many rules, too many then rules, they, just, yes. they don't remember them. But mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, probably we can come back to... Uh, watching the game, uh, yeah. and which game do you like to see? We haven't covered the veterans at all. Oh, let's do it. Uh, Ilya Smirin. 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 In, in order of age, I think. Oh, no, uh, is Kozul... Uh, uh, Kozul is knocked out. Uh, oh, right. Kozul yeah. is knocked out, so now it's uh, Smirin. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 Gelfand is the second. Yes. Uh, Ivanchuk and Swidler. I think that's the top four by age. So why don't we have a look at and see how the veterans are doing. Sure. And by the way, Smirin won a very interesting tiebreak yesterday. I know, and he, he won one of the longest matches. The last match or the one of the longest one matches? One of the longest, not the last one. Not the yeah, last one, yeah. okay. It was, uh, he was very happy. I met him uh, uh, at about 9 p.m. yesterday, and he said, uh, yeah, I'm an old guy, but you know, I survived, <laughs> and so on. So uh, he was pretty pleased with himself yeah. uh, that he survived that. Um, yeah, we can come back to yeah. which one. So yeah. let's go down a bit. I mean, we'll eventually hit... Um, I think we've seen Lanier. I, I'll mm -hmm. just quickly mention that Lanier found a way to sack that pawn. Mm -hmm. So again, the idea is instead of knight d7, he went rook e8, which is more to the point. Mm -hmm. And now it's much harder for white to take this. So uh, white should probably try and escape this way ah. now. But uh, the position is quite interesting, so I thought we'll pause there. Mm -hmm. Uh... Grishchuk, at the moment, is still trying to get the, his favorite setup. I mean, the Queen's Gambit setup, which Gambit. is um, the bishop should be somewhere here in this diagonal. Mm -hmm. But that knight is sitting there and blocking it. Mm -hmm. So whether he'll actually play g4 or not, or will he play e3, um, he'll have to find some setup where all his pieces get somewhere. Um, okay. Moving on. Uh, moving on. Um, If you want This to is uh, mm -hmm. a kind of interesting Petrov uh, where White decided that the way to go was to just... Um, I've never seen this way of doing it, F takes E3. Yeah, I've never seen uh, it. Just <laughs> to play E4, but maybe it's a good idea. He's gone H3, and I guess the plan will be to play E4 at some point and yes. then claim that the pawn structure is just that bit uh, superior for White. Um, why didn't he do it on the last move? Maybe queen g4 is a problem. Yeah. Yeah, queen g4 could be awkward. 
So he has decided to play h3, and I think now he's threatening e4. Mm -hmm. um, and how to stop e4? Can you stop it? I don't think so. Maybe not. Maybe I just step step away. Or probably something like taking on d3 and then queen e7. Just. But I can. Um, There's queen b5 probably. Oh yeah, you're right. Uh, you're completely right. Queen e7. The reason not to e6 because c7 has seven to be defended. Second, yeah. But the problem with queen e7 is that suddenly queen b5 attacks two pawns and you mm -hmm. can't defend mm -hmm. both of them. That one and that one. So I think it might be a futile effort to. I mean, even if I went knight d2, you can't really stop e4, yes, right? Yes, that's right. So it might you might be better off uh, just allowing e4 mm -hmm. and Prepare c6 else, and knight yes. e6. So let's say here I take and go e4. You capture. But there's oh yeah yeah you can capture. Take it and play c6 mm -hmm. and then claim that the knight comes here and that's fairly solid. Okay, just notice something interesting. If you want to, uh, Jan Christoph is a very Jan interesting Christoph. position. Let's quickly stop here. Very sure. interesting Sicilian. Mm -hmm. um, Black's bishop is entombed, mm -hmm. but it's got that one outlet, mm -hmm. and potentially in some dream situation, if White's knight gets distracted, it could even aspire for that square. Mm -hmm. But it's equally dangerous here because it's taking away this key square. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it's taking away a lot of key squares from the queen and the rook. Um, so bishop h6 is one idea. I'm not completely sure I see what white wants here. He can take and maybe try doing this. Um, and also there are plans to bring the rook out like that. So white also has some options. Yep. Um, very rich position. We will no doubt return to it again. Uh, though again, bear with me, it's a very interesting position. Why did he play b4? Could he have just played bishop at six and rook g8? Yeah. Paused a bit, no? Yeah. I think before it's a bit too committal, yeah? Yeah. Uh, or maybe he, after bishop at six, a3, he felt that window it will close. Uh, and, and he might never be able to, yeah, play, before. to play before. And anymore. what you're going to do here, I'll do this, yeah, I'll just attack your pawn yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, maybe that is the problem. So you want to do, um, let it happen. Okay. Le Kuang Liem. It's another London system. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, white took yep. queen a3. Oh, this has some lovely lines. There yeah. are some lovely force draws here. Um, yes, MVL and uh, Jan Christoph had a game in the Global League, ah. Global Chess League, uh, with one very fo nice force draw. But um, I think bishop b, usually they go bishop b5, so bishop d3 might be a new move. Mm -hmm. And black is just okay, Black just right? is okay, yes. It's kind of solved his development mm -hmm. problems and... Uh, just need to thing. bring the rook and, yeah, problem yeah. solve. Um, sorry if we went rather fast there, but uh, we will return to these boards. Uh, oh, very interesting game. Is this fresh, Nikov? Wei Yi, who again had a wonderful performance in the Global League. Obviously. Huh? Uh, very strong. It must be a Sveshnikov. Yes, it is it a Sveshnikov. It is Sveshnikov, yeah. Knight d5. a4. So, white is trying to play a5. Mm -hmm. And the reason he can't do it is because after a5, a6, you can't block the... Uh, defense. So if you can't play knight a3, which is where it wants to go, mm -hmm. uh, because then the rook is no longer defending the pawn. Mm -hmm. So that's what white is trying to do here with we bishop d2. d2. Um, if you do this, you go here, let's say this happens, then white can now regroup to this nice square. Uh -huh. And that's kind of what is uh, planned. So a5, f5, castles, a6, yes, knight a3, e4. So black is will move fast on this side. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Knight b6, yeah. And f4. Uh, this is one of the things with um, computers that they're very fond of this move uh, because they, they're not afraid of this uh, pawn formation marching forward that much. Mm -hmm. um, they're able to control it. But in this position... How would you evaluate it? Uh, should white play bishop e2? Um, 
I'll try to go for C5 quickly. Yeah, also whether a rook lift. Rook A3, yes. Rook A3, yeah. Right, uh, uh, rook lift. Yeah. Yeah, this is... Uh, we this is going to be very interesting, this game. And I, I think, again, we'll have to keep coming back. Mm -hmm. Black has a chance to develop an initiative. But on the other hand, look at this pawn. Because the queen is forced to defend this pawn, that bishop can't move. Mm -hmm. And so this is uh, sort of the problem for black here. What about like some idea with queen b3 and then queen a3 and then the rook, instead of going to a3, just uh, stay on the center, like d1 or e1? It could work, but uh, black could play rook f6 oh, and rook defend f6. it like that, but at the same time get it to mm -hmm. where it wants to be. Um, yeah. I don't have a... I'll have to sit and uh, think a lot if that times out, but these positions, not really by general principles. You, It's very, very um, concrete. It depends yes. on tactics. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will return to that. We will let them do the hard work, but then we can return to that. Sveshnikov used to be very trendy, but now we can see a decrease of its popularity. What do you think? Yes, uh, I believe that it spiked a bit uh, when Magnus, Magnus was playing is, it yeah. in the World Championship mm, because he right. showed a lot of new ideas mm -hmm. and then that kind of popularizes it. But then Fabiano came up with some great idea, which in f I think this is broadly based mm -hmm. on some of the work that he did. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, as a result, this theoretical battle was being continued by others. Um, but now here we are again. Uh, okay. There you Big go. Uzbek uh, prodigy. Yes. Um, Abdus Satorov. And uh, this looks great for black, right? He can go queen f6. He can uh, move the queen to a6. Mm -hmm. um, the queen is defending that pawn, so mm -hmm. no danger there. It can come to the square, for instance. Yeah, this looks really great for white. And for black. the only question is, is white in any danger thanks to the two bishops or not? I suspect at this moment not. Not immediately. Not yeah? immediately, uh -huh. right? Okay. Uh, Daniel Friedman against uh, Vitugo, Nikita Vitugo. Yeah, it was yeah, a Petrov. Petrov. It was this line. Mm -hmm. Again, this is all computerized stuff, but uh, White is trying to come to the square and mm -hmm. he wants to eliminate the knight first. So rook e8, rook e2, rook e4, capture, capture, knight f5, queen e6. And. Um, Takes on e4, queen h3, something like that. Queen h3, but then the problem would be g6. <coughs> uh, there is knight h6. Oh, oh sorry. Knight yeah, the queen is defended. defended so. But what could be the thing is I could might be able to just play that. Ah. Yeah. And you cannot play knight d5 because there is uh, queen takes b7. Having said first. that, I don't know if it's that huge for white, but it uh, <coughs> might be. Mm -hmm. Am I forced to take? Looks like it, yep. And then I have this very juicy square here. Mm -hmm. And the rook on eight is tied to a7. Yes, it's tied to thing. Maybe knight b5. Knight b5, yes. And after but then it's C4. getting very tactical, right? c4, you're playing g6, maybe. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Because right now the white knight is also defending the spawn. So mm -hmm. if it moves... Mm -hmm. Right. Looks like on balance it might get to some... In game, but uh, queen e6. Also, there is this tactic. Mm. And you get this one little yeah, queen g6. Trick. But invariably, I can do this rook g8, yeah, like queen takes e7, rook g8, and and if g3, then I try to do something like queen takes d4, queen takes d4, rook g3, yeah. Queen couple of uh, reasonable options. Okay. Where are the veterans, actually? Okay, we'll get there. Um, Magsudlu has a very solid... Um, I thought it's a Berlin, but in fact it seems to be... Ah, it was a Berlin, sorry. Uh, a D3 Berlin. And... Um, Again, they're thinking on move nine. I'm not sure why it's so much time at this point, but um, I think nothing dramatic happening. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, Vidit. Um, 
trying to squeeze something out of this position looks very much very equalish yes um because black's bishop it's slightly the worst one but mm -hmm. uh, it's found a nice square on e8 where it doesn't block its other its knights and its rooks i mean when the bishop is sitting on d7 it's every piece is tumbling mm -hmm. on it but on e8 it's nicely tucked away yep. and uh, but not doing anything much but just being safe but the structure there. because of the symmetry the symmetry over here mm -hmm. uh, two pawns here four versus four mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't need to do anything yeah it's generally right. all black wants to do i uh, think is to uh swap the rooks on these two open files mm -hmm. and once you've reduced that then the knights can move around a bit yeah. and what have you so looks uh, equalish okay adiban against uh, dubov i think uh, adiban has some significant uh, assets but the question is can he does he have the time to do anything with them i mean if the rook is being kicked out so the which is what black has mm -hmm. uh, done and the rook has to come back maybe uh, maybe i can just play bishop e7 so that you stop uh, this knight rotating around like this but then i play c3 I mean, I, w I would say it's equalish, but uh, yeah, but it's still playable. It's not even end games are not uh, over because uh, uh, White has nice light squares, mm -hmm. places to park his. Uh, so probably pieces. just keep the tension, not to take on um, e4. Yes. Yeah, I think I think Black has reached what he wants here because uh, now it's um, White is not having any advantage at all. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, developing. Sam Shankland. Um, okay, this knight is rotating out to g6. I don't know what happens if I poke. Do you go back or probably you would probably go back with the bishop C6, and yeah. see if you can trade the pieces? Yes. Um, what other plans are there? Yeah. What What does the knight on e7 do? Like what if I go knight g5? You're going to go knight g6, right? Because yes. I'm threatening knight takes f7. And then if I go here, is that something? Probably not. I think black will be just waiting and mm -hmm. see what black, uh, sorry, what white has uh, as an idea. Yeah. But this position is generally better for white, yeah? Because white has more space. A little bit, but uh, think about it. If the pawn was on e4, you would say it's a fairly mundane Sicilian. Mm -hmm. But on d4, we are claiming that it might be something. Uh, also, it's interesting that he's gone knight e7, because I think the other plan could be knight b8, d7. But it mm -hmm. seems that you want to mm -hmm. redevelop this knight, because it's biting granite over here. The pawn c3, d4 structure mm -hmm. is uh, that knight can't do very much against it. So yep. it has to go on the margins. OK. Again, um <coughs> oh, Eric I see Arjun. He's now become a fan of uh, this kind of Dutch defense. <laughs> Is it a good thing or bad thing? <laughs> I don't know. I know that uh, he lost a game to Swidler here. Mm -hmm. I think it went like this. Knight f3, e4, knight h4. Mm. Basically saying, if you take that, fine. But I've now got this dark squared bishop, uh, which has also some interesting possibilities. Right. So it's a very nice pawn sack. I think it went like c6 knight g2 and uh, it's been played in one of the tiebreak games yesterday this idea with knight yeah. h4 sacrificing a pawn it was a cute game i'll just uh, give you the moment that i'm referring to it was it bishop uh, yes i think it was bishop g5 knight mm -hmm. f6 uh, i don't know knight f4 castles e3 knight c7 queen b3 I don't know, king h8, probably. Rook b8, defending the spawn. Something happened and I've forgotten the move, so just excuse that. Uh, knight e6 happened. No, d5 happened somehow. Then knight e6. Uh, but don't you drop a pawn there if you play? The now it does. Well, then I better maybe just better find it. Ah, no, 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 I don't wait. When knight e6. Mm -hmm c5 d5 knight e6 bishop mm -hmm. e6 and suddenly white won the exchange like this 
So that was a cute uh, oh. trap. I might have mixed up the odd move, but that was yeah, the basic yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, That's really uh, cute. Yeah. But I'm sure he, he's not going to repeat that again. <laughs> and uh, Sergei Azarov goes for uh, this. I assume this is slightly uh, committal, but on the other hand, if black is happy with e4, you do that. So the knight is threatening to come to d3. Mm -hmm. He goes knight d4. and Allowing knight d3, but... Knight d3, maybe I can undermine it with f3, because with the knight F3, is being yes, defended. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Seems like a reasonable position. So again, it'll be interesting to see developments... I remember these positions used to be uh, debated in Alekin Bogolyubov and so on. Mm, uh, that time ago? Yes, long mm -hmm. time back. Maybe not in this exact version. So it's kind of funny that these positions are coming back. Uh, this is Wang Hao against Jumabayev. Mm -hmm. um, and oh my god, my first reaction is, why did you play d4? Oh, this but then it's hard to prove that it's wrong. Yeah. You, know, you kind of uh, basically tell White how is he going to develop his bishop because this pawn has to be defended, which means the queen has to have a clear line of sight, which means this bishop can't come here mm -hmm. unless mm -hmm. it's going to capture on c3 mm -hmm. and so on. Okay. Uh, but again, nothing dramatic yet. Okay. Paco Vallejo playing... The Karo Khan against uh, Evich, Evich, Vladimir Evich, yes. who, who survived a scare against the young Turkish prodigy. Yeah, the Edish girl. Edish girl. Yeah, yeah, one on a tie break. One on the tie break. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> he, thing, but <coughs> he lost the first game, though, like uh, on the classical match. I so know. I, uh, yeah, it was quite uh, a scare for quite him. <laughs> a, and um, this one. It's nice to have the bishop, but on the other hand, it's clear that this knight is now safe mm -hmm. thanks to the pawn, and uh, probably black is okay here. But do you do you castle in this position? Because if you castle, then h5 pawn um, will potentially be weak. But there is g6, but then you also weaken your dark square. So what is the mm. the idea in this position? That's good. Well, one thing could be to play knight g6 and castle so that you would have to defend e5 in order to attack mm. h5. Second could be not to castle for a while. Maybe play rook c6, a6, you know, all the get a lot of useful moves out of the way. So that when white's attacking h5, you can't attack on c3. Mm -hmm. uh, probably oh. along the lines that you think. We I think. have a result on the first oh, board engine against of uh, women's. Repkova, but it seems to be a draw. It seems to the be kings a draw. The kings are on e4 and e5. Uh, so. Sorry, can we quickly see what's happened? Sure. Uh, just to make sure we got everything there. It's a draw indeed, and uh, do we see some repetition? Yes. Yeah. So because, because you're not allowed to draw for right, but you can repeat. True. Yeah. Yes. There's there's a thirty move rule draw, and you cannot uh, offer a draw um, below thirty moves, but you can repeat the moves, and it seems to be the case in this in this game. Wow! Top rated player Ju Wenjun drew her game as white pieces. What right. is your take on this? And next game she will she will have black. It's not normally s like this, right? Yes, but on the other hand, it's it's sensible also. It just because you're the top seed, you can't play a position where there's nothing to do. And perhaps this inclusion of A4, A5 didn't work out to White's favor. Mm. Uh, in that you're kind of stuck. It's not easy to sack the pawn. And that mm. bishop has got a very stable position on B4. And maybe she just decided that um, it's not worth pursuing. And I, I would second this. You second this, yeah? I, th I think you can't play a position that you wouldn't normally play just because of the occasion. You have mm. to... Uh, a draw may not be the ideal result, but imagine if you were in danger in this game. Yes, Then you'd see it differently. So uh -huh. I think that was fine. Could Let's come back to the women after we finish, because as I said, I, I should ask my... I should have a quick look at my colleagues. Yeah. Uh, where were we? Uh, we were roughly... Would you, would you like to see a specific board? I'm almost there. I've gotten to Vesely's board. This board is here, so we can quickly... Mm -hmm. uh, I think just scan the remaining boards and have a look. Okay. Um, because it's true, there's still lots and lots of boards. 
let's have a quick look at this. This is Nihal Sarin mm -hmm. playing an Axel Bachman. And um, yeah, just quite chess. White is making a useful move here. A3, bishop, d2, bishop, and Plus keeping CCDM, the option of f4. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and, ask, and seeing what can be done. But you can also do things more slowly. You can play f3, uh, knight g4, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so on. Yeah. So, so f4 would need to be confirmed tactically. If you went f4, sorry, let's say if I f4, then I take. And if you take with the pawn, I have this trick based yes. on that. Mm -hmm. So that'd be something to walk uh, watch out for. But uh, some preparation big. needs to be made. Yeah. Yes. So white will have to figure out how to get that happening. And but the thing is, black can respond in multiple ways. I mean, instead of knight takes e4, you can also play c4, undermining this pawn. Mm -hmm. So um, interesting position to have. Okay. There you so, go. <laughs> Peter Swidler facing Abhimanyu Puranik mm -hmm. from India and going for the English, which again, here you see that Abhimanyu courageously plays uh, the English against one of the foremost practitioners <laughs> in English. Peter Swidler uh, has, been, has been playing the English opening as one of his main lines for oof, almost, his, almost, almost his a decade. Almost his life, yeah. Almost yeah. A decade, okay. And. Uh, a big, big expert on it. This is interesting that they used to go to b6, but mm -hmm. recently they started doing this and mm -hmm. just playing bishop d6. Uh, but if this is good, then uh, h3 and bishop d3 in the dragon should be good. Mm -hmm. But okay, we'll get to that in another point. Bishop c5, a3, a5. And I don't know the subtleties here, but that looks a bit slow to me. Mm -hmm. And after knight c4, oh, you're allowing knight yeah. takes b6, and yeah? And here, yes, but if you do that, what is white's point anyway, right? You yeah. take knight b6, c b6, but what then? So, bishop d2, and now Peter basically shuts the door on that. And But if I take on d5, you would have to take with the knight. And he did, I guess. Because, if, yes, if you take with the queen, then suddenly I'm winning the exchange. Yeah, yes, c7 is hanging, uh-huh. So you take with the knight. I don't know. Maybe I can play e4. Giving up the uh, d4. But now I've got this knight, and I could put a bishop on that square, uh -huh. or bishop e3 somewhere, and say, how are you going to access that square? Mm -hmm. So um, I think I'd be slightly happier to play white than black, but uh, you know, no big evaluation yet. Another draw we have, which is uh, Alexis Arana. Oh, Huang Rinji. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Another repetition. We'll another have to repetition. try and explain that. H3, Queen A5 check, Bishop D2, Queen D5. In fact, what uh, Black is saying is, I can't. Whatever I'm planning it doesn't work with your Bishop on F4, but it'll work with your Bishop on D2. Mm -hmm. And White says, I agree. Mm -hmm. That bishop needs to be on f4 because otherwise I'm not having anything. And he goes back and then they just repeat. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Is it and that uh, bad already? Uh, the black player is actually, uh, he proceeded to the next run because Eric Hansen uh, didn't show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that would be Eric oh, Hansen didn't show up. That was Radex opponent, Wojtaszek. Uh, this one is Christopher Hughes maybe. Because I I remember he sh um, he he won the yeah no it was uh, Radek for sure because uh, he was playing the winner of uh, Eric Hansen and thing but ah oh yeah he won against Christopher Yu Christopher Yu didn't show up it was the other person oh, okay mm -hmm. got it um, there are more interesting games let's look at. Uh, David Howell from England, another one of the seeds, popular commentator mm -hmm. and streamer. Yeah, this A4 scotch has recently been uh, yeah. quite popular. A C4 is interesting, mm -hmm. um, but this is about equal. Yeah. I think uh, it's not terribly dangerous for Black if he knows what he's doing. So. I think Black is quite happy with the position. Yes. 
I mean, something along these lines. You go bishop e5, e5. very nice dominant mm -hmm. bishop, knight c3 to protect the pawn, but then you go bishop e6 and say, you can't defend it to b3, and so on. So, nothing terribly dangerous here. Okay, the aforementioned uh, uh, Wojta Schechter, I think, okay. he's playing De Silva, who would have played Eric Hansen yes, that's if Eric correct. Hansen that's come. Correct. And, oh, is he also Canada? No, uh, actually, uh, he's from Sri Lanka. I think there's some mix-up with the... Ah, right, I got yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> um, so Black just has to move the rook back and then put the knight on c5 mm -hmm. and should be fine. I don't see an issue. Uh, Okay, we'll just mention this honorary mention for the pawn that ends up on h3. <laughs> <laughs> you know, h5, h4, h3, you can always see. Perhaps the attitude used to be, why did you push your h-pawn? What mm -hmm. were you aiming for? And mm -hmm. now it's like, um, why not? I just put it out there. Maybe one day it'll be useful. Yeah, <laughs> but so. it can be it, it can be quite a double H, yeah? Because sometimes, you know, when there are not too many pieces on the board left, uh, it can be a quite weak pawn to attack in the Of course, game. in anything. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it might queen faster. I, it's yes. a strange thing because out of nowhere, suddenly, if queens are floating around the board, out of nowhere, one of them can come to the diagonal and then suddenly mm -hmm. queen g2 is a threat. <laughs> yeah. So I think... It's queen g2, which is the... But I was amazed in how many lines the computer would play h6 and put a bishop on g7 <laughs> <laughs> and say, that was nice too. So, even though it's obviously not mate. Okay. Um, sorry, I will just uh, do my veterans thing and then, mm -hmm. then we'll move on. Wow, another sharp... Um, Nimzo. Nimzo. And this is... If you want to be very technical, this is uh, the same-ish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And f3 is what? 4 f3. It's the same-ish as well, because invariably you follow up with yeah, a3 yeah, and on the side. Right. But uh, b6, that's the extra option, f3. And now black goes for this plan. Ah, d6. And saving up c5 here. Yeah? Simply white is trying to fight for a lot of space and um, I mean sometimes black would have gone bishop a6 and uh, queen a4 and tried to break this pawn down. Mm -hmm. But white has the option now to defend it mm -hmm. like that. So black has opted for an alternative setup. Mm -hmm. Should be a good game to return to I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think that's it's going definitely to be one which is going to be quite instructive as well. Sure. Mm -hmm. Here, uh, Iturizaga has done something interesting, which is shut down on the king side with f5. He can now proceed with king f7. King f7. Uh, There's no need to castle. And what is white really doing? The only plan he has knight c5, and he has to make that work. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's too dangerous for black. Yeah. And let's get to Vasily Ivanchuk, who is treating us to a Benoni. Benoni, indeed. Mm -hmm. Now, this pawn cannot be defended. On C4, yeah? On B2. On B2, sorry, yeah. Because whichever way you defend it, whether it's Rook B1 or the thing, I can play Rook Just takes B2 and C3. C3, yes. So you got to avoid that. Yeah. And um, so it looks like E5 is now forced. So let's see what happened to produce this. It... L it wasn't from. <laughs> it wasn't a yeah. Benoni. It was, it was. It was kind of like a double fianco to London, mm -hmm. but then. Ah, and then B5, B5 came, came here, yeah. and he went A5 in order to stop Knight B6 probably. Mm. Uh, but uh, okay, this happened, and then he took. And now E5, I think, is in order. Yes. So if I would be forced, the question is then, do you want to liquidate? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Should we just take everything? That might be slightly pleasant for white, shouldn't it? I mean, if my play bishop takes c4 and so and on. And probably you can, can you really start any attack on the king's side? Um, or not really? Or black's king is You never know, safe. rook a1, queen at 6 and then... Yeah. You might get lucky, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. In fact, uh, this has happened. Okay. So they have exchanged a couple of pieces. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
We are now waiting for the bishop e5 to happen, unless he's going to play something clever like bishop takes c4. Maybe he is actually pausing with bishop takes c4. And it is also a possibility, right? I mean. Yes. But if I go rook b4, you play Oops. b3, and I go queen b8 defending that. Ah, you can also keep piling the pressure till it breaks. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is kind of nice, but I think Vasily would probably defend it. I mean, maybe some. It's nice that Vasily and Ponomariev, right, are playing next to each other. Mm -hmm. That's a nice kind of there coincidence. <laughs> the two Ukrainian players. And Korobov is just one ball yeah. ahead, so <laughs> all, all of the them are bunched Ukrainian together, yeah. yes. <laughs> Maybe you can try and exchange the bishop like this to relieve the pressure a bit. Mm -hmm. And after all, this rook is defending that pawn. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that is a sound idea. Yeah. So this has happened. So remember that this pawn creates a lot of pressure on that pawn. Mm -hmm. But as long as it's defended, black can try to get his queen and rook, which are buried in the corner, out. Um, so one of the ideas could be here, rook b4, and then try to rotate that uh, queen to that square. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, here, in fact, uh, rook a e1 might be very, very strong. Yeah, I was wondering about that move instead of uh, mm. just doing anything else. And queen h6, and I think, yeah, white is better. Yes. So maybe you don't take on uh, uh, e5, but even there it doesn't look so nice. In fact, it looks like white is faster. So it's harder to see how exactly I'm going to break through. Yeah, all the black pieces are on the queen side, and yeah, I think it's it's quite instinctively you just play on the king side, yes, on different side of the of the board. So this one actually does not look nice for Vasily. Yeah. So what should uh, maybe you can sack the exchange or something? What should black be playing here? I was thinking of rook d7 if you want to sack the exchange and then just pressuring and oh, probably bishop But if I just take bishop takes c4, yeah, you can solve right. anything, right? Mm -hmm. Ah, maybe you bring the queen out. Uh, you take and you put the queen in front. Ah. And that way you can play queen b4 and threaten an exchange and uh, right. maybe that... Uh, and funnily enough, queen takes b2 is a great defensive move because it allows the queen to def defend mm -hmm. in that direction. Ah, maybe that's the way to play it with black. Yeah, so after queen b7, mm -hmm. if rook e1, then just take on b2, yeah? I mean, I assume I should take on e5 first and then play queen b7. Yeah, yeah. Because the exchange side yeah, might be I just mean. a bit speculative. Takes, takes, and yes. then queen b7. Queen b7, queen b4 somehow. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Okay. So we got our veterans in. Um... Since we were mentioning Ponomariev, let's see what's happening there. He's gone for rook takes c6. Uh, knight e5 is possible. You take. Queen takes. I take, but now you fork me. Mm -hmm. But I go here, and I think nothing is really happening. Or maybe even queen d4 is possible. And after e3, I then go here and just... Yeah, rook b1. Yeah, so it's close to... Equal. Well, rook d1, I, uh, I'm not completely sure what's happening. I, I I can do this because you can't, even when you fork, I have a check, so it should be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something like that. So that looks reasonable. Yep. By the way, it may not even be necessary. Yep. Even in the camera, Ponomarev looks quite relaxed there. Yeah. Knowing that there's nothing really happening on the board. Oh, this looks almost good for black, right? Because uh, threatening queen e1 and uh, bishop comes to e6 is great. Oh, here black is a pawn down on the king yeah, side. Yeah, black is a pawn down. I, um, so probably let's here. see how that happened. Oh, this was this kind of Petrov. Ah, uh, this one, the sacrifice, yes. A5. Very interesting move because uh, Wang Hao played it against me in Isle of Man. And mm -hmm. the idea is the rook is then a defensive piece because there is this pawns majority mm -hmm. on the king's side, but you use the rook to block some attacks. Rook d1, rook here, rook b5. 
So White was willing to play Rook B5 because if you do that, then he he would claim that okay, but I've shut down your Rook uh, connecting. Yes. So w Black tries not to m get Stupid. the Rook shut down, mm -hmm. and then I guess this is all been an is all theory. So that looks. So Queen E1 is uh, the idea, but okay, there's. The I can play Rook E2 or Queen yeah, E2 rook maybe. Rook D1, yeah, or Rook E2. I could play bishop e6, and I don't really see much yeah. danger. Right? Okay. Be, even being a pawn down, I think, yeah, I think it's quite equal. Okay, there's uh, too many games to follow, so we'll get back to the men. Why don't we have a look, a detailed look at the women? Because yeah, let's uh, do it. there are a lot of boards there that we haven't had a chance to see as well. Um, So this was the draw. This was the draw. The first board uh, is a draw. And second and board. And then you have Ordas, Valdez, uh, Lisandra. And uh, Goryachkina has tried to ex uh, exchange this night. Should be equal. Should be equal. Uh, yeah. The rook just moved back, yeah, from A6 to A8. Yeah. Yes, but I think ah, we're here uh, kind of went to f5, maybe hoping for an exchange of the bishops, but Gorech kind of didn't do that, and then mm -hmm. she blinked first and took on d7. Mm -hmm. Maybe she could have hung in there a bit longer. Okay. Uh, oh, this should be a. This was the game that yeah, we the were Queen mentioning. C2 line, yes. yes. So castles. Uh, let's take a look. So White is trying to get this typical French attack. If uh, is able to uh, White is able to castle and then has time to play mm -hmm. g4, h4, and all, could be very unpleasant. But Black is fighting for counterplay here. Bishop d6 is good, and Queen e7. Yes. Isn't this nice for White? Yeah, I would. I, I would mean, say I have so. knight e5, yeah. bishop c3, You're my perfect French setup. You're preparing also for the pawn push pro uh, in the king side, probably. Yes. Yeah. And majority pawn uh, on the queen side, if necessary, in the end game. I think uh, this is not working out. Yeah. I think white is very comfortable. Maybe some more drastic measures had to be taken, like um, knight d7 and queen c7, or b6, and maybe b6 was uh, possible. B6 oh, bishop f6 and queen e4. That's oh, a yeah, nice yeah. trick, yeah, because I have this. <laughs> yes. uh, I have this the trick. <laughs> Double attack, yes. Attacking the rook and the queen. So, yes. But bishop d6 may not have been great because after bishop d4, it's not easy for black to make a next move. Mm -hmm. Queen so e7. She's gone bishop queen e7, and now I think knight e5 followed by bishop c3 and the bishop c2, mm -hmm. these kinds of moves. So even, yeah. even I can do that here. Yeah, I agree. So, okay, it's looking and good for... And bishop c2 Kondo. is on the board? Even or is it my? Oh, move? it's yours. Oh, King B one. King B one. King B one yeah. is a move. Okay. King B one is on the board. Yes. Sir. Just to clarify, she has played King B one here. King B one. I mean that's did. definitely a white king on B one, and there we have it. Okay. Um, Mary Ann Gomez is clearly worse because um, fighting the two bishops mm. it will be very unpleasant and. There is no structural disadvantage for black. Right. And where, uh, where that would that B3 pawn is just as weak mm -hmm. as uh, thing. In fact, C5 makes the B3 pawn very weak. Mm -hmm. Not going to be a good day for Marianne Gomez, who yeah, she has to defend this a lot. Yes. Yeah. So, got into trouble there. How did, did that happen? Ah, yes. Oh, she. W I mean, she kind of volunteered to give away the two bishops. That was not necessary at all. I mean, there was no need for going there if you intended mm -hmm. to take it. You could just play bishop e2, bishop c2, yeah. bishop b2, bishop e2, mm -hmm. and keep it. So this is going to be a tough game for her. Yep. Are you going to camera? Let's get back to our mm -hmm. uh, that game earlier where I mentioned that black has uh, good wall. this good <laughs> wall around the king. But uh, white is saying... I've got the opposite color bishops. I've got mm -hmm. rooks. I'm going to make a life hell. It might be just white's position is huge. Mm. I mean, imagine I play rook e2, 
rookie one and somewhere somewhere down far down the line i have some tactic to break on e6 or something mm -hmm. um but more to the point how does black liquidate I you, you can't change the rooks on the d file you can't really i think they just have to be patient yeah. patient waiting yeah because mm. uh you cannot really initiate anything unless uh i think all you can do is just to anticipate what white wants actually yeah yes Okay. We can take a look at one more game before we go to the second break. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's let's uh, take a look at Tanzongi's game, perhaps. That looks just equal. Both sides have a rook on the seventh, and so I think it's just going to be a draw now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, it's quite a curious case. All these uh, top players, sometimes um, what I notice is they on the first game especially they're the top seeds and they didn't play the first round so probably they don't feel quite warmed up yet and then just take it easy for the first game and then probably will play it all out on the second game later true i think also the fact that uh, these days uh, the average opening preparation is much better mm, that's true might mean that you know you simply need time to get to, to find the right uh, pressure point you know yes. what you want to uh, get mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you want to take a look at one of the Mercy Chuk Chuk sisters? sisters? This is Maria Mosichuk. Mm -hmm. And uh, this looks nice for white. Yeah. Because this knight can never be captured, uh, imagine that I just retreat somewhere f mm -hmm. far, far away. If you ever capture this, mm -hmm. I capture and uh, just enjoy I'm the just winning. Yeah. yeah. So the only thing is, can you take this thing? But now I can Bring follow up with rope. the rook. Mm hmm dg1 or something and play h5 and h5 yes and hammer away in yeah. that bishop it you'll forget about this bishop but it's uh, creating a lot of problems on yeah. these squares so i think white will be just having fun in this position yes definitely a, a good one for uh, white mm -hmm. and anna mozichok has a nice position as well she's in a uh, sveshnikov but this looks like a pretty good version yeah of a this is a good version I mean, if I play rook a2, I conserve my pawn. Mm -hmm. And you have no way to stop queen takes a4, mm -hmm. it seems. And it Just will winning be a pawn, a pawn. Up soon. Yeah. Yeah. On mm -hmm. top of that, I could go knight b4. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, whereupon, uh, so it looks very nice indeed. Mm -hmm. So, just to summarize, white can take this pawn, but mm -hmm. then black takes that one. Mm -hmm. And so, what I was proposing was that uh, I could play this move, mm -hmm. thereby defending this pawn. Mm -hmm. But this one is still weak. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps rook a2. Rook A2, I think it's more solid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can delay castle because uh, your king is uh, mm. quite safe anyway. Yeah. Okay, so um, very good position for Anna Mosichuk. Um, another the top seeds, Harika. Harika. Mm -hmm. And so knight e has happened. Let's see what could happen. If I go B3. could do this but these things never work out they look pretty to play and you have shattered white spawn structure but in the end it's a, pi a piece is a piece a piece a piece yeah so it's, 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 it's so hard to make judgments make well. that it's work. only one pawn yeah yeah so the question is should black play b5 uh because white should not forget that this tactic exists if that bishop is left without support then this wins again mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we can't do that but uh i guess Knight d5 still looks kind of pleasant for white. Yeah, I see. Okay. I think that's uh, our cue for the second break, Fishy. Okay. And for our dear viewers, if you have any question, uh, again, I'd like to remind you to send your question to Twitter and we will try to select the question to be answered by Fishy Anand. And don't forget to use the hashtag, uh, hashtag Feed the World Cup and tag Feed the underscore chess. I'll see you again after the break. See you. Azerbaijan'ın tabiatından, Nakhchivan'ın torpağından süzülerek gelen tabii suyun sirri, Sirab. Her damlasında hayat var.
are back into the third hour of FIDE World Cup and FIDE Women's World Cup round number two. And Fishy, so any interesting games going on right now? And as you can expect in the third hour, things are uh, getting very interesting. Mm -hmm. Lots of uh, positions are uh, require precision, sometimes even by both players. Mm -hmm. So let's quickly just take the interesting moments. Yes, let's do it. This is Carlson once mm -hmm. again showing how good he is at. I'll just take you through the moves a bit slowly. Looks fairly harmless so far. Yep. Queen B2. King G8, just to stay away from the diagonal. Mm -hmm. Rook D2, D5. Mm -hmm. Now, white went E3, whereupon Carlsen captured and went Knight A5. Mm -hmm. Completely symmetrical. The only little detail is this pawn here. Yes. And if you go Queen B5, then I go Queen C7. Maybe Pansulaya thought this is slightly awkward with that queen. Maybe mm -hmm. get into trouble or something. So he went... Capture when knight e5. Now it started to get a bit trickier. Queen c7, he went rook d1, which looks very clever. Mm -hmm. So you see pieces are being attacked all over the place. This queen is attacking this, but indirectly I'm attacking that. Mm -hmm. And when Carlsen took, uh, now the queen is defending this one. Mm -hmm. But now Carlsen plays queen d6. And actually this position, it's very hard with these knights. I mean, the knight on d1 is a disaster. It's not simply nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. Um, one plan which suggests itself is that I liberate with queen c3 and if the knight moves, I move knight b2. But the yes. problem with that is suddenly knight e4 and my queen can't connect to that knight anymore. So if, uh, white is going to be tripping over his knights mm -hmm. if that's possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, the knights are kind of, kind of yeah, like awkwardly placed, uh, yeah? Yes, and at a human level this looks pretty awkward. I mean, I can make a quiet move like h3. Because if you capture this, then check and mm -hmm. either queen c7 or queen takes a7. I think takes on a7 is Might as well precise. keep pick the yeah. pawn, right? Yes. And then suddenly this one is being attacked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but black can also make waiting moves. I don't know, maybe I hit six or some random move like that. Mm -hmm. And so, w once again, you see that it might be very close to equality, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but... This has nothing to. This is a computer equality. It's not human equality, it's not unless human. you can calculate very <laughs> precisely. Yes. So what has he done? He's gone knight f3. Yes. So uh, basically, he's saying, yeah, take my pawn and leave me alone. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, black can take on d1, and if I capture on f6, maybe knight takes c4. But then I can go queen e7, and oh, I can't. I thought I'm attacking two pawns. But suddenly knight takes e3 check is the... Ooh, low. nice tactic. And this is in fact what has happened. So, yes. wow. Maybe queen f4 is a good place to go. Queen f4, yeah. Just trying to keep, keep. Uh, that option. Mm -hmm. But suddenly even queen d5 looks unpleasant to me. Knight d6 knight looks d6, unpleasant yes, to knight me. Knight d6 looks uh, natural as um, well. Maybe queen e2 hugs you more tighter than you want. Because suddenly your queen can't escape. I have knight e3 check. Mm hmm Queen d5. This looks. Um, <coughs> this looks very much better for. Yeah. So white. suddenly, mm -hmm. white's in trouble. Yeah. And. Um, okay. Yeah. okay. This is progress has made been made. Sorry. No, just just like what you say. Yeah. This is how easy you can get into trouble when you are playing against Magnus Carlsen. Even yes. though you played like such natural moves, but turns out they're not so of natural, indeed. <laughs> yes, and suddenly, uh, this thing catches. Okay, Hikaru as well made some progress. Uh, look, at this moment it looked kind of quiet, nothing mm -hmm. much happening. Um, F4 happened. He went D5. Suddenly the liquidation happens. But mm -hmm. look, suddenly Bishop D6. Now I'm attacking this weak pawn here. Weak because it can't be. It's not part of a pawn chain. And if you played, uh, he went bishop, uh, he went g6. Had he gone bishop b7, mm -hmm. then suddenly take and check. Wow. And I'm winning that pawn. Yeah. So that's, well, that kind of answers the question why g6. Yes. But now it looks unpleasant, right? If I go knight e4, uh, I'm not sure how you defend this pawn. Maybe you jump knight e3 and you harass me like that. Yeah. While you ponder 
on it, Fishy. Uh, we will have the stats of Hikaru with his all-time uh, result in the World Cups. Okay. There you go. He has played three times. And in 2013, he was eliminated by Anton Korobov. In 2015, he was eliminated in the semifinal by Pavel Elianov. And the last one was in 2017. Uh, he got knocked out by Vladimir Fedosiev. So judging from the stats, I think for round two, he usually, he usually was succeeding. So I think in this round, um, well, if he went for his traditional result, he will have no problem uh, continuing to the third round. Um, possibly, yes. Um, it is surprising for me that he's uh, not done better in the knockout format because mm -hmm. he's good in all these knockout events. Um, but maybe this, uh, his opponents have just peaked at the right <laughs> moment and yes, just got him. Yes. So... Um, yep. But the anyway, position today, now is looking good. What, yeah? what looked like a very dry position suddenly um, has become tactical. Just like the Magnus game, Yes. Black has to uh, calculate sequences very precisely. Mm -hmm. So that's what's happening here. Oh, I see that there is this option that I have C4 check. And, and maybe D4 four. is not quite the end of the world, yes. as I assumed. But um, because Black still has some hope of the knight getting in like mm. that maybe somewhere. Okay, and Fabiano is a very interesting game as well. <clears throat> so what White has done is uh, the queen side is completely shut, but White needs to open the queen side because mm -hmm. that's where his majority is. Yes, Fabiano is doing well because his majority is on the king side. Mm -hmm. Admittedly, it's not the greatest majority in the world, uh, but once I combine it with the rook on e4 and a bishop maybe coming. Inside, it'll be hard to, sorry, uh, sorry for that last arrow. It was supposed to go to e4. So this is the square for the bishop mm -hmm. or the rook. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly white's running out of squares. Yeah. Maybe white can play rook g1 back to e1, back mm -hmm. to g1, back to e1. But it's not much fun to play. Yeah. So this has gotten dramatically unpleasant, I think. Yeah. Um, and Fabiano is looking very relaxed just now. Yeah. And he's gotten up off his chair and then just um, going around. And Nepo has uh, blasted through in um, as well. So if you look at this thing, it went very fast. Uh, the theme of the B file happened uh, dramatically. Mm -hmm. He went rook g8. So unpinning that hedge pawn, but white step back. Mm -hmm. And black castle. And mm -hmm. at this moment, I would think black has achieved everything he wants. But rook b5, asking the bishop where it wants to go. Bishop b6. Then rook b1. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wait, you're biting granite, right? But yeah. uh, a4, a5 is coming. So yes. watch this thing. And here, um, black jumped the gun. In fact, it's not easy to make progress with this uh, on the h file. Mm. And after queen e7, Jan paused for this. But now he has another option, which is his queen can escape by f6. Mm -hmm. So there's no danger. Black went bishop e6. Now he went a4. Rook b3, because he wants to double still, and he doubled. Mm -hmm. And now he's going to play a5 and rook takes b7. So this thing went very quickly. Bishop d8. Now he went queen h5. I'm curious why he didn't go rook takes b7. But uh, anyway, he seemed to think it wouldn't make a big difference either way. You could go black and play b6, but he tried to shut the queen out and then... Takes bishop f5, bishop f5, obviously, yeah, just uh, once that bishop isn't defending g4, it's thing. Bishop c7, and now I think bishop takes e6 should be a breakthrough. Uh -huh. uh, if you play fe6, that gives me time to play g3, king yeah. g2, um, maybe even rotate, put points. the bishop on f4. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing very well. But if you take with rook, I take on f7. Yeah. So, But then e5 is also hanging later on, maybe? But it might not matter. So you take uh, rook takes e6. I take queen takes f7. Double the rook on e8. Double the rook. I just uh, step out. I mean, yeah. I can even play bishop f4 because you can't take it yet. And after king goes somewhere. Probably but let's say I go g3. Uh -huh. You take on thing and I just simply play bishop uh, e3. Yeah. And now this 
G4 pawn. I mean, I do have a massive pawn majority. Mm -hmm. I don't know if what is the right way. Maybe King G2 or something. Um, or some, maybe A5, A6. I don't know, but it doesn't look, he has gone rook takes E6. So we'll find out. It's just a question of sitting down and working down a few lines. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I think white's advantage cannot be questioned anymore. Mm -hmm. So already we're seeing a lot of breakthroughs at the top or potential breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. Then Anish's game has become very interesting as well because the pawn structure got uh, unbalanced. Look, he went knight c6 even without bothering with ab3. Mm -hmm. So knight e5, capture, capture, capture. Defending that pawn and then f6. I don't know, I thought it's kind of dramatic, but e3 and maybe the tension actually holds for both sides. Yeah, but I think it's better to play as black in this position. I don't know, it feels like black has more space, especially in the queen side. And Possibly, but you'll have to decide whether you're going to play b3 or not. Oh, yeah. So I'm not sure how big it is. So probably queen c7, is it a move here? Yes, but then I might uh, take the opportunity to just uh, take, take this that, yeah. and put my knight on e5 and say, well, oh. yes, block yes. it for now or something like that. Okay. Um, I thought that was more exciting than it was. This game, we were wondering what Wesley had after this move. So it seems that he's, he's gone queen b3, presumably claiming that he's got something here. I don't understand though. Um, if I go knight c5, yeah, what are you playing? C5. Are you going to exchange queens now? He could have done that earlier. Because think about to. it, if you go back here, I can... I can repeat as well, so it doesn't uh, help you at all. Yeah. By the way, why did, oh, he went, uh, yeah, he went to, went to it from e3, Queen right? e3, yes. Yeah, it was on e3. Why didn't he go knight c7 and uh, try to get knight d5 in? Yeah, Maybe this isn't uh, clear. If you do this, then I play knight d5. And this was my point, that uh, your knight is temporarily mm -hmm. disconnected. Mm -hmm. But it seems that you can take this, and in fact, white doesn't have a clear follow-up. Uh -huh. So, okay. Um, that's also, bishop c6 has happened, and then there was a, how did he exchange a couple of pieces? Bishop c6, then he went bishop e3, knight c5, bishop takes c5, knight takes c5, queen a3 is the current position. Okay. I don't think Wesley is uh, fighting for the advantage, right? Yeah, I don't think so. In fact, he it just doesn't look nice for him at all. Maybe black is slightly well, black is slightly better. Uh, it may not be a crisis because, but it's very hard if he has done a chessable course, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he misses b5. You would have to wonder if he just forgot his prep or something, <laughs> or probably, or probably. Uh, but you see the problem more. again. Uh, mm. You can be an expert in some line, but if someone comes there and sits and saying, "I know exactly what you're thinking," so. <laughs> Prove it to me. Uh, there's psychology going backwards. Yeah. I mean, if you have published a course, you may be the only person who's unable to use it. <laughs> uh, because yes. you're the only person uh, mm -hmm. who's r sort of revealed your cards. Okay, let's see. Um, I'll switch to Rajabov. Um, there's nothing happening here. So we there's can move yes. next to the it's next very one. Very symmetrical. Uh, Gukesh, there is some action happening. So let's quickly see how they got here. Uh, Gukesh against Iskandarov. So h6, mm -hmm. knight g takes, takes. Oh, we, we saw this earlier, and I was making the point that it's easier for black to play mm -hmm. than white. So bishop f4 happens, rook c8, queen d3. So black then takes the chance to poke mm -hmm. the queen, whereupon queen the queen d1. retreats. Mm -hmm. And he goes for d5, e5, e5. knight e4. Very explosive. Queen g4. I kind of was expecting knight e3 somewhere. Oh, sorry, knight e3, there is a bishop uh, b4 maybe, and the rook is out of squares. I mean, not a crisis, I can play bishop e4 and escape, but um, somehow. Oh, wait. Could I have gone uh, some queen g4 here with an exchange sack? But it's kind of hard to believe, right? Because I'm threatening bishop f2. And if you take this, I have a whole move, some rook c6 or something to react. Yeah, yeah. It might not be quite that much. Yeah, probably not enough. Yeah. So 
queen g4. Bit of a mess. Okay, f4. queen g4. He took on f1. Rukesh e took mm. here. And then the question is, can he pause for bishop h6? If he goes bishop h6, I'll play bishop f8, mm. defending that pawn. Now you capture here, but I capture here, and that looks completely fine. Yes. So this might be equalish. Mm -hmm. And if you do not take what you capture, I think there's no real case for taking with the king, right? Mm -hmm. And then I can play either rook c6 or queen b6, and then my queen is doing the work on the sixth rank. Yeah. And what about the fact that uh, the pawn on e4 is kind of weak? But okay, black can occupy the second rank as well, right? But how weak is it? I mean, if you play bishop e3, can I play bishop c5? Or is rook c1 going to be a problem? Ah, rook, rook c1 is rook going to be a problem, yeah. yeah. So I might have to play queen e6 or something. And uh, try to get into rook mm -hmm. ending, which is exchange the bishops at all costs. If you do this, then I can play bishop, bishop c5, or maybe rook c4 wins the pawn back. And take on e5, yeah. so there are multiple. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for the moment, I think uh, this one looks equalish. Okay, now I'll switch from Gukesh to what is the next game? Shakriar. I thought Shakriar was getting into serious trouble. Uh, there is some mistake here because I expect. I think what must have happened is Queen takes d8, Rook d8, and some Knight a5, or something, something like that. Mm -hmm. There is, there is something wrong because I I don't think I don't think uh, happened, yeah. he has blundered Let his queen. So there is just a they must have played some moves pretty fast in the hand. The board didn't register the moves. Yeah. So we'll we'll get back to this game in a second. Yes. We'll try to find out what's uh, happening. But the queen the is still on a five. So some other pieces move. Maybe the knight has come to c four rather than c five, and that's what the computers registered as c five ah. because he might have the knight might have come. To knight uh, c4.9. Yes, yes, yes. And the computer might have registered it as c5. Yeah, that is possible. That, that is, is possible. possible. That's more likely than that he just yeah, blundered a queen. Maybe for the camera. And Mama Diara was thinking an awful lot for someone who can play queen takes a5. So uh -huh. I think we are comfortable on this one. Probably we can wait and then we can try to zoom in for the camera just to... Okay, let me go to the next board then. I'll go to uh, MVL's game against Dragnev. Which, um, here we are. Mm -hmm. MVL is going to keep putting pressure based on the fact that his king is close to these, this pawn. And if that pawn advances, then it's close to that as well. Mm -hmm. And maybe some hopes in the uh, king in pawn ending, but uh, I mean in the ending. But um, I've got to say, if I, if I play b5, I don't really see the problem. Uh, not that I see a problem if he goes rook c6. Yep. So there are multiple options here for black, which look... Just don't go Rook to the. Six. Just don't go to the pawns end game, maybe. Yeah, just not to gamble everything. I think the pawn ending is a bad idea. Yeah. I mean, basically, what uh, we are saying is that if you do this, then this might be slightly unpleasant. Mm -hmm, because of the pawn on a4 and the pawn on h5 as well. Yes. At least you shouldn't trade rooks, but maybe you can still hang on with something like mm -hmm. rook c6. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, MVL, but that is this is not going to happen. There is he's nobody's going to trade all those rooks. So I think rook uh, b b five, uh, rook c six, mm -hmm. all look fairly reasonable moves. Shall we look at Dominguez? Oh yes, we had quite an interesting. Yes, uh, and the position is as sharp as ever. Yes. So, <laughs> what happened in the meantime? So he went rook e eight, as I we mentioned earlier. Which has the advantage that if white uh, now takes on c4, then I can uh, take on c3 and take on e4, which doesn't look great for mm -hmm. black. Mm -hmm. um, or queen e3 and then rook e4. Oh, yeah, rook e4 was yeah. sufficient enough. So he tried to defend this thing. And then uh, Dominguez simply brought his knight out. And this queen is a killer, right? Because mm -hmm. it's not letting that king escape. The king wants to get out of e1 mm -hmm. as soon as possible but it can't so is it possible for the yeah for the king to just long castle but the problem is after knight e5 um couldn't even play long castle because it's so horrible i can play a6 and then yeah. i'm go two moves later 
I've got open files running against your king. So if you had castle long, I could just play a6. I'm not even going to think about whether knight d3 or anything works. a6, this is just great for black. Mm -hmm. So what did he do? Bishop e3. <laughs> queen b5 is cute. <laughs> And then castles, queen a5. But you see that the superiority of black spaces, this pawn is not weak. In fact, mm -hmm. it gives yes. black access to the square. But this pawn is pathetic. Mm -hmm. And it's quite weak. And knight d5 doesn't help because I will take. And then suddenly I do this. There's a pin against this. It's not, not happening. So uh, he went rook a c1, knight d3, rook c2, rook b8. And black is just doing great. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think Dominguez is the favorite to win that one. Um, the Grishchuk game, let's have a look and see what's happening. Because black is extremely solid. But maybe it's time for white to consider some sacrifices. Let's see, can I take that one? take it. I don't know, something I want to do with knight e5 or d5 and knight d4, mm. but it's a bit thin right now, I will admit. And you cannot take Let it Let me try d5, d5. what the hell? <laughs> I'll probably Which piece f. do you capture with and how, yeah? Let's try the knight on f, because it's not really doing anything. Okay, and then my big mm. hope, which is this. Whoa. And how to evaluate this. This is so sharp. Maybe this is something that, uh, yeah, we can see that Grishuk is down to 14 minutes and probably, I'm sure he's thinking it. Yes. But if we go back, was there something else we could do? Some d5? Because clearly if uh, nothing as dramatic is going to happen on e6 because that knight on c7 is super solid. Mm. Um, I don't know. And... Dropping bishop back to d3 is not an option, I guess, yeah? Or if if you did that, I would play knight f d5 and yeah. um, where's everything. your advantage in mm -hmm. a sense, right? Mm -hmm. So Yeah, bishop c6. I think it's it's really making sense. And then after takes and d5 and let me try. The problem is you could uh, take... Knight d4, let's say queen d7, knight c6 check, and you just play here. And uh, maybe white has no advantage here because, in fact, uh, the bishop functions like a pawn defending d5. Mm -hmm. And maybe you don't have a breakthrough. Yeah. So, you know, it, it looks good, but it doesn't work. Yeah. Anyway, let's see what Grishuk comes up with. Let's move to the next game, uh, which is Kui Bokarov against Yu Yangi. That was the f takes e3 Petrov that we mentioned earlier. If you, if you remember, mm -hmm, we discussed mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. position earlier. Let us see how they developed. He went rook e8, white played h3. Black went knight e7, which probably makes sense. Oh, he didn't try to play e4. He tried to swap the bishops. But then this isn't working out, right? And if e5, yeah? Yeah, but knight g6 and... Uh, Queen f5, fe5, he took with a pawn. And then oh. helped him, helped himself to one. White played e6, c6, and now, ooh, h4 maybe. Uh, I can't go knight d4, f5, because, I mean, one idea is to bring the knight here for attack, I but suddenly queen c3 free. is very unpleasant. Uh, the only move I can think of is h4. Uh, to do attack that, or to go back to the original plan and play queen f5 somehow, but then you go rook f8. And did I really make any progress? What else? I could go queen g3 with the idea to go queen c7. Mm -hmm. So queen a5, rook f3. I cannot play e7, I guess you can just take on the queen. But h4 looks reasonable, right? Yeah, h4 is look, looking natural. You just want to attack in this position. Yes, or queen g3. I think that's the only other plan. And going to c7, yeah? Queen c7, queen d6, and... Yes. Though it may well be that black is defending already. <coughs> mm -hmm. Okay. 
let's uh, come back to that but there because a lot and a lot of action uh, i want to go to jan kristof duda's board yes let's do it uh and let's have a look there wow uh, so this on? was the sicilian <laughs> we mentioned earlier right uh-huh before, before. black uh, jam then white has attacked that pawn bishop a6 black a6, gave yeah. up mm-hmm. uh bishop a6 can uh, you can just try at home why knight b4 or queen takes b4 is not a good idea uh so there's a check yeah. landing and the bishop is helping okay so white then punches there to attack the rook on mm-hmm. c8 um not clear to me if rook b8 was played or not yes he went rook b8 then a3 using the pin so this pin means he can get this in rook g8 i like this very much both sides are using all their trumps black has got a bishop on hit 6 covering uh, thing which is different from its typical role on the long diagonal no? yeah but the rook is using the open g file mm-hmm. to charge in and uh, it looks like all the pieces will combine in some way rook takes g2 bishop c4 king f8 just saying help yourself to the f7 a check he does that and then he goes and hits this what could he have done instead i think it's a bit too hasty here yeah? taking on b4 at this point it looks dramatic also i don't see the follow up If I go bishop d5 he wants to play bishop a4 maybe but I just step aside queen a3 yeah. and I'm still yeah. defending. It Could he have gone bishop d2 to attack this one? Ah no, I play knight a6. Rook takes b3. It's not the end of the world. I have this intermezzo check maybe. or even uh, because i'm attacking this bishop maybe i even move the rook somewhere e3 mm-hmm. or if you or take on d7 rook b5 also keeping an eye on yeah. b2 and this should be great yeah maybe rook, rook b5 rook b5 is better yeah Bra- and the knight is trapped kind of let's have a look or at not. that looks good to me but uh, what is uh, i was wait going to save that thing Bishop e6. Ah, simply that. Okay. Fine. Uh so this w- uh, this looks a bit speculative. Yes. Yeah. A b4 queen e5 and now the threat black threat is bishop a4. Because the queen has to defend this pawn mm-hmm. at all costs. Mm-hmm. But the question is how much of a threat is that and can white ignore it? So my first reaction without seeing anything else was what about bishop d5 because you go bishop a4 and i simply step aside now is it true that this is great for white maybe it is yeah i think it is because the back rank is so weak yeah. and queen a8 can step in at any time sure in fact if you in fact, if I you still do have it a b now, pass <laughs> i have a still have a b pass right yeah yeah so okay that's one thing and so this was just uh This was a pity after a well played game I mean very dynamic game on his part rook b4 mm. is just wrong and uh, bishop d5 to me is the first move that comes to my head I don't know if there's a second one Yeah bishop d5 looks really hmm. good and natural and after bishop a4 you cannot take on d1 anyway too because it's a back rank checkmate Oh I was about to say after bishop d1 I'm just going to play rook d1 and uh, you can't stop my b pawn but <laughs> maybe uh, I'll tip it to you on that one <laughs> <laughs> okay um so jan kristof duda winning by the way he's the defending champion of mm-hmm. the world cup knocking out magnus carson in the semi final and uh, jan yeah. nepomnichi seems to have clinched it against uh, bugara sarli we'll go up quickly to that board and see what happened uh, yeah i think i think black resigned It's possible. Yes, black resigned because he can't defend two pawns at the same time. And uh, I mean once you lose the base pawn, mm-hmm. then all the pawns get loose and you fall apart. So I think mm-hmm. he just decided not to bother yes. playing this anymore. And Jan telling him what he could have done <laughs> after the game. Okay. Let's get back to roughly uh, Oh, there are some games we didn't discuss at all. I notice Vincent Kaima Pragnananda we didn't discuss let's have a look at Pragnananda's game So we have a few Oh my god here. how did we miss this game Oh wow This is a fantastic <laughs> game 
What happened in the Queen and G1? How, how did it? Okay, so Prague, listen, this is amazing stuff. <laughs> I'm really embarrassed we hadn't spotted this earlier. Bishop G5, Bishop B5, Knight G7. Uh -huh. Okay, this quirky line, Knight mm -hmm. G7. This, by the way, is theory. I even played a game against uh, Arjun Erikaisi last year. Though I print uh, Bishop C4 or something. Queen B6, Queen D3. Bishop E7, F4, mm -hmm. castles, H4. Mm -hmm. So black hits back, D5. B takes E4. What would you play here? Queen takes E4 maybe? Oh, but then Bishop H4 check is uh, yeah, getting is, unpleasant. Uh, knight takes E4. It takes e4, probably bishop f5, because if you take on g6, queen d4 check. Okay, knight takes e4, bishop f5, you're saying. I take, um, I mean, I can play knight f6, but it doesn't, f6, look, that yeah. doesn't look that great. I take this, you go queen b4 check. What should I play? Queen c3 is not clever, so I can play bishop d2, queen takes e4. Take on f7 maybe. Nothing sensational, right? Yeah, nothing really explosive. Yeah. I don't know if I can punch you like this. Mm -hmm. Maybe you exchange queens right away. Or there could be some bishop b4 check and then something strong. What's wrong with knight h4? It's true. I hadn't quite uh, figured out what to do there, but I thought at least I exchange queens and maybe make a move. But it still looks unpleasant for white. Yeah. yeah. So very nice uh, opening choice, and I'm surprised that. Okay, so Lagarde went queen g3, whereupon Prague went knight h4 oh. because there is still mm -hmm. this queen g1 check business. So what happened? Rook takes h4, queen g1 check, bishop f1, all forced. Now, what did black play? Black has he can to play e3, right? Yeah. Bishop e3 is in order, so black has to prepare. Well, bishop e3 is not a threat yet, because I take bishop takes h4. Oh, right, yes. But um, maybe knight e2 was the threat. Knight e2. Knight e2. So he went e3. Now, knight e2, by the way, you can quickly solve this at home if you want, so I'll give you a minute. You play queen f2 check. And then uh, this rook is running out of protectors. So when knight d1. I, oh, this is brilliant. He just went a calm move, saying that my e-pawn is better than anything you've got. Well, this is such a great game. Yes. And, and king e2 is on the board, yeah? King e2. Bishop well, it's the only move, because black is threatening e2 now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then bishop h4, and uh, it's a discovered check, and you win the house. So king e2. Kind of forced. And then he just went a calm move, bishop e6. Was that better than b6 or something? Okay, bishop e6. If I play b3, what happens? You're just going to pile on with rook a d8? I think so, yeah. I think that is the idea. Otherwise, b6 would have been played. And or I can play f5. Which temporarily uh, uh, guarding the c4 square. Yeah. yeah, connecting that. Did he play f5? He played something, so we'll find out in a second. Nice. Oh, this is a fantastic game. This is the problem when there are so many boards that there's abundance of riches, you miss a game or two. Yeah, I think we'll get the, the moves in a second. B3 was on the g on the board, yes. So white played B3. Which is what's wrong with F5? Yeah, let's figure it out. F5. 
Or you could just take on h4 and take on f5. But is it is it what black wants? Seems as good as anything. I mean, if you take here, I can just play rook d8, and you can't even disc. Oh, you play king f3 or something? No. Oh, queen takes d8. Queen wins. takes d8. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. No, it's not queen takes d8. Is because it? Because I have bishop g4 check. No, oh, still, you can just move. Oh, I have, king king I have a square left. King Beautiful. <laughs> I have a square left. I thought king d2, rook d8, check. Yeah, yeah. Ah, right. So, uh, it's not rook a d8. Then what is the move? Is it, bishop? it can't be bishop takes c2. It's funny. White is completely messed up, but he is trapping the black queen on g1. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, oof, what is the way forward? Is it rook, rook takes e4? c3 or? Rook e4, queen takes no, e4. No, rook e4, queen takes e4. Yeah. Maybe there's not actually a threat and I can make some move like rook e6 or something. But I want the rook on e8 because yeah, yeah, when yeah. you go king d2, I want to have a check. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Uh, f5, bishop h4, queen h4. Also something like bishop d5 might work because I can just take on g2. And your queen is overloaded, right? Yes. Uh, it has to protect c4 and g2. So I don't know what you would do here. Yeah. The game is so interesting. It attracts one spectator there, which I'm yet to figure out who it is. Is it or? No, I don't think so. Oh, it's Ray Robson. <laughs> ah, it's Ray Robson. Yeah, okay. it's Ray Robson. Shut. Okay. But instead, b3 has happened. And yeah, that is the move that has happened. So why don't I just set it up like that? What can we do here? Rook d8? That seems to be a very natural option. But and if you go bishop e3, then I go bishop takes h4, queen takes h4. Bishop c4 check, b takes c4, rook takes d1. <coughs> but we might run out of pieces before we win. Um, okay, let's see what are the options for black. Um, yeah, I think rook d8, bishop e3, you can take on h4, queen h4. And okay, one second. So I take on e3. Uh, rook takes d1. Immediately. No, no take rook takes on d1 doesn't help. I think take on h4 first, queen h4, and then bishop c4 check, and then take on d1. Or it doesn't work. Well, I didn't see how it did. I mean, you take here. Ah, uh, yeah. And. Take on f. Take on f, queen e1, yeah? Then if you take on e3, I think. I have to take on e3. Is it bishop d3? No, bishop d3, I have queen g1. But you don't have a threat and I don't have a... Maybe I go rook b1 and it's some kind of draw that you go... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, you would think that's an easier win here. Wait. If I give the check in the other way... Ah, the other way. And then I do this. You must once again take no with the king. There is no queen e1. Yeah. Now there is no queen e1. So I play no queen, queen takes uh, f1. A1. So you come here. Now I... You can take the rook, yeah? No, there is still a check. Oh, sorry. This is a bishop, not a rook. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I can just take on a1. Ah, so that's the key then. Rook d1 and it's uh, game bishop, over. Bishop g4 instead of on c4. Yes, that's a very good difference. MVL has gone to see what's happening. So yeah. everyone is fascinated by this game. I think I have one who has uh, a lot of time on the clock. He's got knight takes e3. Knight takes e3. Okay. Come on, we have to solve this. <laughs> um, I mean, black's got the perfect position. Two rooks on d8 and e8. Bishops mm -hmm. on e6 and e7. And a queen sitting on g1. All black needs is to clear something and give a check. And how do you give a check? Just yeah, just one check is needed at the moment. Yeah. Can I go slow? Can I go bishop f6? You go rook b1, uh, rook b1. Now I go bishop f5, and basically try to claim that you have no squares left. 
Yeah, I don't see why not. Because mm -hmm. now I'm threatening bishop takes c2 and then going back with check. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know if you can play bishop b2. I don't even know if you can play queen f2. Because I take, take, king f2, take bishop h4. h4, check and play g3. But yeah. you can always play rook e3 and yeah. Or you can take, oh no, you can. Okay, it's a bailout. But I do I have bishop b2? But now you take on, no, you cannot. You can attack an h4. Queen g7 is there. <laughs> Do I have yes. this move? No, now it's bishop g4 wins. Because you mm. have to take with the rook, and the rook no longer defends the queen, so mm. I have that. Mm. Oh, this is great stuff. So could he go bishop b2? And what is happening here? Funnily enough, I could do this. You take. I could actually go here. <laughs> Something is wrong, I guess. Ah, yeah. I, I thought I have this, but then you have rook h1. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Such a nice move. <laughs> yes. So you cannot take on b2, yeah? So I take yeah. on b2 and... Uh, you can take on b2, but then... Maybe just rook e7 and rook d7 or something. Yeah, or rook I was e6. thinking doubling on the d file. Perhaps rook d6 is a good way to go because I'm threatening rook e6 and mm -hmm. what's your defense against that? Oh, queen f2, then rook d2. Yeah. So that doesn't work. Maybe c4. c4 and rook e6, rook e6, yeah. Yeah, maybe this is the way to go. How to handle this rook e6. There's been Rock some has done move. something. Yeah. Let me check. Yeah, good find. He went bishop f6. Mm -hmm. And I guess... It looks to me from this distance that white played rook b1, but uh, maybe it's just staying at a1. <laughs> I <don't laughs> so I think you can put it on the board. Bishop f6. Yeah. Yeah. But so if not rook b1, then what else, right? Nothing else. Yeah. I oh. mean, it's a huge opportunity for Prague because, uh, again, winning with black puts him in command mm -hmm. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lagarde will try and save this at all costs. Rook F2. Okay, there must be a and good move for black. Is and 12 minutes five? for each, and they still have to make another 20 minutes. Uh, sorry, another 20 moves to the next it's a lot, control. Yes. Yeah, it's already in some sort of time trouble now. Mm. Yeah. Also, let's see, if th is this a bailout after Bishop F5? Is Queen F2 actually a bailout? Or do you have some really strong idea? If I take... Takes, takes. And then Bishop And then uh, I have moved this move. So are you going to take on uh, e3? But then have I escaped? Bishop or are you, is it still unpleasant if you do this? Or Bishop f6? I mean, I can take on a7. You take on c2. I play rook c1 or something. But I think there should be some uh, stronger, stronger move over black instead of taking on f2, after queen f2. Okay. Not bishop g4. Oh, why not bishop takes h4, and then if you take on the queen, then bishop ah, g4. Ah, lovely, okay. Yeah. Ah, that is the... Uh, oh, that is beautiful, because this is now checkmate. <laughs> so uh, if I uh, so then if Queen F thing then Black still gets to make a move and the Bishop yes, C two yeah. might just win. Okay. And Queen F two is just a waste yeah. of tempo. Okay, so Bishop F uh, then it's uh, getting very very clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a great position to play as Black, especially when you have this time situation. You just want to attack, and usually as an attacker you take um, shorter time. Yeah.
instead of defending. Yes. We're going to spend forever here. Uh, <laughs> we'll keep keep an eye on the board. Yes. And uh, quickly point out that there are, there are some other interesting positions, some fascinating ones here. Look at this one. That is amazing. There's a queen on e3. How did that come about? Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is one of those lines where the pawn could be on a2, and that mm -hmm. would be a perf perfectly theoretical position, but it's on a5, and that's a perfectly theoretical mm -hmm. position as well. So c4, d4, knight c3. Dada plays a6. Uh, Maxim Lagarde is getting up and walking. I guess once you only have only moves, then you yeah you can relax a bit, right? That's true. And also maybe Queen he's a, a bit four. tensed. <laughs> yes. Queen rook d1, okay. Knight c3, b c3. Bishop d7. Queen takes c4. I mean, it's a huge position for white. And he keeps the pressure here. Black didn't take on a5 because... White could even sack the exchange, right? I could go queen b4 as well, then, because then mm, b7 is not seven. defensible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So rook c8, whereupon Vincent charges in, then goes queen a2. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is how it happened. He sacks the queen, the thing, rook takes b7, queen takes c5, mm -hmm. defending. So some amazing sequence here. I queen a2, so. because if rook takes uh, a5, I have queen takes b6. Mm -hmm. And the rook is spinning the queen. So the queen steps out of the way. I'm not sure why he couldn't go to b4. I think you can play knight c4. And then queen b6 is still on the... No, but rook takes b7 or queen c5. And he doesn't five, want his yeah. queen. Okay. So he went queen a2, which is brilliant. Knight c4, asking him, can you mm -hmm. come back to the very square <laughs> that you left? Rook, rook b7. takes b7, queen c5. Now using this double attack, mm -hmm. but black simply plays queen takes c3. Now, what are your options? Can you go knight takes d8? Or is queen takes c3 just very good? So taking on e3 is not a good move, or? Uh, it probably is the best move, but I mean, this is a lovely yeah, position yeah. for black, right? It looks really nice. Uh, but at the end of the day, the computer will just say that it's wonderful for white. So mm -hmm. He has played fe3, so F3. this is the current position. Okay, let's quickly go back to Prague and see what's happening there. Still no move yet. So Prague is now trying to find bishop maybe f5. bishop f5 or mm -hmm. some uh, such move. Peter Swidler is ambling around, so he must be doing well. <laughs> um, We'll go back to Vincent. Yes. F takes e3 has happened. Bishop e6 is the most natural move on the chessboard. And then uh, maybe rook takes e7 to just throw the rook, rook on e6. e6. Because... Uh, or a6. And one? Pragnananda has just played bishop f5. Yes. So... <laughs> come back to that? It should come there. I mean, I think he, I saw him play bishop f5. Uh, no, but it hasn't appeared on the thing yet. So we're waiting for that. It's not updated yet, yes. Yeah. It will be soon. Yes. So bishop f5 has happened and um, incidentally the line we saw for queen f2 also works for queen h2 which is I again play bishop ah, takes h4. That's right. So yeah. <laughs> it works everywhere. Uh -huh. Good. Um, I think we are concluding that this is quite uh, good. And uh, Vincent has played rookie. So, so despite the fact that the position looks lovely, mm -hmm. uh, if I play rook takes d6, then it's pretty hopeless for black. Mm -hmm. So what should um, black do? Okay, yeah, I think it's a big edge for Vincent. Uh, let's just see if something interesting uh, is happening here. This is Tabatabai against uh, Salinas Herrera. 
don't think black is in any danger. Probably no. not white either. Yeah, yeah. Um, David Navarra. Um, again, it looks kind of reasonable to me, but wait. This D5 move is undermining everything, right? Maybe white is... Maybe white is a little better, yeah. yeah. Because of that. You just... Okay. Uh, Nihal Sarin was playing Axel. And I think this is significant progress, right? Mm -hmm. Because if I can play Queen G2, no, not yet. Mm -hmm. uh, Bishop H4, Rook G1, this Rook looks G1, great for white. Yes. Oh, so... Um, what is the move I should play? Should I play C4 or does that allow Bishop H4? Bishop H4 is huge, yeah. So you can see that he's probably outplayed his opponent yeah. quite nicely. And uh, this, in fact, does look very good for white. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Swidler looked happy, so let's try and find out what's the source of his happiness. Yeah, uh, I'm did. just <laughs> making I'm just making fun of Peter because he's walking around. But that's a good sign that you're fairly relaxed. Yeah, this does look uh, nice. Oh, it's black to move. Then it's just knight c3, right? Because the uh, back and rank is open. I mean, the seventh rank is open. Yes, and so knight c3 just might clinch it. And we have a result on board three. Uh, Fabio Fabiano Caruana has won his game against Michelis Philip Michael. Yes, it was looking unpleasant uh, in practical sense. Um, Magnus is winning as well because this is going to be over. Mm -hmm. uh, the first problem is you cannot recover the pawn because it's checkmate. Yes. I go check, f5 check, and the king is running out of squares. Yep. So that means there are further material losses for Pansulaya Levan, um, which means he'll probably lose this one as well. Yeah, and it's uh, enough to win. And yeah? that's mm -hmm. that's game over. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at the top boards, everything, all hell is breaking loose. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is surprisingly unpleasant for black, I think, because unless I can activate the rook somehow, the rook d8. But otherwise, um, this kind of ending can be huge. Okay, Hikaru may be lightly pressing. Um, so Wesley in big trouble, I think, because he has, his opponent has the two bishops. He's got a very meager knight on e1. And it's going to take quite some effort to keep the balance here. Yep. Okay, he's played rook d5, it seems. Ah, okay. If the rook escapes, that gives a little bit of hope. But um, it doesn't look great. I mean, I can even kick you. And when you come back... Maybe just play f5, e4 and such moves. Mm -hmm. Just trying get a lot of space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the pair of bishop is a bit too strong in this position. It's It's still a bit hard to nail this down because mm -hmm. that bishop can't move easily uh, because of d6. And I'm threatening bishop b3 somewhere. Mm, yeah. So maybe white just has enough counterplay. To, okay, we'll get back to this in a second. Still nothing happening with Temur. And let's check the Gokesh board. Okay, that queen, queen suddenly got active, queen c6. Um, can I go rook d8? Or do you just play rook e8? Maybe even rook d5. To try and exchange. Um, What's wrong with um, rook g6? I thought, well, it allows uh, oh. Queen A, Rook A, not right away probably, but in some way, shape or form, it should allow uh, Rook A8, right? So I'm going to try and see how we can get this done. I think Queen H4. Queen H4, yes. Queen H4 right away. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Mm. Also possibly, like, is it like Rook F8, Queen H8, and then Rook A7? Mm -hmm. Yes, so that's huge. So you probably want to play rook e8 yeah. back, mm -hmm. but then I would rather start with rook d5 mm -hmm. and then get that out of the way. Mm -hmm. Has he gone rook d8? 
oh, Rook D8 and Rook D5 has happened? Or no, that's just our analysis. What is going on? Oh, uh, he's actually gone Rook D2 and Queen D1. So this is very good play on Gokesh's part mm -hmm. because he's uh, taken the D file and uh, there is some chance you get lucky. Shall we get back to Prakhnananda's game? Uh, let's just uh, see a few before we get back. I think Shakriar is, if he was in any danger, he's now out of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's still a very, very small edge there. Oh, uh, in Prakhnananda's game, there is some development. It was Queen F2 indeed, and Bishop takes H4. Oh, okay, and now Bishop C2 is going to win. So that's yes. good. At least we, we spotted <laughs> yeah. that one. Um, this is Dragnev against MVL. I think White's in any danger here. Mm. Maybe not, but on the other hand, this didn't really work out well. On the other hand, is move 39. So there's a long thing coming. White has 18 more minutes for his next move. Yeah. And um, probably should start pushing his pawns. Yeah, I think he should because otherwise black will do that. Yeah. We have another result. Uh, it's Alexander Vier versus Ray Robson ended with a draw. Yusupenko versus Savarli also ended in a draw. Fedosiev versus Pechak also ended in a draw. So far there is, okay, only one decisive game, uh, Caruana, Caruana's game, but the rest of the games that finish, it's all drawn. Okay. Um, so has he? P he's not played a four yet. So this is the current position, but we are assuming a four or something. Effect. To be honest, my initially I thought he might be in trouble, mm -hmm. but um, it's just a pawn race, isn't it? I go h four, you take, and now I go f four, and if necessary, I can boost it to d five. What is uh, Black's drawing mechanism? I mean, White's drawing mechanism. What 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 if you just take on the h four first, and then after a five rook a four? And then and then start pushing on f4. Does it work? Maybe I should play b4. Oh. And then go like this. Yeah. And uh, in a race, it. On race, it is. You could probably play f4 and should be a draw because um, you'll attack the lead pawn. Mm. So if you go a5, I'll do something like this. The king has to stay close to this pawn, and if I attack the lead pawn, then it's going to slow you down enough to. Um, get some temp yeah. yes mm -hmm. so both sides may have to bail out okay but that's going to be an exciting race uh, well, Dominguez, Dominguez just shook hands so yes. it should be winning for him <coughs> oh he's taken on c1 which means it's a total breakthrough rook takes b2 is happening and mm -hmm. then there is even the open 7th rank yep. uh, if as you say uh, Yannick has resigned then uh, that is an expected result mm -hmm. So we had another decisive game there. Yannick, Igor, and Dominguez Linear. Yeah, and uh, Grishchuk, it hasn't, uh, it's fizzled out. Because here... Uh, so he didn't sacrifice on C6. No, he didn't uh, sacrifice after all. These things are always easy to suggest, but <laughs> they <laughs> don't work, they don't work. When you're playing, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> um, Let's go to Lake Wang Liam against Ivanisevic. And I don't know who's for choice here. On the one hand, I see a rook behind a mm -hmm. pass pawn and a bishop, which is better than long range. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it's very hard to see how this will actually get to A4. <laughs> yeah. So I guess maybe equal is the evaluation. I have a trick with this, but I don't know if it's very Let's good. Let's see if three, I go yes. bishop Yeah. Uh, Wei Yi is lost? No, oh, no, that's no. a queen on, uh, sorry, that's a queen on d8. It looked like a rook on d8 for me for a second. Okay, then it's just winning. And he's going to collect everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see how that happened, because this was the Sveshnikov that was very interesting for us. F, uh, F4 happened. Mm -hmm. Queen d2, okay, f4. Bishop e4, because you want to restrain this bishop as much as possible. Uh, bishop f5, rook a1. Uh, 
Five. Very simple, actually, not that much. Uh, even g4 and uh, the queen broke mm. through f5, mm -hmm. and after that, there really no squares left. Had he gone queen h4, I could have gone bishop. I mean, he could have gone bishop d6, and that's winning, right? Oof. Something nope. is missing. Something is horribly wrong with that rook f8, maybe. Rook f8. <laughs> is it rook f8? Queen a. Can't I play queen takes g4? Why does it drop by so much? Or maybe queen, queen f2. Queen f2, queen f2, queen yeah. f2 yeah. Ah, so in fact, the bishop is needed on c5. So uh -huh, uh -huh. what should I play? Queen uh, f4. Queen f4. Oh, or rook e2, maybe. Rook e2, g3. Maybe queen f4, as you say. Or is it uh, rook e2 after all? Maybe there is no way to take advantage of this. Mm, what? Fascinating. Anyway, uh, sorry, this didn't happen. He went queen c7, whereupon d6, queen c6. Oh, that is a beauty. Yeah, knight c8. What a move. That is very classy indeed. Wow. Oh, that is beautiful. Because if d7, could he play knight g5? Using the spin? No, I probably have knight d5 winning. So what was the problem with this? Rook f8. Oh, because there's queen c1 check mm -hmm. in the position. But then I have queen e6 check, right? And then it's game over. Mm, that's true, yeah. So what is the move here? Knight d4? Queen d5? Queen d5 check and d8 queen. Um, right, yeah. Or queen e6 check, queen e8 check. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe knight e5 or something like that just uh, stops that pawn. Okay, we have a lovely move, knight, knight c8. Knight c8, yeah, this is amazing. Rook takes c8, d7. Wait a minute. Wow, this is amazing. If you go rook d8, I go rook e8 check. Rook e8, queen d5 check. And queen d5, yes. Yeah, it is. It is queen d5 check. Queen d5, yeah. That is brilliant. Yeah. That's and if I go king h8, I think you just go the queen a? c6, rook e1 check, and king g2, and there's nothing happening. No, and I I'm think still the, eight. the 8 queen. Yes, but then I can go on oh, queen g6 yeah, or something, right? And I'm continuing, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah. No, that was working. Um, you have to click on Oh, that. I have to click and then only mm -hmm. then I can go back. Okay. Oh, queen d5 is nice as well. So, fantastic game by Wayne. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really amazing game. Mm -hmm. Fine. He's... Uh, and how, how what happened? Uh, because black resigned, so can we see the final position? Queen f8 check and d8, and then rook takes g4. Yeah. Right. Um, that is brilliant. Okay, mm -hmm. we have one superb game of the day. And then. Um, I think Ivan Ivanisevich might be in serious trouble now. Against Lake Wang Lim. That turned out dramatically. Because this rook wandered away from A1. Mm -hmm. And now it should be better if you take this and you take here, I just take here. And I'll get the seventh rank and all that. So. Looks pretty bad. Okay, let's see what's happening in some of the other games. Um, Daniel Friedman is worse against uh, Vitugov because, um, well, the Queen yeah, and Rook are yeah. squashed at the back. Um, let's see Adiban uh, Dubov. Yeah. Meanwhile, we have one um, decisive result in the women's section. Uh, Alexandra Kostenyuk has won her game against mm -hmm. Jan Tianchi. Uh, first board drew, we knew that, and second board also drew, Gorechkina versus Ordas. Mm -hmm. Third board, oh, Gomez Marianne drew against Lahno. 
in that wow, game. Wow, that end game. Wow, mm. that is a big save. Okay, um, there's been too much interesting stuff. There's just too many boards to follow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's too much action. I'm sorry we were not able to cover everything. Let's go to the women and see how that goes. Um, Koneru Humpy against Priyanka Notaki. I guess there is going to be some sort of B4 and pushing ahead. And this might just be winning for Humpy. Sagnitse mm -hmm. um, is multiple pawns up, so she's winning as well. Mm -hmm. Maria Muzichuk. Wait, what kind of attack is this? It's just allowing uh, g5. And then the attack got bogged down. So that's very good for black, right? Yeah, yeah, I agree. And in fact, now Maria Mosichuk is uh, for choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, after g5, the attack is just ground to a halt. Uh, just nothing happening here. OK. Um, Anna Mosichuk's position looks as good as when we left it. Yes. So I think that's. Uh, Pretty clear. Harika Dronavalli. Um, Harika's got a pawn on c3. Looks really good for black now. Yeah. Looks good. I mean, I don't see immediately how to get breakthrough, but mm -hmm. you feel that mm -hmm. white's got to be very clever with not exchanging any piece because mm -hmm. every exchange allows this pawn. But I'll also have a pawn on d6, which is also a sixth rank. Yeah. Maybe uh, it's not that clear. Okay, let's see. Uh, and we also Nino, uh, but Siashvili. we have an upset on board 13 uh, Sarah Sadat Kademal Sarie lost to an Indonesian player Medina Warda Aulia ah ok where is that it's board 13 it should be around there it doesn't work like that ok um, Actually, we, we never even got to um, some of board. the top women yeah. boards. Uh, this is Anna Ushinina, probably one of the. Yeah, top she seats, won. Right? She yeah, won yeah. one of the uh, women's World Cup before. Yes, um, I mean also a top seed, simply mm -hmm. by it. Mm -hmm. So something like, oh, this looks bad for her. Queen H, uh, Queen F5 or something looks very dominating. Okay, so Anna Ushinina in some trouble. That's a surprise. Vaishali. Probably not a breakthrough yet, but it's uh, looks nice. Nice with these knights. Yeah, but I don't see what you're doing with them. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's yeah. that was going to be my next qu next question. No, you might be right. It <laughs> looks good, but I don't see how the follow up is. I like how black is uh, taking control over the D file. Mm -hmm. And yeah, no, suddenly white looks maybe a bit stuck. And probably because of the pawn on on B three and C three. Yes, I mean if the pawn was on A two, life would be a lot yes. easier, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then Elena Robers. Again, black looks comfortable because uh, this is a French where everything has gone well for mm -hmm. black, sort of. So her position looks very good. Okay, let's quickly have a look at Divya Deshmukh. Oh, she's now gone Queen C2 check which is awkward if I take on c5, mm -hmm. but it's also awkward if that bishop moves somewhere and you don't have any perpetuals. Mm -hmm. um, so if the king moves, king has to move to f1 or e1, yeah? Yeah. I mean, you can do this because taking here, uh, it's still not over. Oh, yeah. Uh, but... Okay. Uh, I don't know what she did. She did play King G1 or is it my move entered? No, she has played uh, King she G1. Has played she King has G1. played King G1. Okay. Um, let's see again what's happening with uh, Conor Hopi. Yeah, Zagnitze is now a solid two pawns up, mm -hmm. so that's great. Maria Mozichuk is a pawn up and everything to go, so she might be winning. Um, 
Hari Kadurana Valley. Which were, which uh, games were we missing earlier? You mentioned one result. Oh, because you click the running games, it's only showing the running games. Ah, okay. Now it should be down there, I guess. Uh, it's board 13. Because um, I think, yeah, Sarah, this is this is her first event um, okay. playing for the Spanish Federation. And uh, quickly, let's have a look mm -hmm. at Shovalov Apolina. This is game over. B3 check is oh. coming. So, oh, in fact, uh, her opponent has resigned. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's another concluded game. Now let's go back to the... Ah, sorry, you wanted, we wanted to see one more, right? Ah, this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's pretty clinical. Knight on B3, pawn on yeah. C2, <laughs> and uh, G2 is in indefensible. Okay. So that is... Uh, is it an upset? Yes, very it much is an, an upset. upset yeah. It's very much an upset. It okay. Is an upset. Okay, so well done, uh, Aulia Medina. Um, there are some other interesting games. Elizabeth it's, Pates. Mm -hmm. uh, Apparently pressing on. Yeah, Queen B7 looked good, but uh, then I noticed that Black is her whole rook up. Which probably <laughs> tilts, the, tilts the evaluation a little bit that way. Yeah. I sometimes look at a position and I, it takes me a while to realize that one piece is just missing. Yeah. Um, but what do you do here? Uh, Queen B7 is um, attacking A6. and uh, Rook A7 is obvious because. Rook A7, uh, yeah. yeah, Rook mm -hmm. A7. Actually, it might even be the only move. Mm. I don't know, Queen D5 might work. But Queen E7 might still be messy. So, mm. yeah, you can take this one. Okay. Um, Repkova took the draw earlier, that's clear. Um, Goryachkina was also a draw. Mm -hmm. um, Humpy is clearly breaking through here mm -hmm. because the E6 pawn is dropping. You can see that diagonal yep. coming. Um, oh, Marianne Gomez actually made it with time to spare. Uh, how did she manage that? And the first. I board mean, we were very pessimistic here. First board just finished. I think Carson should be winning yeah. it, right? Yes. Yeah, this is the final position. So right. Mm -hmm. So first. So we have our another decisive result on the first board. Carson won yeah. his first game. Okay, so let's go back to the men's section. Mm -hmm. And. Yeah, Marianne Gomez held this with just good defense. And that was it. So, um, maybe I overestimated Black's position. Maybe she was never in that much trouble. Mm -hmm. But anyway, but Black I had guess a she good should be relieved. Yeah, yeah, I think she should be relieved. Cost Alexandra Costinio clearly broke through in the center. So even though, and it's always a bad sign when a pawn which should be on E6 ends up on E5, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Should be there sitting and being supported. Okay, let's go back to the men, because there must be a lot of uh, decisive results there. Carlson won, mm -hmm. as we mentioned, uh, just two extra pawns extra and pawns, nothing to be done, yep. and there is no real hope for checks. Um, the second board still playing, and white is, okay, slightly better, but is it enough to win? Well, the night ending, I wouldn't really want to play, but uh, what about rook eight? It is unpleasant, though. And Hikaru will not let him get away easily for the evening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But... Uh, yes, this has happened. Uh, rook a8, rook takes c3, rook takes a6 has happened. And now he's gone king e4. And he moved it very confidently. Yes. Anyway, uh, I can see that King E4 has happened, so we'll... Uh, we, we will so have to move in a few seconds. Yeah. Uh, this has happened. And you just imagine that the King and Rook are going gam to gang up on this pawn. The question is, can Black start pushing his pawns fast? Mm -hmm. So perhaps something like G5 might be a good way to go. Oh, no, Rook C5. Ox and Rook C5. So I have to be careful how I do this. Uh, maybe F5 check. Just to... Uh, because Black needs a passed pawn mm -hmm. at all mm -hmm. costs. Can you uh, can you start with? Oh no, you cannot. I thought uh, H four is uh, an idea. Probably not. Can you just it could be. It 
but uh, if g4 then you want to get your king to g5 mm -hmm. or something yeah there are multiple setups wait a minute could i have gone uh, rook a4 check and no i could not because you have rook c4 so that was his plan okay fabiano one fabiano one um you can see that white ran out of squares on all sides Uh, Jan Nepomnishi won, so a lot of heavy thing. Anish Giri draws today. So, uh, but his position never really got going. Um, and Wesley has taken a draw. Has taken a draw? Oh. Well, they just repeated. Maybe this whole this setup is a tougher thing to break down than because. Uh, right, because we thought that it was better for black. Yeah, right? a very mm -hmm. superficial. Uh, look, mm -hmm. glance maybe, but uh, at the board it's maybe harder to uh, actually break through. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, um, I have some question for you, Fishy. Mm -hmm. um, who do you think is uh, going to be the next uh, candidate from India in the <laughs> next World Championship? Like, I know that you have so many like Indian prodigies, right? But uh, if you can pick a name or two. Well, you know, the way some of the games today have turned out, you see that uh, they're all very, very good. Yes, I agree. Um, it's a journey. It's still it's a couple a of years ahead. Mm -hmm. It could be this one, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps a very good performance here in the World mm -hmm. Cup, um, or in the FIDE circuit, or in the Grand Swiss. But um, uh, it could easily be the next cycle as well. Maybe they just need a little bit, of a little bit more time. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know which one to pick. It's easy to say... Uh, Gukesh, but right now Prague is doing very well. We have not seen what Arjun is doing for a while, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, Nihal probably much better when we Nihal left him. Better, yes, Nihal uh, was much better mm -hmm, when we mm -hmm, left him. Mm -hmm. So I think things things can change. So uh, I mean, already Gukesh has completely outplayed his opponent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So is it winning? I think Gukesh is winning now because how did that happen? Both the rooks got the eighth. And somehow black didn't uh, get the right fortress. So this is in fact game over because that the battery here is decisive. Yeah, this is over. Yeah. You're almost over. Yep. So uh, did he resign? No, not yet. I think they're still thinking. Yeah, black he's gone F5, thinking. but now queen D7 and then it's game over. Because mm -hmm. the battering. Okay. So Gokesh will probably win. Mamadiarov is under some pressure but uh, nothing spectacular MVL and um, Dragnev are going to draw yes it seems that the counterplay will balance out mm -hmm. Dominguez won we know that um, Grushchuk drew um, What's happening with Duda? I mean, it's almost uh, it's almost amazing that uh, Black managed to last this long, but now it's over because, uh, uh, because Queen of this takes, back uh, Yeah, <laughs> this back rank. Okay, yes. so Duda won. Uh, I think still for me, it'll be a tough game of the day thing because there's mm -hmm, Prague, mm -hmm. but there's also Wei Yi with a mm -hmm, masterpiece. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, where is... Uh, Vidit has... Uh, is still playing on, but there's nothing happening here. It's already drawn. Yeah. Yes, it's already mm -hmm. drawn. Mm -hmm. with a thousand. Oh, Adiban might be in some trouble. Oh, in fact, he's busted, it seems. Because uh, he allowed this breakthrough with C4. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I have one more question for you before mm -hmm. we go yeah. for the next break. Uh, it's uh, our viewer from Mexico, so greetings from Mexico. Everybody wants to know what's the most memorable game that you ever played and how it can be resumed in one sentence. Um, there are at least four or five that I played I, that I really, really like. My personal favorite is probably my win against Lotier in sure. Beale. Mm -hmm. But I have to admit that I... Uh, also really like my win against Aronian what year was in, that? The, in 2013. So Beale was in 1997. 1997 it was a Scandinavian. Mm -hmm. And uh, Aronian is my other big one. But then there are 
a couple of games from my match with Kramnik, let's say, mm -hmm. which um, I'm really proud of. And, you know, you can keep expanding yeah, yeah. these uh, <laughs> games a lot. Um, look, if somebody uh, catches me and forces me to answer, answer the question instantly, I would say, Ronya, you not yet. So there we are. <laughs> no, you have too many great games. Um, I, I also cannot... Uh, you know, pinpoint which one that I like of yours. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's our cue for our next break. And uh, the players are also entering uh, their time control right now on the, the 40th move. So don't go anywhere. We will be back on to the last session of the game of today. So see you in a bit. See you in a bit. Azerbaycan'ın tabiatından, Nakhçıvan'ın torpağından süzülerek gelen tabii suyun sirri, Sirab. Her damlasında hayat var. So I'm proud to be joined here in the interview area. My first interview of round two with Jan Nepomnici. He's just defeated his opponent in the first game. Clear style against Vugar Asadi from Azerbaijan. Jan, how did the game go? Tell us uh, your sensations after this first important win. Well, it was uh, a new feeling. Yeah, I didn't play classical chess for for a while, and um, he, I think he wanted to surprise me with the Petrov because I can't recall him playing Petrov before, or maybe I wasn't prepared well enough. Uh, but I would say that uh, as for me, I also yeah played Petrov once or twice, so I had uh, you know few ideas and uh, well the game was very complex but I think at some point maybe when he played g5 and give me and gave me h6 pawn like for free maybe at, at this point I felt like maybe I'm uh, getting some advantage but uh, it was far from obvious and uh, I also believe that even like a couple of moves before he actually resigned the position was I mean clearly white was had an upper hand but I mean I wasn't sure if it's like like winning or um, he has like nice drawing chances but yeah. So would you say it was a premature uh, resignment then? No, I guess at the, at, the, at a certain point, like when he uh, decided to resign, it was not that, uh, you know, wasn't, you know, really uncalled for. But uh, I would say that, yeah, some players would uh, even like continue the game even at, at, at this point. Okay. So um, I noticed you came yesterday. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, uh, do you normally come the day before you, the the first game, or were you considering coming before to acclimate to the to the the temperature, to the hotel, to the venue? Well, it's basically more or less the same time zone as Moscow, so one hour, one hour more here, but it's not a big deal. Uh, so the climate, I mean, also there is, of course, this is hotter than Moscow, but mm -hmm. Moscow is also like some nice weather right now. Uh, but uh, speaking of like coming, uh, you know, too early sometimes. Okay, sometimes I come, you know, one month before the event. Yeah, and it didn't work out. What do you think of the the venue, the the playing hall, the, the stage? Are you comfortable? Yeah, just just nice, I think. Yeah, but uh, normally, uh, as I can recall, uh, this the World Cup in Baku and the Olympia in Baku in 2015, 2016, respectively, uh, was one of the um, I would say one of the best one of the highest level of organization, you know, of all events I ever, ever played. So I didn't like expect it to, you know, um, to, to, to be a mess. Yeah, I, I, I think it, it's quite, quite a normal thing for Baku to host just tournaments on the highest level. So, of course, this is a two match, uh, two game match. Vugar is a very strong opponent. Um, you start off very well with a win. What's your plan for tomorrow where you're playing with the black pieces? Oh, well, we'll see tomorrow. Keep it a secret then. Uh, it's not a big secret, but uh, I mean, he's white, so he's sort of choosing the the pace and the the opening and everything. So I'll okay, I'll try to come and play. Yes. Thanks for coming to the interview, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm joined by top American Grandmaster Ray Robson, who's just finished his game with Alexander Fier from Brazil. The game ended in a draw. Ray, how did the game go? Tell us about the opening, the middle game, solid draw. Um, kind of solid. I mean, I was a little bit worse. Uh, probably I didn't choose the most uh, ambitious 
line against this, just something solid. But uh, yeah, I wasn't sure. I thought a long time before playing Rook F8. I think there were other options there, but Rook F8 was kind of solid. And I was a little bit surprised he repeated. Uh, I mean, he's not really risking anything. Probably I'm completely fine if he doesn't repeat with A4 coming next, but um, I thought he might have tried to play on a little bit. Would you have played on that position? Oh, uh, with White, I mean, again, there's probably no risk, so I don't think, you know, yeah, might as well play on probably. Alexander is a very strong player, of course, very aggressive. What do you expect tomorrow, uh, even though you're playing with White pieces, what type of game do you expect? Yeah, no, he's very good. Um, I mean, I don't know, maybe depends on the opening. I mean, could be sharp or could be quiet. I mean, I really, <laughs> it depends on him a lot too. Uh, so I don't really expect anything specific. I'm kind of just uh, going to play it by ear, I guess. How did you see the, the venue, um, the setup of the, of the boards? Were you comfortable today? A nice place to play? Yeah, the venue is very nice. Um, yeah, it's just, it's cool. <laughs> I'm playing with so many uh, amazing players in the same venue. It's very rare. I guess only the Olympiad is kind of a similar experience that I've had before, but um, haven't played one of those in a while either. And I haven't played the World Cup since 2015 when it was also in Baku. So yeah, it's a really nice experience. So it's your second time around. You weren't in Sochi then? Mm, not the second time. I played 2009, 2011, 2013, 2015. <laughs> and oh, no, to Baku, I mean. Ah, uh, yeah, in Baku. And I also, well, we we played the Olympiad um, mm -hmm. 2016, I guess. I think we got gold. So, <laughs> My last question. So you've come quite a way from the States or you were in Europe before? Oh, uh, no, I came from the States. Yeah. How do you deal with the jet lag? How many days have you been here? I came pretty early just to make sure I would be okay. And it seems seems reasonable, like the... Last few days, I've been basically on a normal schedule. So I think my plan of getting here early worked out. Yeah. Thanks for the interview. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. So another top player here in the interview area, Grandmaster Fabiano Caruana from the United States. Fabiano, you just uh, won your game against Michas Vili, a very strong player. How did it go? I think it was a pretty clean game and I, I wasn't ever in any danger. I had a comfortable opening. We were following a game for some time that was played between uh, Levon Aronian and uh, DTL Mittal and up to knight g8. And then I had this new idea, knight h6. After that, it was a very comfortable position. I thought I equalized very easily and maybe even slightly better in the end game. And um, I felt like I was con playing the end game pretty well and converting it once I got better also quite well. So. I'm very happy with the first game. How do you approach these uh, games when you're playing with Black, a first round, a tough opponent, seasoned grandmasters, and really you want to try and win, but you don't want to you know, go over that limit to, to risk a loss. How do you approach this? What type of uh, ideas or openings or strategies do you use? Well, I, I don't want to say too much, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was trying to, to play not too risky, so trying to play with some calculated risk. Um, I, I wanted to get a fight. It, it was definitely in my interest to get a uh, Especially the kind of game that we had, which was like a long maneuvering game, was really what I was aiming for. So for that purpose, the opening really went very well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I didn't want to take undue risk. You know, it, it is a two-game match and, and one accident. And uh, my last World Cup basically ended that way, that uh, I, I started to take a bit too much risk. And that was the end of my tournament. So it's it's a very unforgiving tournament. You don't want to also underestimate your opponents. All these all these players can can really punish you very severely if you if you give them the chance. Um, but also, I, I was aiming for a fight today, and and uh, in general, that's my that's what I'm trying to do. But uh, yeah, of course, I don't want to have any accidents. I noticed you were here already two or three days ago. Did you come from Spain or did you come from the States? How do you deal with the jet lag? From Spain, so it was only a two hour um, two hour jet lag, not not too serious. Coming from the US, I'm I'm used to a bit more, but. I, I was happy that uh, you know we were training in Spain beforehand, so I didn't have to deal with too much uh, acclimatization. Mm -hmm. But uh, still, at two hours, okay, it's something. So I came came a bit before anyway. You know. Final question. So tomorrow you have the second game of the match. It's a two-game match. You were playing with the white pieces. Any special strategy, or just you know, go with the flow? I think go with the flow is usually the best strategy that you can you can have, and I guess my opponent will need to be playing for, for a win. He'll be trying to get a fight. And I'm not generally opposed to that, but I, I'm not going to either try to force matters or 
um, you know, it's it's still a normal game, and and hopefully I play well. So, Fabiano Caruana, one of the best players in the world, he's already started off strongly in this uh, World Cup with a win in the first game of the two match, and tomorrow he'll try and qualify for the third round. Fabiano, thanks a lot. Thanks. So, our third American player this afternoon, top grandmaster elite Olympic player from USA, Lenier Dominguez. Lenier, you won your first game in this two-game match against Janik. Tell us about the game and your sensations after starting off with a win with Black as well. Yeah, it was uh, very nice that I got a good position from the opening. I think he probably forgot something and uh, I just got a very comfortable position after Queen D1, D5, basically. White is struggling to 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 be in the game. It's it's very unpleasant because his king is always weak. And uh, then I think I missed maybe some chances, but I, I was always I think in control, and it was it was a good win. I asked Fabiano before as well. How do you guys approach the uh, two game match with Black, where you'd like to try and win, but you don't want to overstep uh, the dangerous situation and play for three results? Is there any special strategy, or you just try and equalize and go from there? Yeah, I was just trying to play normal. If 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 uh, I mean, if it's a draw, it's a draw. Most important thing is to try to win the match, and um, and for that you need to to press in your white game. Um, so I wasn't trying to like uh, uh, go crazy or something with black just to equalize, but it, it just happened to get a very promising position from the opening, and then I was of course um, quite happy to 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 try to go for the win okay so you were telling me before you've been here already this is the fifth time in in baku i assume that always playing chess um what are your memories of uh, past uh, experiences here have you had uh, always good memories or do you like playing here in baku uh yeah man i like the city but uh, the memories are mixed of course as it as it usually is with chess players so i for example had a great olympiad in 2016 where i won the silver medal in the first board I play great, so that's a good memory. But then in 2014, for example, I was playing the Grand Prix here in Baku and I did terrible. I was last play, so that was um, a bad memory. But in general, I, I'm, I'm quite happy. I mean, the conditions are always good mm -hmm. and and I, th I feel it's it's a good place to just play chess. Do you feel comfortable in the playing venue? What do you think about the the surroundings, the the games, the area, playing with so many really good players here? Yeah, I think it's good. I mean, it's calm and, and, and you have a lot of space. Like if you want to walk or in general, it's, it's good to, to have space. And, and uh, yeah, I don't, see, I don't see any problem. My last question. Of course, this is a two-game match. So tomorrow you're playing with White against the same opponent. You won the first game. Obviously, you don't want to lose the second one. Any special strategy? Any, how do you approach uh, this new situation? Because I, wasn't, I don't know if you were expecting to win the first game. Uh, yeah, well, obviously it's a very pleasant situation to be in. I, I'll, uh, usually what I do is just try to play as if it's a tie score. So I don't, I'll try not to think too much about the situation in the match. But of course, uh, it's a pretty pleasant situation to be in. So I'll just play normal. Best of luck for tomorrow then. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm joined here by the best player in the world, Magnus Carlsen. Magnus, first game, first round, finished with a win. What are your sensations? Yeah, I felt a little bit rusty <laughs> going in. So, um, but but you know uh, the game went like it often does. Like I was slightly worse then equal, then slightly better, and then winning. It all happened kind of gradually. Were you expecting to win the first game, or you thought it was going to be a tough matchup? No, I mean, uh, I was hoping, of course, that I could get a win today, but I didn't think, regardless of who I play, that that it would be anywhere near a foregone conclusion. So, yeah, getting a win with Black, obviously, is, uh, is a nice bonus. Good luck tomorrow. I know you have many things to do, so I'll leave you to it. Yeah.
Welcome back to the last section of the round two, game one of the day. I'm still with the five-time world champion, Fishy Anand. Fishy, we've seen so many great fighting games and uh, decisive results. So which one is your favorite so far? Two games. I have posted both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Wei Yi against Supi mm -hmm. and uh, Pragnananda against Lagarde. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I'll have to go really into depth to push one above the other. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're both masterpieces and we can enjoy them. But lots of uh, beautiful games. Gukesh won a fine yeah. uh, uh, breakthrough. Mm -hmm. uh, the position looked very equal, but he showed his class. Yes. Um, Nihal, I think, is uh, winning or has won. Yes. So, um, uh, from the Indian side, that's very good. There are many games left to check, mm -hmm. uh, but quite a few results have come in. So let's k try to catch up with all the action. Yeah, sure. And before we do that, uh, I have one question from uh, our viewers. Mm -hmm. um, as you are now Deputy President of FIDE, do you think World Cup is taking chance to a wider audience? I believe that um, the World Cup is a good format. And since recently, interest in the game has mm -hmm. exploded mm -hmm. and so many more people are following us therefore the world cup comes along with that and yeah. also um, presents many attractive decisive results mm -hmm. uh, great games of chess and uh, so the two things reinforce each other mm -hmm. um, but definitely our audience numbers and everything are much higher Mm -hmm. uh, than before, so the World Cup, I think, uh, is, is a good and exciting format. And you can see the fact that uh, so many people are willing to come and play here yeah. in this <laughs> format. Yes. Um, I mean, Magnus even seems to prefer this to the World yes. Championship. <laughs> so, you know, uh, it's definitely a very good and exciting format. Uh -huh. And for you personally, you, s you have mentioned that you are no longer ambitious or aiming to be like uh, the world champion in classical. But mm -hmm. what about Rapid and Blitz? You are still one of the best players for the faster time control? I'm afraid the problem is quite similar there, whereas, uh, which is I'm not really competing in the World Rapid and Blitz. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to play Grand Chess Tour Rapid and Blitz or some private mm -hmm. ones, but not um, f the formal title. Uh, I don't know if one year I'll change my mind or maybe play only one of the events. I can only play the Blitz, for instance, mm -hmm. or something like that. That's an option. But um, at the moment, I'm not thinking of it. You're not but we'll it. see. I mean, at least with Rapid and uh, Blitz, uh, you, never you can know. change your yeah. mind uh -huh. and it's a shorter thing. I mean, uh, you don't have to think about uh, months of work. Yes. Whereas <laughs> the classical title is a very long, narrow path and you have uh -huh. to push that. And so that's not something I'm pursuing. But uh, uh, the Rapid and Blitz, I don't rule it out, but I haven't played for a couple of years already. I see. Wow. There you go. Uh, keep sending us your tweets because uh, Fishy Anand will still be with us for the next two days. So I think we can get back to some of the games. Yes. Uh. Um, so Nihal Sarin won pretty beautifully. Let's see how that happened. Uh, we were somewhere here mm -hmm. where uh, Nihal slowly started the... And bishop d7, he went this beautiful move, bishop e1. Mm -hmm. So he's going to bring the bishop here, undermine the knight, and therefore potentially land a square yes, here for yes. his pieces. We've seen this idea. You know, steady progress. Uh, black went queen c8, which is probably a bit too slow. Bishop here. Uh, c4, and then after this, terrible problems for mm -hmm. black. And you can see that um, he managed to finish it pretty clinically. Wow. Knight f2. So he just took it like that, said no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, to the Bishop f3, <laughs> and then it's already time to go back queen e6. It's not the end of the world, but you know, you're going to suffer a lot because white has a bishop, mm -hmm. a light squared bishop, and these pawns are fixed for life mm -hmm. on light squares. Mm -hmm. So it's unpleasant for black, but rook b8 is a mistake because suddenly rook h1 happened. Um, Update there? Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, updated here, mm -hmm. here it goes. So rook b8 happened. He went rook h1. The only detail, rook e4 mm -hmm. check. Mm -hmm. Now if you capture the bishop, then black captures queen takes h1. Mm -hmm. So you have to go king d1. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Whereupon black's only move was this. Mm -hmm. He took, 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 took. Which is good enough for winning. But rook h5 speeds the process up a lot because rook takes b5 and then yes, it's game over, game over. Mm -hmm. and in fact the game resigned uh, finished here mm -hmm. uh, and um, nihal has also got a one-point lead yeah so, so 
So this is a very good technical game by Nihal, yeah? Hikaru and uh, Kartik have finished. Let's see what was the result. I think they're still playing. They're still playing. Just blitz Oh, it's just the after the the uh, changing score sheets. No, I think uh, the game it is game over. I don't think they're playing this for very long. Yeah, no draw offer. No draw offer. <laughs> ah, so they have to formally uh, exchange rooks in this way. Yes. So we. But how did the they manage this? Uh, we can we can take a look also. Uh, how did it happen? Oh, so in fact, yeah, I thought they got to go down to kings, but they got down to kings and rooks. Ah, uh, yeah. And uh, it's moved 61, and maybe then you're allowed to offer a draw. So It's already past <laughs> yeah. 30 moves. So, so Hikaru okay. is... Uh, it, it it's a big achievement by Karthik. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. I mean, holding one of the strongest players. In fact, from personal experience, I can tell you, um, Hikaru is very good at these, with these Type small edges. Uh -huh. And... Um, um, in fact, Karthik uh, made it look easy. Yeah. So, well done to him. Uh, I mean, he's clearly the rating... Yep. Um, yeah, Hikaru is clearly the rating yeah. favorite. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's the opposite, but <laughs> 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 underdog. Yeah. And uh, so, that's a very creditable uh, result on his part. Yeah, actually, Good. we played until this position. So, yeah, it was until King versus King. Oh, they managed to swap the... The rooks, yeah. Yes. Ah, he must have gone King F5, Rook G3, and then they exchanged rooks. Yeah, so. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they were probably a bit annoyed that you can't uh, leave and um, that you have to trade down to kings. Or <laughs> but, uh, uh, I mean, once both players have acknowledged it, yes. it's no big deal. So, uh, I think I also had this recently where I was asked to <laughs> get to get down to kings and, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. maybe taking the role a bit too literally. But anyway, um, so Hikaru is the only one of the top seeds so mm -hmm. far who's uh, drawn. No, and Hikaru and Anish. Wesley drew as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Ra Temu Rajabov is drawn. Shak um, Gukesh, yeah, won yeah, this good. game. So so far there is still no upset in the open section, right? All the favorites, no. I think. But uh, Hikaru, uh, what is the situation? It's not really unpleasant. I mean, if there was a po extra pawn, H uh, pawn or something, it would be pretty yeah, bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, Mamad Yarov. Mm -hmm. But here, uh, black is going to draw simple, easily. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I mean, only draw upsets, not like uh, yeah. winning and losing upset. Correct. Uh, MVL. I mean, they're still going strong here. So let's see what's uh, happening. Is this the current position? Mm -hmm. Rook F8. Okay, uh, but it's this trivial draw if I go Rook H1, Rook A1, because after that you cannot really make progress. Mm -hmm. So we know that black isn't... Um, in any danger, but mm -hmm. probably neither is white. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I, I think drawn. this should be a draw, mm -hmm. which is another slight upset. Yes. Um, Dominguez did won. win. Mm -hmm. uh, Grischuk uh, drew. Uh, I think that yeah, Yu Yangi won yep. in the end. Oh, uh, it was yeah. So let's see how that happened. We got to this so position. The pawn on e3 here. Yeah. And um, he tossed this pawn on the queen side. And sacrifice the pawn on B2 later on. Yes, and uh, he kind of never really recovered from this. Though the computer says that this is about equal, but it didn't really pan out. Mm -hmm. Maybe this position is harder to play than normal. Queen B8. Oh, if he had knight at 7, he should have taken it. Um. Yeah, I'm curious why he didn't do that. It's uh, after knight H7, I'd what can be done? Yeah. Yeah, well, now when nice. the queen's. I would think even like queen e f6 is quite decent, but. Uh, queen e4. Yeah, queen e4. It's enough. Mm -hmm. And that's it. All mm -hmm. the pawns are gone. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Just to wrap up, and then. Uh, we already saw that Jan Christoph Duda won. Mm -hmm. uh, this is still. Uh, going on, and it seems harder to win than we thought originally. Yeah, because we thought black could just <laughs> because this is there's a nice sandwich <laughs> here. <laughs> there's a nice sandwich here with uh, on the D file these four pieces, and it's very difficult for both sides to mm -hmm. break out of it. So, uh, in fact, now the draw looks the more likely result. Uh, let's have a look again. What else is happening? Uh, we noticed earlier that Wei Yi uh, won, 
with a beautiful Nazi eight. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Abdu Satarov has drawn, mm -hmm. uh, so another rating favorite, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, Nikita Vitugov beat Daniel Friedman, but yep. we kind of thought that Petrov was getting very unpleasant. Yep. Um, and Magsudlu is pressing. Probably he is winning because it's hard to see that uh, this option isn't going to work out. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, there might be technical details along mm -hmm. the way. We'll get to it at some point. Uh, Vidit has drawn. Surprisingly, Adiban is still hanging on, but it's a clear exchange down. So I, I don't think it's going to be very long. Yeah. I think um, Dubuff will finish it in a fashion. Yes. Um, Samuel Shankland is clearly pressing uh, because there are weak yeah. there's a weakness here and potentially the king is closer to this side. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. could swoop and grab some pawns. We'll see. Uh, quickly running up Arjun Erigaisi drew already. Mm -hmm. So there was no way forward because white has this bishop ready to attack that pawn. Mm -hmm. So there was no way to play for that. Um, Wang Hao is playing against uh, Jumabayev, but uh, it's hard to see that black is in danger, but I don't see how he's going to break through. Mm -hmm. Maybe knight, e3, knight d5 and rook e3 somewhere. But um, if anyone, if anything, black, if is, anything, black is, black, pushing uh, black is pushing for yeah. yeah, so there's still some work for Wang Hao mm -hmm. there. And Vallejo. Vallejo is winning. Um, well, he has two rooks and, oh, in fact, uh, it's game over. So uh, Paco Vallejo yeah. has won already. So that's a uh, uh, impressive performance. Also, again, crucial win with Black. Yes. Um, I mean, by Sam, I mean, this looks drawn. Drawn. The veteran Ilya Smirin mm -hmm. lost. Uh, lost to Kirill Shevchenko. Um, and though I promised to take you through all the veteran games, we never really <laughs> we never really we never really got yeah. into this one. So let's have a quick look. Yeah, let's do what this is happening. So. Elias Mirin is white, and he plays the English. He used to be an E4 player all the time, but mm. he's now showing that he can do. Oh, and this is this really sharp yeah, line. Yeah, this is one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and this is modern chess. You you have rook E8, you have rook H6, and uh, things happen. Yeah, things are looking great too for And suddenly H4. Yeah, mm. because I guess if G4 then F5, F5 and G4 or something like that, yeah. yeah. Mm. Or even uh G4 queen D6 might be quite unpleasant because you're threatening to land on G3. Mm. So even knight D3 allowed the exchange. Uh and Kirill didn't even bother taking the pawn. He just continued G4. Mhm. Mm I mean Tal would be proud. And then rook h1, rook h1, gf3. Mm -hmm. And the king side position is opened up. Let's see what happened here. He managed to get a check in. One more check in. Mm -hmm. You can't do the other check, which is more desirable, because I will capture it, with yeah. it being a check. And defending the rook on e8. So this one doesn't work. <laughs> Goes knight c5. King comes to d6. Optically, does not look good. Mm -hmm. But uh, in fact... There is the queen is too far from the knight, so the knight can't do uh, any sort of discovery mm -hmm. and attack the queen. And um, Elias Merin just lost. Yeah. So there's no good discovery for the knight in this position. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get one or two checks, and that's yeah. it. So mm -hmm. um, Van Forest uh, drew against uh, Adley. Mm -hmm. That's also looking clear. Um, Okay, this one is very far from a draw. Black is going to try and continue and press on this very weak mm -hmm. pawn here. So, long day ahead mm -hmm. there for him. Looking good for the arc. Mm -hmm. Yes. This one uh, doesn't look like a breakthrough. Though this bishop is biting stone, mm -hmm. there's nothing else in the position to do with. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can hope for some rook h1 and h4, but I don't really see yeah. how either side is going to make progress here. And in fact, they have agreed to a draw. Yeah. So, so draw is an expected result. Yeah. As we mentioned earlier, this is that yeah. one of the games of the day, yes. Pragnananda. And Vincent Kaima also superb performance. Mm -hmm. uh, his game is well worth uh, 
playing through. I'll take you to some of the highlights. Um, in this position, Vincent went queen a4. This might be a mistake because mm -hmm. after rook d1. d1 takes six. White is just a pawn up. Mm -hmm. Double pawn, but uh, on a the other hand, a pawn is still a pawn. A yeah. pawn is still a pawn, and the double pawn mm -hmm. allows white to put his knight on squares where black cannot recapture because it'll, um, what is the word, untouble the pawns. Untouble the pawns, yeah. <laughs> and um, some f fine calculation was required. Mm -hmm. So here, queen a2, knight goes to c4 saying you can't take it, but white took, and then this move. Knight and six. we're attacking the house. Yes. And uh, that proved to be decisive. And the problem for black is if he had one more move, if he had put the bishop on f6, mm -hmm. I, I would say it's a pretty decent composition. Yeah. It's, it's because there are no pawns left on the queen side mm -hmm. and so on. But rook e7 allows rook takes e6, mm -hmm. and then there is never that stability. So, yes. And just all clinical stuff. Mm -hmm. Great. So, Vincent won that. Um, Taba Tabai is still trying to win this, but I can't see that he's going to. Um, and in fact, there are multiple ways of repeating, so maybe they'll just stop now. Okay. Which is a mild upset, I guess, because um, draw was not the expected result there. Hushinbeth is going to, is he drew already, Ray Robson drew. Mm -hmm. um, as we pointed out, Nihal Sarin beat uh, Axel Backman. Peter Swidler won, indeed, so that uh, queenside thing did, did collapse. Mm -hmm. um, Archie. This was that very classy draw, <laughs> Queen A5, ah, Queen D5, yeah, and the Nimzo that we <laughs> saw. Um, Grandelio's Antipo was a draw. Um, Safarli drew as well. Mm -hmm. um, David Howell drew. Mm -hmm. And many more draws there. Let's see what Radek is doing. Also uh, Radek White is like, yeah, it's a draw. So it seems that there's nothing much happening there. Bolo Kittin was a draw. So, I mean, this is not even uh, very far from the opening. So mm -hmm. I think they just decided to. I, I mean, one strategy in, in uh, these knockout competitions is to make two draws and go straight to the tie breaks <laughs> if, if you feel in the mood for that. Yeah. So that is an option. Yeah. If they're confident. Yes. With the shorter term control, they usually uh, go for the tie breaks. Um, Bluebaum against Paravian was a draw. Um, Berkesh against Gelfand was a draw. Though that was a very exciting game. Let's just we, see. We didn't see this one yeah, before. Yes, so let's see what happened. We were we came up to here, oh, and I was mentioning here, that yes. the knight was supposed to go to d2 and defend c4. Mm -hmm. But since black is not attacking it, it can go to some other square. Mm -hmm. And he sacks the exchange. Mm. So bishop d8, king d8. And white doesn't pause because if maybe he was afraid that if black plays f5. It will just close everything. Uh, I mean, it will make it harder to break through. So white fights for the initiative at all costs. Mm -hmm. Queen g4. Wow. And apparently this is about equal... Maybe I can play d5 and knight d6, so. but even knight e3 and then rook takes f7, knight g5, what happened, d5. Black is yeah. better, so queen? It seems that this would have been much better for black. Rook takes and then queen c5, oh, okay. By the way, disclaimer, when we're going through the game very fast, we are uh, using an engine to quickly scan through. <laughs> but uh, when we do the commentary, we're actually not looking at the engine. So um, just to get in the vibe of the yes, players. Of course. Um, OK, so that was a missed opportunity for Gelfand. Um, Korobov is doing very well, except that black has an extra mm. piece, and so the position might be in a kind of balance. Yeah, the three pawns, I think, are compensating uh, the position, and also In the fact, king. should be better for white, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Another veteran, Vesely Ivanchuk, also drew. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, 
Uh, Ponomaryev, Cheparinov, Etienne Bakro, all were drawn. Um, I don't think Salem has very big chances to win here either. Yeah, looks drawish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Biere is still playing. It's an extra pawn, but it's not a big one. It's um, an easily blockaded one. Sindarov draws. There's a lot of draws at the, a lot of draws, yeah. at the bottom. Um, uh, almost no decisive. Oh, there is one, actually. I, no, this, this one is. Yeah, almost no decisive result in the lower boards. Okay, oh, Jules Mussard uh, beat uh, Dorar Bailey, the local uh, mm -hmm. hope. Laurent Fresine drew against Abbasov uh, Nijat, mm -hmm. also from Azerbaijan. Ralph Mamedov drew, so a lot of uh, draws there. A lot of draws at the bottom of the... Ariantari has an interesting position, mm -hmm. which is, it looks like the mirror image of the Slav defense, where um, black has a lot of pawns and a mm -hmm. rook, but white has a rook and bishop in the extra piece, but it's not the greatest bishop in the world, so mm -hmm. you have to find a way to get it in. Um, I guess black is doing maybe even much better, right? Yeah, with I mean the that bishop two pawns on, uh, uh, in the center, yes. And the bishop is not participating, participating shall we say. Participating, agree. Yeah. Yes. And we are already at the women. Okay, yeah. so let me do running games so that we then know how many are actually left. Uh, Hikaru is... Wait, what happened here? He's gone queen at seven all, and it's black's move. Because I was thinking king, <laughs> king, king h3 <laughs> looks like a pretty <laughs> decent try. But uh -huh. it's black's move, and then uh, black can go queen f6, I guess. Threatening queen f3 check. So... Queen A1, I thought Queen E7, oh, queen e seven, seven maybe, yeah. but queen e seven. maybe it's not the end of the world. Yeah, okay. Queen F6 also. Yeah, but this is a, a draw, I think. Maksudlu is chasing on, and it seems that uh, White has to find Knight H2. But if knight h2, bishop d1, d1 I think he wants to go g4. Ah, I see. And I think even going further, if you did this... Take on f4 then? Yes. I would take here, where would the king go? f7, yeah. Maybe I can go knight f3 already, that's the beauty. Ah. Because if, then if I play knight g5 and f6... Right. I think Dubov and Adiban have just finished. I think so too. Yes, yeah. they already stood up. Dubov was yes. winning, yeah? Well, yeah, this, this is clear enough. So yes. I think mm -hmm. uh, Adiban just resigned because he's going to lose the pawn and be in exchange down for mm -hmm. nothing. So. Um. Maybe we can take a look at some of the women's uh, yes. games. Yes, that should be at the bottom. So let me just uh, scroll down to that. Yeah, let's start with the women. This is a draw. Um, because all white pawns are defensible, even if you lose the a4 pawn, it doesn't it's matter. Fine, yeah. mm -hmm. So that one's a draw. Mm -hmm. um, I assume they will go for the threefold repetition route. Um, but Siashvili is going to win this because the h pawn can no longer be stopped. Mm -hmm. It's just going to go all the way. Mm -hmm. Probably not even a check in the game. Mm -hmm. um, against Mamadova Gulnar. Then Elizabeth Pates is, clearly better. is still better, though. It's a very messy game for humans. Yes. And um, But I think everything is protected around the black skin. And now, um, where do you go with the bishop? Yeah, C2 is sure. hanging. So and yeah, the rooks are able to block here and there. Mm. So it'll mm. probably They're not on be standing. win. Yeah, so Elizabeth Pates strong. also winning. Mm -hmm. um, this one is winning as well because... Uh, H7. Oh, oh. oh, the A pawn. This could potentially be a pass pawn, yeah? Yes, but how exactly? Oh, she's going to play B4, but then I have rook E3 check. So probably rook... Maybe... D3 first? No, but the rook came from there. Oh, yes. So I'm not <laughs> sure what her plan is. <laughs> Maybe her plan is, as you say, rook H2. Uh -huh. Rook takes H7, rook H8 check, rook A8. Ah, so okay. let's imagine that you go here. Yes. I go here. Yep. I... Uh, 
I'm going to let black mm -hmm. collect a few pawns. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you go here, then I go check, and I hit that pawn. Eight, eight, yeah. And after that, I'll get connected past pawns mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. However, you might be able to play uh, rook c3, collecting this pawn. Mm -hmm. Whereupon, I might have to do this to win or something. So, uh, oh, we're not... Uh, Okay, uh, I hope we will. Sorry, we've been discussing the position in Arabice. Maybe we'll have to do it again. Um, the board will come up yes. on the screen very soon. Yeah. Sorry, we got lost in the game and uh, the board is actually not <laughs> okay. over there. But mm -hmm. um, uh, So, meanwhile, uh, there is one funny question for mm -hmm. you. Who do you think is the father of modern chess? <laughs> I don't even know how to answer this question. I don't know that modern chess has a father. <laughs> I didn't even know ancient chess had a father. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we say that it arose somewhere in India. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. seems the most uh, likely explanation. Mm -hmm. But uh, what is who's the father of modern chess? I don't know. Yeah. Tough one. Tough one. Tough one. Tough one. Yeah. And do you do any sport or do you love watching any sort of sport? I like watching football. I like watching tennis. Mm -hmm. um, recently, I've started to play badminton myself. Oh, uh, I see. Big sport in Indonesia as well. It is. Yes. It is. And very big. And now it's getting quite popular in India. Mm -hmm. um, and in general... I mean, I keep an eye out on many sports. If something interesting happens, uh, mm -hmm. I'll check it out. But uh, mostly, uh, as I said, I'm, I watch football and tennis. Mm -hmm. And um, yes. And uh, Carson, in a recent interview with Lex Friedman, he said that Nepo, Nepo Mnechi, is an absolute monster of calculation for short lines, even better than him. Do you agree with this statement? I haven't thought in those terms, so I'm not sure what to say. Um, I hadn't quite thought in those terms. I, For me, Ian Nepomnishi has, is a phenomenal calculator, and sometimes mm -hmm. he can play the, the deepest lines pretty mm -hmm. fast, which means he's, everything is registering very fast. But uh, he's also can sometimes miss obvious things. Mm -hmm. So... And that is usually a flip side. Like at a certain point in my career as well, I was very good at seeing lines very mm -hmm, quickly. Mm -hmm. But sometimes there would just be a huge hole in the middle. Right. So it's maybe the same feature uh, applied in different situations. I hadn't quite pinned it down as short lines and long lines. So that's a very, um, it sounds like a very clever explanation. I'll have to think about it a bit more. But mm -hmm. thank you for bringing it to my attention. Mm -hmm. Well, and in the camera we see... Number one German player, Elisabeth Patz, is currently grinding her way out. And I think she was already winning. We will get the board shortly. But meanwhile, there are a few losses and wins here um, in the World Cup, in the open section and women's section. And from your experience, when you suffer from such a setback or some painful losses, sometimes it's very hard to be either unemotional or objective about it. So how do you deal with it? Um, you lump it. Uh, it's, there's, there's something to be said. I mean, lie the clock, time goes on, nothing stops for you. Um, and time heals. I assume your question refers to the most uh, painful defeats. Mm -hmm. And those, there is not, no technique, nothing that can do. It is going to be painful because it is painful. But um, you, ta you take it, you just um, go on. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish I could tell you there's a way to deal with it. But sometimes, um, for me, the answer is just to get as far away from the game and from that game in particular as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take a nice break till your head clears and you mm -hmm. come back and you start again. What else can you do? Um, obviously, in a tournament, it's slightly thing. You have the you have to uh, 
uh, put in the effort to block a bad game mm-hmm. because you have to worry about the next game. Yes. And so then there's more discipline involved. But if it's uh, a bad result and I'm not playing chess at that point, mm-hmm. um, you you have to absorb the disappointment and move on. Mm-hmm. So. And I have one question from you. This is my personal question. If you could tell your 20-year-old self about anything, what would you tell him? Uh, I think my 20-year-old self would tell me now <laughs> to loosen up a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I kind of miss how I used to play in those days sometimes. Uh, it seems that we have come full circle and, um, uh, you know, once upon a time I had um, uh, no openings and I could just go and play any day and, you know, it, it was a different time. Mm-hmm. But uh, what would I tell my 20-year-old self? I think at most I would say that, um, uh, mm-hmm. you know, there's no harm of th- Uh, pausing for a few seconds, especially when you have a lot of time. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're getting wiser and wiser. And speaking of being wise, uh, on the screen we see a match between Irina Crash from the USA versus Ule Madelji. I can't really spell her name. It's Ule. And she made an upset in the in the first round against a very strong player uh, from China, mm-hmm. straight to zero without any tie break. So this is another match of an experienced player versus uh, a youngster. Yes, and um, it does seem to be winning for Irina Crush, right? Yeah, it looks it looks winning for her indeed, yes. Uh, so she's come up with this very clever move, Queen uh, C4. And I assume her idea is that uh, this has happened, right? Queen c4 or not? Let's just... Uh... Ah, rook g2 has happened. Queen c4 hasn't happened yet. Why did it pop up here? Or maybe that's happened at the board. But the thing is, um, if I now go queen g3, is that game over? Attacking the rook and g7 pawn? I think uh, queen g3 may just be game over. Yeah, queen g3. Yeah. Because if you go queen d4, I can just play c7. Mm. And that's it. Um, queen g3 is winning. It has happened. At least on one board it's happening. Yes. So we are still working until um, the board is back to the screen. Uh, in the meanwhile... Yeah, there are a few more decisive games, actually, from the women's section. I will just list it up sure. um, quickly. Uh, on board three, Konero Hampi has won against Priyanka Nutaki. And mm-hmm. as we know, on board five, Kostenyuk Alexandra has won against Yan Tianchi. And then board nine, Muzichuk Anna won against Dolit Cornet Demante from France. And... On the following board, Harika Drona Fali won against the young Polish hope Rudzinska Mikalina. Mm-hmm. Zhu Jinner from China apparently is cruising through and won against Francisco Guecambaru Candela from Argentina. Mm-hmm. Uh, Polina Shuvalova, st- still the rating favorite, won against an Azri player, Beduleva Govar. And we saw an upset of Aulia Medina Warda beating Sarasadat Kademal Sarie. And we saw the game of Nino Bacchashvili uh, beating Mamadova Gulnar. And an experienced player from China, Zhao Shui, won against Karisa Yip from mm-hmm. the USA. Okay. And so before Alina won against Mamadzena Gunai. So there are actually more upsets in the women than in the in the Open. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like more decisive games even. And here again we see that uh, Irina Krash has been executing pretty cleanly. Queen G3 happened. Uh, F4 
queen d4 and then c7 like we noticed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and after f4 i think uh, queen g4 queen g7 almost anything wins but we need to see the board yeah, yeah uh, i think we can we can go to the shang clan's game because the camera is on him and he's on time trouble yeah we can go back to uh, the camera to shang clan please um ah what has happened is that uh, suddenly it doesn't look that clear mm. uh, i mean white has got this uh, h5 thing going but what else it's not really breaking through. Wait a minute. Can we go for a pawn ending now? Let me go g5. You take. Rook takes h8. Rook takes h8. Rook takes h8. King takes h8. By the way, warning. It, the computer does not seem impressed. So Yeah. <laughs> I think. c4. You take. I take. No, no, sorry. Uh, not bc4. dc4. And black is faster. So this is not going to work. Uh, what is he going to do then? So a4. Well, he's just waiting and... Uh, it seems that uh, his opponent has generated enough counterplay. Yes. So I think that game can be drawn. And in the camera, we see it's Maxo Dlu um, taking on Suleiman Li Aydin. And now the camera is back to Shang Clan, mm -hmm. who is trying his way out to win this position? Yeah. Yeah, do you remember in Chennai, uh, the Olympiad last year when Shanklan was in a time travel and then he made a pre-move which was very bad. <laughs> yes, it does, yeah, I remember that one, yes. Yes. Ah, there you go. We have the board, finally. Yes. Okay, so after a4, black is generating enough counterplay, it seems. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Shanklan has played rook h5 to the best of my... What I can see yeah, here, see, it's on one board, rook mm -hmm. h5, but I think just a takes b3. Mm -hmm. G5 is the point. Mm -hmm. But then I think even rook c4 should be enough counterplay. Mm. So and when you take on h6, gh? I'll just go here. He can play f5, rook f4. Oh, rook, like oh, rook g5, rook g8, yeah? Just that's it. Hang on, let's try and make this a bit more precise. Rook h5, a, b3, g5. So mm -hmm. the point of rook h5 is that here, g5 now loses to rook g5 check because mm -hmm. rook takes that's h8 right. is happening. So you got to let go. Uh, the question is, how are you going to do so? Mm -hmm. uh, rook c4 is one idea. Mm -hmm. Because you want to counterattack. I think I believe some move, some moves have been made. Yeah. We just need uh, to wait for the updates of the moves. And there are no, they're already on the second time control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. So there is no more time, additional time anymore. Oof. Do you think Shanklin would be able to... Oh, he's gone rook c g8. Rook c g8. Mm. That seems sad. Mm. Uh, but maybe it's good enough. Can I go f5? Oh, sorry, I have to wait here. Yeah, if I now go f5, what are you going to do? King f8? No, but then I go rook at 6. Or even I can uh, pause with rook h4 or something if I want. Hang on, let's try to rook c g8. So g5 doesn't work. But at the same time, black isn't threatening something. So that's yeah, why it's yeah. a terrible move. Because if you go king f8, I go g5 and I'm winning. Yeah. So I think you can make so some So maybe improve. I can take here. Take the king somewhere. Yeah, and step out for a second and go king c2. And but then maybe you go back rook b8 and you go rook b3. Ah. Uh. It's very strange. Normally, this passive move shouldn't be very good, especially when it has no threat at all. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. maybe the position is equal enough that your threat can be to go back. Mm -hmm. So, on the other hand, after f5, I can play king f8 because now g5, mm -hmm. I have e takes f5, mm -hmm. which ought to be enough.
Yeah, we can. So he has gone rook c g eight, and now we are wondering uh, what white should play. Maybe he should play something like rook one h four. And just keep the pawn structure and the queen side intact like that, yeah. Of course, now king f eight works because the, the pawn, on pawn attacks h four. <laughs> ah. So that's another thing to keep in mind. He has played something. He has got rook one rook and h four, yeah. and now then king f eight will work. Yeah, king f eight is because exactly this square was the worst yes, one. Yes, yes. It turns out. So any square other than h four. In fact, is work. white even equal now? Because if I go king f eight. So are you saying that except h four, any other square like h two or h three would work in this position? Yes, at least it would mm. uh, thing. But uh, here we now have the problem that uh, h four is the only square where it doesn't work because mm -hmm. king f eight. Now let's say you make a move. I can even go rook at seven mm. because uh, g five h g five will still attack the other the rook behind. Yep. Mm -hmm. So even rook five h five to h four would have been good. Mm -hmm. So this is yeah, and he's played king f eight, and king I think eight, uh, yeah. Shankland is just realizing that mm -hmm. g five is not a threat anymore. I could play f five though. So I don't think maybe white's not in any real. Trouble? No, he can't be. Yeah. But f5 should be enough. But I can even play e takes f5 if I want. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you play rook f5, and it's just equal. So uh, no, I'm for a second I got carried away with uh, mm -hmm. rook g4 to rook g2, but it's not happening. Yeah, unfortunately. Mm. This could be another draw upset for. The rating favorite, 200 yes. points different. Another 200 points, 204 mm. points even. Eight minutes versus two minutes or three? Yeah. But they have 30 seconds, just a reminder to our dear uh, viewers, they have 30 seconds bonus increment for each move, so they should survive. Are there any interesting uh, games going on? Okay, quickly, we have Iturizaga against um, uh, Anton Korobov. And what is happening there? Let me go rook f2 check. You go king, and I go queen g8. Mm -hmm. Am I winning some material? I think so, no? You play queen e5. And queen... Doesn't work. Doesn't yeah, do anything. But if yeah. I do this and I collect a pawn, isn't it? Uh, if I go rook g3, takes and king h2, yeah. And then bring the rook back, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Just uh, very nice. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Queen e5, rook g3, yes. Yep. And black is in time trouble, so. I don't even know what queen takes g7 because maybe you take. And there might be just enough count to play with b5 mm, and mm. kicking that rook around a bit, so. And he's reaching it. I think it's... Yeah, he has gone queen g8. Queen g8, yeah. So this seems to be the current position. Uh, queen g8 should appear at the board soon. Mm -hmm. Queen g8, yes, and there's really nothing else. So you have to play queen takes e5 and... Yep. There you go. Yes. Yeah, he took the pawn on e5. Yeah, and then rook f7 is in order, yeah? Yeah. Let me quickly scan and see if something else is happening there. No, I think... Maybe has microscopic hopes. And Aryan Tari is doing very well indeed. I think he's close to winning. Yes, that's what I meant. So this is Aryan Tari and there is no defense to E2. Mm -hmm. Because if you bring the rook to G8, which is normally the way to stop that, then there's rook G1 yes. check. Mm -hmm. So Aryan Tari winning, which is a big uh, win for him, against a very solid player. Nguyen mm -hmm. Tai uh, Tai. Taidefan, yeah. Taidefan, yeah. Number two chess player after David Navarro. Yeah, and uh, 
very hard to beat but uh, Ariana is going to do it with black so mm-hmm. We're back to Korobov game versus Iturizaga. Yeah, I think I think it is wise to think a little bit more here before playing Rook F7 or any other move. But I think Rook F7 is the only move here. Or I can't see anything else because if I play Knight 8 then all the uh, after that Black is winning. Mm. So it has to be this, which he has done. Mm-hmm. I think he'll put his Rook on G3 and C, but. Um, on the other hand, that rook is immobilized temporarily, mm-hmm. so... But just try to prove that an extra pawn is the determined factor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I'm sure the players have seen this sequence, but maybe they're just trying to find if there... Any other way, yeah. There's any other way, yeah. Well, Korobov has nine minutes, so mm-hmm. if you're not going to use it now, you're never going to use it, so... He could easily invest three, four minutes and still mm-hmm. have plenty. He has gone rook takes g7. So clearly wanting to keep the... Yeah, queen takes e3. Queen takes e3 mm-hmm. check has happened and king, king h2, h2 has happened. So yeah. <coughs> you have to go queen e5, yeah? Otherwise the rook is so freely... Yes. Move. I think so uh, queen e5 is more or less. Queen f4 is possible, f4, but yeah. uh, then the problem is after rook g3, you have to move it again. Yes. So I would uh, go to e5. e5, rook g3. Rook g3, and then um, uh, I don't know which move, b5 or king c5 or something. Probably move the king. Just. Am I threatening h4 and king h3? Mm. I don't know. Yeah, he got up from his chair. I think the next moves are obvious for him. Well, white's got nothing to lose, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's easy, but black. There you go. I think queen e5 check. Yeah, okay, okay that's. Check. I think rook g3 enough. has to be played. Yep, he's back, and I'm sure he'll. Play this rook g3 instantly. Yep. Rook g3 is on the board. Wait, wait, a quick have look here. What mm-hmm. happened exactly? He went bishop g4. Oh, because the rook is on the 6, so that yeah. actually helps. Okay, makes sense. Rook g1, rook g1 checking f3. And now e2, and what's the plan? Yeah, e2 is on the board. It to happen. Yeah, it to happen and it's just handshake time, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I think they're ready to shake hands on this position. Okay, back to Korobov. Yeah, so B5 has happened. Mm, B5. I mean, it's hard to see how white can free himself. So yeah, and also I- whenever you play h4, king h3, also it creates some some weakness to your king. So yeah. But uh, do you think Korobov will take some risk in this position or just play it safe? How do you take a risk in this position? You mean h4 and then queen f8 check, king h3 or something like that? Yeah, just get it's out. It's the only from way to spin. get out. You can't yeah. get out of the back. Mm-hmm. The way the last rank. So. Yeah, just trying to get out from the pin. Yes. He has time to think about it. So h4, h4 before or no, there's queen f8. He has gone h4. He has gone h4, yeah. And it's the only way to get out from the pin. Otherwise, there's nothing else. And b4, h4, b4. That is strange. So if queen b8, king c5, if queen f8, rook e7, is it? Is Was it uh, his intention? Wait, let's have a look because um, what about queen g4 attacking b4? And b3, queen b4, yeah? Yes. And king c5, mm-hmm. and this is my point, king h3, and now my mm. king has escaped. 
which means my rook will escape next. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So probably. So black is quite safe already. With if he plays king b5, mm -hmm. he, it's not gonna, like suddenly mating attack is going to develop mm -hmm. because that the king is shielded by the b pawn quite nicely. Right. So in fact, it may be not be such a big deal. Wait a minute. If king b5, rook b3 might actually win because of this uh, dual attack. Oh, that's so nice. So yeah. uh, it can't be that careless about it. But mm -hmm. let's say rook uh, d6 or something should be just fine. And there's no check. Oh, there is actually queen c8. But that's yeah. Queen c8, king d4 probably. But okay, that looks what dangerous. has he gone? Wait, what has he gone instead? He has gone queen c8. What is the queen doing on c8? Oh, it's just being mysterious. Mysterious move. Queen c8. Mm. Yeah, it's a curious move. So if you go, no, you still cannot go b3. It's not possible because queen b8. Um, you cannot go queen f4. There's queen b8 too. Yeah. yeah. I think. Good, the mysterious move. Yeah, yeah it's just, uh, sometimes it's good to play such a move like this that leaves your opponent thinking instead of going to a probably better move, but um, your opponent knows what to do after that. Yeah, Teresa is reaching out his queen, I guess, or his king. King d5. King d5. King d5. Yeah, we expect king d5 on the board. And then the question is what is happening? Can I play queen b7 check? Maybe king c4? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just have to wait for the move. Mm -hmm. Uh, queen b7 check, king c4, and now king h3, and uh, rook g4 is in the air. What exactly does black want? Or oh, maybe some queen e1. So that rook g4, I just play king b3, and what you got? <laughs> so queen d5, also nothing. Okay, let's. G okay, so this has happened. Now let's see if we can uh, make something out of this. Queen B Queen C one? Is that right? Yes. No, it's C two. C two. Another mysterious move. What about rook C six here? Rook c6, queen b3. Rook c4. Rook c4. But maybe queen d3 is more unpleasant, right? Mm. Okay, let's try and... Uh, the problem is they're moving fast. Every time we finish analyzing one move, they get into another. But okay, if rook c6, my idea was that if queen b3, then you have rook c4, and then the king slips behind. But uh, queen d3 could be awkward. Because if you go king uh, c5, then suddenly king h3, you don't have your checks. Mm -hmm. And I'm advancing one square. In fact, after queen e6, we have just rook transferred the yeah, pin yes. one row further. But anyway, rook d6, I think, is working. And I don't see a knockout blow, so this might be good enough. Oh, uh, king b6 might be... No, king b6, I have queen d4 check takes mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. And we have some new moves there. Almost certainly. He's gone rook c6. Yes. Or oh, is that our analysis? Hang on. He has gone king c6. So now so our bet six. was that the king b, queen uh, b3 was necessary. King b3, king c5, only move, yeah? And then king and g4. Then king. No, king g4, queen e6 check works there. Right. Because uh, the b pawn is quite far advanced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he has gone rook c6. And, and queen moved. d2. Queen d2. Hmm. Queen d2 rather than queen d3. I think what what that's um keeping an eye on e1 square, but I I don't I don't see the point. So 
So if the, if the king goes to c5, which looks interesting. Necessary. Ah, and king, king h3, maybe, yeah? Yeah, but what does that solve? I mean, oh, I, I mean, what does it do? What does queen d2 achieve that queen d3 didn't, is my question. But anyway, let's say I go queen f5 check. And now rook g4 might be unpleasant, yeah? Yeah, and if you go rook g6, just queen d4 check, yeah? Yes. Ah, I think I see the point. If I go queen e6 check, you play rook g4. And now my original idea of thing, because the queen is now actually attacking this uh, point. So that's, that's kind of what he wants. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, then queen d2 is clever. We had this, but queen d2 is very clever. Mm -hmm. Promote this in some way? No. Yeah. We can just refresh like this. Queen d2 check. Mm -hmm. And so still waiting um, for his move. King c4 would be very cool, right? King c4. And you are... And after... After king h3, I have a problem. Because rook yeah. g4 is a check. Yes, yeah. exactly. No, I, for, uh, I think it has to be king c5. Has to be king c5. And now king h3. What is my move here? This is a, I think it's a total suffering for black. It is very hard because mm. you're uh, struggling to find your, your king is out there mm -hmm. where it shouldn't be. But, uh, <coughs> it seems almost impossible to solve. Yeah. Queen e6. And Itrizaga is down on time as well. He needs to be fast. Oh, he's down to less than a minute. Mm -hmm. Did he play queen e6? I thought he did, but... Yes, there's a queen on e6. So oh, you have to play rook g4, that's clear. Yep. And rook g4 has happened. So... And... Wow. Queen e6 check. Rook g4, and then he's gone rook b6. Yeah, this is a total suffering. So we can just put on, it on the board uh, rook b6. And what is thinking at the moment? So be free, be free is the threat, but you cannot really stop it. Uh, Shall we go h5 and king h4? <laughs> what about queen c2 here? Wow. Queen c2 and then king goes to... Actually, king can go to b5. Oh, it's so hot. What about h5? H5. Mm. Taking one step at a time here yeah, with the pawn and then with the pin. I mean, one day if there's a race, it might be useful yeah. <laughs> to have it on H5. <laughs> That's true. But what, what will you do after H5 and then B3 and Queen C3? Queen C3, King D6. Is that a knockout blow? Because I'll have slept to disentangle as my yeah. king. Uh -huh. But... Uh, What about queen g5 check? Queen g5, king... d6, right? d6, uh-huh. And I wanted to go king h2, but then queen e5 check is there. Mm. So what can I... Queen d8 check, you go back to c5. I think h5 is looking good. But wait, you can't go here because I'll go king... King, uh, king h2? G h2, yes. And bit by bit my rook is active waking up. But oh yeah, still I don't see the breakthrough. Okay. Um, I don't know, but... 
it's so difficult with queen and rook mm-hmm. against queen and rook that um, i think practically it's almost indefensible mm-hmm. uh, but so far um eduardo is doing a fantastic job yeah. he's defending very well yeah he's found a couple of only moves already and we just have to see if um, he can continue to hold this ending Five minutes versus one minute. Yeah, this is the time when I think their heart rates should be very high. Yes. Yeah, so far I don't see any upsets on the on the open section. Mm -hmm. Like all the rating favorites seem to be... Either winning or drawing, yeah? Either winning or drawing, yes. And what oh. about the women? Wait, Shanklin lost. Shanklin lost this end game. Oh my God, he got his king mated. He opened up the thing. Yeah. So this is this is the upset of the day, I guess. Two hundred points difference, and mate is Ouch. unavoidable. Oh, that is Maybe really we painful. We have to show that. Yeah, we have to show that. A tragedy on um, Shanklin. Shanklin's board. To which is, oh, this is the... You have to untick the running game. Yeah. But anyway, we need to go back to the open one. Um, uh, it's women's. So I should look at open, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have to show this. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Shakriyar Mamadiarov. Okay, it's a draw. Who cleverly plays Queen G6 check. <laughs> and we have a stalemate. Yes. So, <laughs> just a little bit of extra beauty. Maxim Vashelagrav and uh, Dragnev have drawn their game. Drawn. Mm-hmm. Um, tragedy for Sam Shankland because he a game in which he was pressing for a long time mm-hmm. suddenly went where is the game actually um It's after Dubov. It's uh, board number 22. All the way up, yeah? Yeah, there. There you go. In the bottom. And this is just... So we were here and yep. uh, Rook H4 happened. Mm-hmm. And this is a problem because it um, uh, means that when you play G5, hit G5 actually counterattacks the Rook. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we were discussing this practically the only square where which stops white playing g5 mm-hmm. and then sam decided to open up the other side and to be honest it's not an easy to spot tactic for me but after this move it's just and you cannot stop the second row coming to yeah. c4 to deliver a checkmate yes so real tragedy for sam shankland yeah it's so heartbreaking yeah yes he's been pressing the whole time but Maybe over pushed. Yeah. Yes, over pushed and when short of time. Mm. You can miss these things and thing. But uh look, Ivan uh, defended very well mm-hmm. and uh, you know, winning a game against uh, someone two hundred points above yeah. you. Yeah. A lot of credit to him yeah. and um so Ivan Shitko is uh, leading um that match. Yes, and tomorrow and he has one with black. black. And he yeah, will play white, right? He, tomorrow he'll play white, so I think it's a good day at the office for him. Okay, now let's go back to running games so we see fewer ones. Oh, and there's still this delicate dance going on, which is rook g4, <laughs> uh, queen f2 check, king c6, queen f3 check. So what white has accomplished is that his uh, queen is now defending the rook, which mm-hmm. suggests that the king is going to step away. Mm-hmm. And the question is where uh, black should go. Should he go to c7? And then king somewhere. King h2. 
Yes. King H2 Queen. Ah, and we almost I almost forgot that now it's There's possible to play G3, G3 yes. Yeah. So But after Queen D2, what's gonna happen? King H3 and then Queen D7. Yes, <laughs> that's <laughs> what that. I meant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another pin. And probably you can push h4 h5 but then there's p3 where has he mm. gone actually queen f3 check he's gone back to c5 he went back to c5 and then um, anton has played king uh, h2 but wait a minute there's almost no check for white so let me play queen e5 check mm -hmm. where do you go g3 G3. And then this and was my no point, that I have rook f6, and you have not a single check. Oh. Of course, you can play queen g2. Mm. And, uh, but that's not what I Well, rook g5 is a threat, right? Yeah. Or what else can you do? Queen b3 can't be. The queen d3 looks uh, very powerful. Ah, so queen d3 might be very strong indeed. Queen d3. Yeah. Okay, so that doesn't work, though. So, so it's not queen e5. What should it be? Queen d6, b3. I don't. Do you see a move? At some point, you have to play b3. But okay, the rook is so freely now in g4, so you have to do something about it. I think this is going to be very difficult for. Queen e5 is on the board. Queen e5 is on the board. Yeah. Okay. So that has happened, and uh, what did we think after G3? Yeah, G3 happened, and then rook F6. Oh, both these things happened, okay. Mm -hmm. And did we see a defense after queen D3? I couldn't see one. I don't think so. But this is these are just some practical moves to make when you are like down one minute, so Yes. Yeah. No, it's hard to blame him. I mean I, I went down the same road and mm. then suddenly ran into Queen D three, so uh, Yeah, queen d3 happened. Oof, that must feel like a hammer blow. It's so hard to anticipate what's coming next. Oh, and he's lost on time because uh, Anton oh. just pointed to his clock. So. Yeah, it's possible. Yes. But yeah, it, it is. But anyway, the position was lost after. Indef indefensible. His oh. last move, which mm. I think was rook f2 check. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And king h3, and there is no longer a way to defend everything. Mm -hmm. Well, good game by Korobov, but also Itorizaga showed a very good defending skill. Oh, actually, rook f2 was happening. Happened, and yeah. How about king h3? And then king h3, and then there's no more check, yeah? Yeah. And that's game over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amin Basim is looking at his back against Albornos. Yeah. And that game was quite, was quite equalish, if I'm not mistaken. It's I thought it was a dead draw. I'll uh, that one tell you top. why. One second. I mean, come on. <laughs> Wouldn't you go to catch three and finish the game? Yeah. But this is the time when nerves taking in. I know because now King G four, and you're actually going to. Uh, end up probably going to the long side or something. And yeah. Wait, what is your drawing method? Yeah, it'll have to be the long side. You'll have to go king h2 and rook a8. You have to go here. Mm -hmm. I go f4. Uh, I go check. Yeah. And then something like the this. The and long then side, the yes. long side. Mm -hmm. and I mean, long side with the rook, not with mm -hmm. the king, but anyway. But that's uh, an important check, yeah? Because yeah. otherwise you play king Whereas, um, had he... Uh, oh, he captured a pawn there. Well, that would uh, ah. yeah, that would uh, explain a lot. Sorry. Yes, yes. Otherwise, why would you go there, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so then, uh, yeah, he will have to do the long side thing. Yeah, so 
F4 is on the board. Rook H8, F4, and now he'll have to just play. Can you just play King H2? But you can go to. With Rook A8, I go King G3, and actually you have to go back with mm -hmm. G8 check. But uh, that should be fine. Yeah. yeah oh, he's gone F2. King F2. Mm -hmm. And then just go back to C1, maybe? I mean, F1. And Rook C2 check has happened. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go to F1, I go to G3. You check. And then I go here, but this doesn't look like the nicest version, is it? It should be enough, right? In terms of time. Or maybe yes, you can it is still enough. Yeah, it time. is still enough. Yeah. yeah. But ideally, I would have the rook on a8 already. Mm -hmm. But um, yes, it's uh, of course just a draw. And in fact, uh, or can you go rook f1 actually? Like after here, king f1, and then king g3, and then rook, s rook f8, sorry. Rook f8, then king f3, and then we get the same. Yeah, yeah. Ah, same. but you are then, uh, yeah, defending from f8, yeah. sure. Yeah. No, this is a draw, but the only question is, can in, in blitz, can something go yeah, wrong? Yeah, yeah. And uh, how much time do they have left? Uh, 25 seconds. Yeah, the black player. For the war. Sorry, the white player Palaiba, has yeah. like only a few seconds left. And Salem still has about three minutes, yeah. So Rook G8 check, King uh, F3, and then King... Uh, or Rook F8, as you say. Yeah, I'm sure there's some development of the move already. But he has gone Rook F8, so... Yes. Yeah, no, this is uh, quite a well-known... He's Defense. gone G8, okay, mm -hmm. then let's... Yeah, most of the games have already finished. Um, I think the one, I mean, Basim and Albornoz is also quite drawish. Yeah. Yes. Only two remaining games. Um, no, actually, this one, Acosta versus Dea. Still very complicated. <laughs> actually, they've made no progress whatsoever. <laughs> so Black has still got the advantages he had before, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. maybe the way forward is to play G5 somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then that game. So we had, we have three games uh, currently still going in the open section, and then in the women's section, I think everyone's finished. Yeah, everyone's finished. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if it's all clear, we can uh, wrap it up. Sure. Mm -hmm. So we just sh uh, quickly showed the the running ones. So Alborno. How many? There are just three just running three, ones, right? Three, yeah. yeah. So this is. Um, I mean, Basim against uh, Albornoz. And you see that black just has a fortress. And the problem is the only piece that can challenge that bishop mm -hmm. is this king. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, this king is busy with a pawn. Mm -hmm. So ah, there, it is true that bishop d4 that uh, is an option, but it must be a fortress anyway, right? So you just don't take it, right? Just. Keep it but there. how do I do it exactly? Oh, good question. Knight, if knight uh, d7, d7 I go bishop, bishop c6, c6 and we repeat. Yeah. So you take here. Now this pawn is doomed. But you just come up with the king on. And he didn't go bishop d4. He's gone bishop c5. So. Oh. Uh, but by the way, there was. Uh, how did he lose this pawn? Why did he give the spawn up? Because bishop c7 maybe? Worried about bishop c7 coming? But yeah, I think you shouldn't give it up. Yeah, king f6 is there. Oh, okay, but there's bishop king d8. King f6, there's bishop d8. And then g5 is fallen. Um, yeah. But how do you, s how do you stop uh, bishop c7? Maybe the way was this, and then it's over. Mm. But even so, um, if you go bishop a5, what is uh, what am I? What is my technique? Maybe just, just take to go like this and hang in there. Yeah. King e7, maybe take on e4 first. Just grab the free pawn. Oh, that was also there. Yeah. Okay, sorry. So he couldn't go there. He went to g7, and then bishop a5 happened. I mean, it's too easy to just give this pawn on e4 like this. 
could he have done something else? But I guess he was concerned about Bishop D8, right? Mm -hmm. Also Knight, knight D8, uh, sorry, Knight E8 and Knight F6, maybe that's the idea, okay. And well, that's what he did. That's what he did, yeah. And mm -hmm. now uh, suddenly we're in this position. He's gone Bishop C5. And that Actually, you know what I like now? Mm -hmm. I might want to play knight d e8. Just to play knight d6. And then king f6 if mm -hmm. I hold mm -hmm. but Yeah, this, uh, should be, this should be a fortress. But wasn't bishop d4 just uh, a reasonable chance? Or is it a fortress? What is the fortress he's hoping for? If he takes, which is forced right now, mm -hmm. Then what exactly is the plan? I mean, I take on h2 and walk my king all the way to that side. Where's your fortress? Um, so I take. King e7. You come here. Six, and then just move the, the knights? Yes, you move the knight back and forth. Yeah. So the question is, uh, uh, can I put you on Suk Swang? I go here, you wait. I go here. I go here. You don't oppose me. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe something like knight d7, but then bishop e2. I mean, there should be a way mm -hmm, around, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The bishop has Wait, to be on uh, c8. Oh. I can go knight. Ah, then I just go king a6 as well. So that is fine. Uh, yeah, actually. Okay, maybe knight d7 is possible. And the bishop has to be on this diagonal, yeah? Well, it has to keep protecting this pawn, uh, yeah, which is right. a problem. Because if you go king a6, then I go king c7 and ask you, uh, and I tell you that it's basically some sort of suk swang. If you go here, I just come back with a knight. Mm -hmm. And normally the bishop would have a lot of extra moves, but here it can't do very much with the extra moves because mm -hmm. uh, the g4 pawn has to be defended. So mm -hmm. I guess it's still a fortress. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, he didn't go there, did he? He's not gone for it at all. He's gone for... Uh, I guess he also has limited time, so he's just making moves to uh, build again up some time, time to think mm -hmm. again. Okay. Um, this one, Black's position looks as good as it looked like 20 moves ago, <laughs> but um, he's not found a way through. Of course, it is an accomplishment that the knight has been pushed back to f1. Why did that happen? Uh, for some reason, he was afraid of... Uh, he put the knight like this, and then it ran to f1, but... On g4, it had the advantage that black could never play g5 because the knight still had access to that square if mm -hmm. that f-pawn moved. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we are in the realm of time pressure, so we might as well just sit back and watch the yeah, sure. action. Um, it's my opinion that bishop d4 is a fortress, so he's probably right not to do it. But I think it would have been a good... Well, it's not really a bluff because you have to play bishop d4, so black is hand yep. is forced mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, I think here white can just play around gaining time without doing anything maybe that is why uh i mean basam didn't play bishop d4 i'm sure he saw it but mm. uh why commit it now why not gaining time first and then think about it whether it's happening because during yeah the but game will you ever accumulate enough time to be <laughs> able to think about it so anyway uh Albonos has gone knight uh, d7 Um, yeah, uh, the camera is not on the Albornoz versus, I mean, Basim. Okay, so this is still happening, but it still doesn't matter too much. I guess uh, just rook a7 should and be And on the camera, we see uh, Leva, Gianmarco versus Salem Saleh. Yes. Trying to defend the rook endgame. going to go king h2 or no he's going king f1 even yep ah basically saying well go back to a8 and we'll start all over again so. <laughs> okay so uh in conclusion the one uh the game i mean basim uh it should be drawn yeah i think for the moment that's my opinion but um i can't see any way through yeah mm -hmm. and then the game with uh deak it's um uh, Better for black, and he's still trying to find his way in. It's tough, because the problem, the moment is he plays g5, he's opening up the position for white, which then means the king uh, runs into danger of perpetuals and mm -hmm. things like that. 
So, okay, King G7. You want to keep looking at the games or um, also we can wrap it up if you want? Yeah, maybe we can wrap it up, but it's a, I think we'll f see for a few more moves. Okay. They may never stop, but on the other hand, they, a couple of games might finish at least, so sure. we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there there have been some moves with that game. I think he's just repeated twice. Yep. Uh. Yeah, some repetitions. Yeah, the bishop's gone back to f3. This one isn't going anywhere as well. And this one seems stuck in a groove also for a long time. So maybe mm -hmm. we will wrap it up. Sure. Okay. Woo, it's been a very interesting day again. Um, <coughs> Ishi, thanks for joining me. And uh, Thank you, Renee. That was, yeah. uh, was a good day. It there was a some good very day. nice games. Very interesting uh, games and some beautiful moves as well. And uh, I'm, I'm, um, yeah, it's an honor to have you here. So Thank let's you. do it again tomorrow. Yep. Yep. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned for more interesting battles for game two of round two tomorrow. Same day, same time. And it will be with me and Fishy Anan again. So see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Bye. Azerbaycan'ın tabiatından, Nakhçıvan'ın torbağından süzülerek gelen tabi suyun sirri, Sirab.